welcome back to Six Gun Grill Newlands. And we had some technical issues which we needed to resolve there. So thank you for your patience. And glad that you could join us for this, the third match in the campaign for the Six Gun Grill Western Province this season in the four day series. I'm James King, the Cape Fox, with me as I hear Adams and. Uh, Again, good morning once again to you, Zahir. I believe uh, that nobody could hear us the first time. <laughs> good morning. It's the second run, the second take, as uh, Buren Hendrix runs in from the Calvin Grove end. And oh, that's what beautiful. we've seen this morning. It's been some splendid bowling from this new ball partnership of Buren Hendrix and um, Nandre Berger, the two left armers, the south paws, really uh, <laughs> providing some testing times for this. Uh, Knights pair, they've already managed to pick up the first wicket, that of uh, Dihali, Isaac Dihali, and uh, they have been, uh, they've, to their credit, they have survived seven overs of this testing spell with the new ball, James. They have indeed, it has been a very testing with uh, Nandro Berger particularly impressive here from the Weinberg end, he took the wicket of Dihali, as Zahir has told you, uh, one that fourth ball of the innings that just uh, straightened on him from uh, outside the off stump and took the edge Abiwa Mgujima taking the catch at first slip and it really was a good start in that first over it was a two for one at that stage Reynard Fantonda has joined Matthew Kleinfeld and they have taken the score in the eighth over to 18 for the loss of one Hendrix again towards us from the Kelvin Grove end and uh, he does not let go of that delivery and the umpire at the Kelvin Grove end Mr. Abdullah Stienkamp signals that that is a dead ball and uh, they are calling for a little more, bit more sawdust so that just give us a chance to recap a bit on what's happened uh, this morning uh, your view on the pitch, uh, Zahir, was uh, toss one by the Knights who decided they were going to bat first. As we've said, it's always the uh, the decision at Newlands. You think about it and then uh, you and decide you bat. to bat anyway. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> definitely, a de there is a little bit of green tinge to the surface. Uh, just something to offer the, this impressive uh, Western Province seam attack something this morning. And also overhead, um, the clouds in the sky, um, which is... Uh, definitely assisted the bowlers and uh, they would be thinking that they would want a little bit more reward for the efforts it's been yeah. a, a really good spell from both left armers and maybe just time to uh, just change it up with uh, a better right arm seam from Dane Patterson yeah I think it'll be uh, pretty soon that these uh, spell from these two left arm quicks is going to be over as you say as I hear a little bit of sun now starts to drift across the ground if sun can do that <laughs> oh it's a good delivery but uh, pitching i think outside leg so that's why the appeal was stifled the four slips behind the stumps accompanying carl verena in that groan there as uh, it just hit the right hander on the front pad and going away towards the slips Western Province will want to make the most of this new ball this morning. It looks like a reasonably good service for betting. Last week uh, they were playing on the pitch uh, three to the right and that was actually a very good surface both from a batting and body point of view. That one just to the left of Tony De uh, outstretched hand. It had bounced just before it got to him and they'll go through and take a single Fantonda moving to uh, is that eight now with that single and score 18 for one in the eighth over. Uh, two changes to the iTech Knights team from last week. It's uh, Patrick Kruger and uh, Michael Petroius who lose out Reynard Fantonda in uh, the man at bat at the moment and he has replaced uh, Patrick Kruger and then uh, Aubrey Swanepoel in for Michael Pretorius. So just the two changes from the team that lost by an innings to the Titans last week. Oh, 
must be honest, James, I think uh, uh, the Knights uh, possibly ruining that decision to leave out uh, a young talent such as Reino van Tonde. Yeah. Uh, not the best of seasons for the young man last year, just averaging just above 20. But yeah. he's such a prodigious talent. Uh, and it was about a year ago where he was knocking firmly on that Proteus test door and uh, possibly just the, the uh, losing out to Keegan Peterson for that number three position and uh, maybe just played with, with the mind a little bit and yeah. needing to reset and, and get himself focused for domestic cricket again after missing out. But definitely one for the future is Reina van Tonder. What does this ball? Oh, got a good delivery into Fantonda, the right hander, just squared up by that one. And it's the end of the over from Buren Hendricks. One feels perhaps he's got one more in the tank. Uh, four overs, naught for 12. Berger, four overs, one for eight. It's been a good start by Six Gun Grill, Western Promise. Yes, Reynard Fantonda had the privilege of watching him. Uh, at the SAA versus India A uh, game, uh, that, that uh, three-match unofficial test series in uh, Bloemfontein last year, and he didn't do that well there in that. He had a, he had a bit of a start, and then unfortunately not. Uh, he starts in those three matches. In fact, I think not playing in, in one of them. I stand to be corrected on that. As you say, perhaps uh, last season just not quite pushing on from how he'd done previously. Um, but certainly, as you say, a prodigious talent, one to look for to the future. That uh, looked to me like it was heading down at the leg side. We're just slightly off straight here. We uh, over the bowler's arm when he's bowling left arm over the wicket. The two left armers in operation for this six gun grill Western Province team. And they have a plethora of left armers in in the team both from a bowling and batting point of view are here uh, definitely uh, some new variation here <laughs> the western province side as an andrew burger runs in from the wide begin that's a good deliver another good delivery he's really been uh, on song this morning and well left there by matthew Kleinfeld. As I hear was talking earlier on uh, when you were uh, not be able to listen to us about uh, matthew Kleinfeld. Uh, very evident in the semi-professional Western Province team under the old franchise system. Now two seasons in to his uh, tenure at the ITEC Knights in this uh, first division, eight uh, team first division of South African domestic cricket. Oh, the first use of the bouncer this morning from Berge is still looking quite fresh running in from the Weinberg end. And uh, good to have Matthew Kleinfeld back here. Fantastic Kleinfeld, to have Matthew Kleinfeld, Kleinfeld here. Kleinfeld. Um, he's, uh, he's a born and bred Cape Townian, uh, as I said earlier, the uh, educated up, uh, up the road at Weinberg Boys, uh, one of those uh, fantastic cricket institutions that uh, mm -hmm. the Western Cape does uh, possess and a continuous uh, talent pool as uh, Berger runs in. Oh, well kept down by Kleinfeld as he plays it to the left of uh, De Zorzi, who's been under the helmet with those uh, trademark dreadlocks hanging out from uh, underneath the Missouri, as I presume it is, uh, that he's wearing. Thank you there for the, the <laughs> ad, uh, Missouri. They'll, they'll say thank you to you. I'm sure the, the check will be in the post. Uh, Let's hope so. so. We <laughs> can do with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it uh, must be a tough uh, proposition for an opening batter to uh, sit under the helmet for an entire four days and then, uh, you know, go out there and, and face the new ball with the helmet back on. <laughs> so uh, you think as a, one of the senior players, he might uh, have a few words? He may well. Uh, uh, so last week, uh, those duties as this has played nicely down to uh, Tepo Mareki, who's patrolling the fine leg area amongst the pigeons on the outfield here at Newlands and uh, yes indeed last week shared those uh, under the helmet uh, duties with Daniel Smith when Smith was, wasn't in the slips. I was yeah. about to say if you look around the side there are not many younger players to be <laughs> honest uh, the likes of Yasin Valley, Aviva Makajima in the slips there, uh, George Linder you know these Dane Patterson senior players Beer and Hendrick so uh, 
the only other option could possibly be young Dan Smith. Uh, but being a wicket keeper, you want those hands in the slip corded. You do indeed. Took a uh, oh, very well bowled by Berger once again, and he squares up his man this time. But uh, there is no reward for the paceman, and one feels perhaps one more over uh, coming potentially from Berger, or perhaps not. We shall see if. Uh, either of the two other pacemen, the right-handers, uh, are going to warm up. Well, it is going to be Dane Patterson returning from uh, his stint at the Warriors and, as you said earlier on, back from the spell at Knotts in the English County Championship where he performed particularly well uh, over this last summer. In fact, getting his best ever figures in a first-class match, eight for... 52 it uh, was in that particular uh, which, which he uh, achieved over there his best in competition here in South Africa 7 for 25 uh, the Warriors versus the Rocks last season so good to have Dane Patterson back in the old Zahir fantastic to have Dane Patterson back uh, a real stalwart of Western Province cricket saw him come up through the, the youth ranks down mm. here in Cape Town as he runs in from the Calvin Grove in. Oh. Yeah, saw him as a youngster from, uh, from the yeah. northern suburbs of Cape Town. Uh, moved to United Cricket Club oh, as right. a youngster out in Greenpoint track. It was quite a trick for him, but uh, that's what he uh, felt was good for his cricket. And uh, knocked on the uh, Western Province amateur door, as they say back then, before right. moving to, the, to KwaZulu-Natal and had a couple of seasons with the Dolphins. And uh, Richard Pibus over there before uh, returning to Cape Town and uh, becoming quite a, a stalwart here at Newlands. Oh, that's well bowled outside the off stump and Van Tonda uh, looks stylish enough but he doesn't get bat on ball. I don't think he quite got that front foot uh, far enough across uh, to that one. Wanting to play it through the vacant uh, cover region just a little bit of shape away from him and Patterson last week was highly impressive in his line and length and bowling two or six three offside leg side field last week as well in the second innings particularly impressive it's, uh, towards us now another good delivery outside the line of the off stump and most impressive thing i think last week as they was he made the batters play most of the time in and in that channel sort of Third, yeah, you know, on the off stamp or fourth, fifth stamp, a fifth stamp line outside the off stamp. Dane Patterson, he's always been somebody that uh, gets the ball, pitches it up fairly well, looks mm -hmm. for a bit of swing. But uh, having spent the last couple of seasons at Knotts in England in, at Trent Bridge, he's really, uh, really honed that skill about getting it up there, looking for that extra bit yeah. to keep the slips in uh, in business. In one oh, that uh, as we call. as we called it as we called it. <laughs> uh, just not uh, carrying through though to the to the slip cordon, as uh, Dane Patterson. Well, he'll go back and think about that again. But mm. had a really impressive season at Knotts. Um, become quite a cult hero there, Trent Bridge. Mm. Um, cross formats. Uh, out bowled Stuart Broad in a couple of games yeah. there, um, on his way to 400 first class wickets over the course of the English season. And uh, really, as I've spoken to him a few times, really does enjoy his, his winters in England mm. as he uh, approaches the, could we say, the twilight of his career <laughs> down here at the end. We could indeed say that, perhaps. Uh, uh, but I'm sure that uh, he wouldn't probably mind that, but he's, uh, he's certainly you, you could in terms of talking about all those uh, teams that he has played for, a real journeyman cricketer. Uh, as we would potentially call him. I, I, I think he might take offence. Uh, I think he's a very much uh, a Western Province boy. He's uh, Cape Cobra's uh, beloved son. I think uh, yeah, he is. I think Dan, in, when he went to the Dolphins back in the day, it was uh, more the, uh, the opportunity as a youngster just to get some game time. Yeah. Because uh, if we do remember correctly, I'll finish the story after yeah. he runs in. Um, he was uh, behind a, quite an impressive picking order. Yeah, he we, his bowling coach, currently <laughs> Rory Kleinfeld, uh, Vernon Philander, you know, these were the, these were the uh, stalwarts. And, and obviously, Buren Hendricks was always there. Yes, he was. You know, amongst yeah, the... Yeah. And even he needed to move to the Lions for a bit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, 
that's the pride of Western Bromwich cricket. Not always easy to get a place. Lazard Williams, a similar one up at the Titans now. So uh, that is the quality that uh, Western Bromwich produce. And we would like to see that possibly just translate into some silverware. Yeah. Um, as they, uh, as this unit do... Uh, Look, a formidable Red Bull unit, oh, to be honest. They do indeed. Uh, this uh, you know, four-man uh, pace attack uh, with uh, home players, as you say, Buren Hendricks, Dane Patterson, uh, imports in the form of Nandre Berger and Teppo Morecki. They really performed exceptionally well uh, last week. You have some uh, youngsters uh, coming through as well and those that have already left the province if you think of the as you say the talent pool that's here very good delivery once again this is nicely played defensively patterson around from his position at mid on and uh, they take a single 23 for one in the 11th over um yeah a real talent pool as you say I mean, lazard williams now called up to the national nice squad team. for the australian uh, tour with Clinton yeah. Stearman. Even uh, someone like injured. Uh, the Yan Khalim at the Titans. Yeah, that's right. Also yeah. born and bred out here in, in Cape Town. And uh, sometimes just the, the amount, the surplus of talent that Western Province uh, produces, not able to all mm. at the same mm. time uh, reach the top. Yeah, such is the nature of the club and domestic cricket here. Club cricket very strong in the uh, Western Province. Those of you that are listening to us that might not be familiar uh, with uh, the Western Province Cricket Association and the setup here uh, amongst uh, the provinces are probably the premier province one would think from a club cricket point of view. Uh, I do think the, uh, the, the formation of the, the provinces once more, no. uh, the, basically this bandman of the franchises that will do Western Province Cricket really do some yeah. really be really positive um, it just agree. gives the incentives for these young men to you know to really push through someone like Daniel Smith who's just 20 years old yeah. uh, we saw as although the the CSA T20 challenge did not go according to plan but we saw the likes of Ethan Cunningham we saw uh, Abdullah Bayoumi yeah you know real prospects uh, going forward getting a taste of what first class cricket is all about yeah and uh, we previously uh, with with the the joining up of Western Province, Borland and S Southwestern Districts at any given point. Um, yeah. That was a real challenge to, uh, as we see, the oh. first uh, aggressive Rain stroke of the day by mm. Reynon von Tonde as he dispatches it to the square leg boundary. Yes, well played there by uh, van Tonde and uh, on his legs and through that uh, gap, which is a very wide one on the leg side. Uh, maybe Berger coming probably to the end of his spell. Uh, this is his sixth over on the trot. One for 15 he has. And uh, one senses that uh, two balls left in this over. And that will be him done for the moment here from the Weinberg end. Teppo Mareki who retrieved that uh, delivery from uh, in front of the Oaks. Where it had nestled into one of the covers. And he probably will be bowling from this, the Weinberg end. Oh, my goodness me. And Fantonda holds the pose, but uh, he didn't quite hit the ball on that occasion once again. And His best shots through, this morning has yeah. been the ones he hasn't played. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. A, those are the ones we've got to get on the, on the highlights yeah. reel. So. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah, it has uh, been quite... Um, an interesting, quite an interesting morning to play so far. We are nearly an hour into the morning, uh, six minutes to go until the top of the hour. Drinks will be taken at 11.05. Now the good delivery from Berger, probably the last of uh, this spell, uh, as I hear, as he's bowled six on the trot, six overs, one for 15. The wicket this morning in his first over of Isaac Dikhale caught by Mgajima. Uh, bowled by Berger, shaping uh, as it went away from the uh, with the natural angle of the left arm over, which is probably shaping slightly into the uh, right handed Dikale, and he edged that one behind uh, to the to be pouched at first slip. And oh. so, no more breakthrough for the, for the Western Province this morning. I think the Knights will be uh, quite relieved and uh, 
feeling quite positive in that uh, changing room to have uh, navigated that spell mm. by Berger mm. Mm. or you thought when he picked up uh, yeah. Isaac Harley early, early on that he could possibly just run through this uh, this night's batting lineup the, yes. it was a prodigious swing and uh, they've managed to to really have a change on top with Buren Hendricks and it's unlikely that Nande Berger will come back again he is uh Taking a position here down at Fine Legas de Zorzi comes around uh, from uh, mid wicket and Fields Marecki is at uh, mid on. We're sort of expecting, I think, to have Tepo Marecki coming in from this the Weinberg end in the next over as uh, Sunshine has uh, made its appearance here at Six Gun Grill Newlands. There are very few more beautiful grounds in the world to watch cricket. And Piliki here on a Thursday morning. We do have some spectators in. We'll talk a bit more about that uh, now. That's uh, played very nicely uh, into there. It's going to be a run out here potentially. Marecki in, but that that uh, throw in to the uh, wicket keeper's end where Kleinfeld had uh, almost done two runs himself there off that misfield from Dzorzi. Uh, just not accurate enough. And perhaps just the reaction in the field not quite as quick as one would want it to be. Kleinfeld running down the pitch, his uh, partner uh, Fantonda a little bit guilty of ball watching there and not responding to uh, the call from Kleinfeld and could have been disaster for the Knights had that throw from Marecki been more accurate. So uh, a let off perhaps there for uh, Kleinfeld. He takes guard again. Hopefully for him that will not have distracted him from his focus in the bat. That's a great delivery from uh, Patterson. Just outside the off stump from the right arm, over the wicket to the left-hander. And uh, Plainfield can do nothing with that one. That is the beauty of this West Province attack, that they maintain the pressure a lot, a lot of the time. We've seen around the country, once the new ball bowlers are replaced, that the pressure may be not sustained and it becomes a little bit easier to bat. But not yet. Newlands where... Dane Patterson is showing all his experience and really uh, just asking a few questions of Matthew Kleinfeld right now. And again, good delivery. And uh, again, there's some confusion with the running and Dzorzi around quickly from mid-wicket fields. The ball at square leg tosses it in to the bowler's end. But Fantonde is back in his ground and uh, there is no addition to the score 27 for one in the 12th over run rate a little bit slow at the moment but we did see last week that if you can get in on uh, the newland surface and it looks a very similar well-prepared surface by Bram mong and his team here at uh, six gun grill newlands you can make it work that's a huge appeal the bowler not that interested men behind the stumps look very interested with that all went up as if in chorus. We had a quartet going there in the slips. Uh, I think there's a choir practice here before, <laughs> after every net session, because they were very much in unison there. Well, they were indeed. So, so uh, David, Dane Patterson uh, asking some good questions here. He and Matthew Klein felt there's just one ball remaining in the over, and he would hope that it uh, comes to an end fairly quickly. And uh, exactly as he did last week, in uh, that second innings uh, of the G Bets Rocks, uh, he has been on the money from day from ball one uh, this morning. Another great delivery, and Glenfelt again plays and misses the end of outstanding over from Dane Patterson. He has bowled two overs and two maidens uh, yet to pick up a wicket, but such is that accuracy couple of iffy moments in that over for the batters uh, two potential uh, disastrous run out um, run outs that could have taken place claim felt perhaps lucky still to to be there as in fact we have Buren Hendricks who is replacing Andre Berger from the Weinberg end Hendricks's first spell four overs and none for 12 just the one no ball the only uh, the only extra of the innings so far and it's going to be Hendricks away from us now at the Weinberg end past umpire Holdstock 
That's a great delivery again, and it's uh, down on the bounce to third slip. Daniel Smith is there at third slip. So for those of you that are very aware of the Western Province team, we have Abuwa Ngajima at first slip, Eddie Moore at second, third slip, Daniel Smith, fourth slip, George Linder, backward point, Yassine Valley at uh, mid-off, Dane Patterson, mid-on, Nandre Berger, mid-wicket, Tony Dezorzi and Sepo Moreki down at fine leg. Bjorn Hendricks bowling, wicketkeeper and captain Carl Verena waiting for the edge of Fontonda's bat. And uh, played resolutely in to the leg side that time. Dezorzi picks up in front of the square leg umpire, that is Abdullah Stienkamp. And uh, just to complete the lineup of players that are on the field, it is uh, batting at the moment. Reynard Fantonda, the right-hander, left-handed Matthew Kleinfeld, man out Isaac De Kale, and uh, the man who was at the toss, which was run by the ITEC Knights this morning, uh, was match uh, referee Lawrence Matruis, and it's going to be Buren Hendricks again. I got him this. Oh no, he hasn't got him this time. That is a drop cat from Eddie Moore, and it went in and it went out, and he will be mortified by that. That, oh. is, that is what Western Browns have been searching for all morning. They had a change from the car from the Weinberg in Buren Hendricks, but he being replacing Nande Berger, and he finally, finally found the edge of Rainer van Donder. And Eddie Moore just putting it down at second slip. He had a couple of grabs at it. He did, didn't he? He was uh, juggled a bit with it. But, but uh, not able to hold on. No. And, uh, That's uh, really unfortunate for Six Gun Grill, Western Province. Buren Hendricks tries again this into the pads. Yeah, great delivery. And he's been searching for that. He did bowl well from the Kelvin Grove end. Uh, just not getting any reward that should have been. Uh, uh, 27 for 2, but sadly for Six Gun Grill Western Province, it wasn't the case. The ITEC Knights and uh, Reynard Fantonda live uh, to fight another day as we uh, approach the drinks break here at Six Gun Grill Newlands. They set him up exactly how he wanted to, didn't he? And then just unfortunate for them that it didn't quite stick. Ah, it's a good shot and well fielded again by Dezorzi at uh, just in front of square on the leg side. He's been very busy this morning. Tony Dezorzi, both under the helmet and in that uh, square leg and mid-wicket position. And uh, there is a single, takes it on to 28, a loss of one. Man out, Isaac De Kale caught Mkajima Bob Berger for two in the first over of the day. This partnership now into its uh, 13th over and it's 26th that these two have put on together in overcast conditions at uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands. Oh my word, that is in the air and it bounces uh, just in front of the square leg umpire there isn't anybody at square leg. Yassi Valley comes around from mid-wicket and uh, takes it on the bounce. Had there been a man forward of square on the leg side, that would have been, one feels, a simple catch for the man there. There is a man for the right-hander forward of square, not for the left-hander. Buren Hendricks is, uh, goes back to his uh, position in the slips for the start of another Dane Patterson over, and he will be happy that... Uh, he had potentially two chances in that over. Be unhappy that the catch was dropped by Eddie Moore at second slip. 29 for one after 13. Uh, still moving around a bit. Pace attack is still on the money. And that's what we would probably expect from uh, this pace quartet from uh, Western Province. It's been a trio so far. But, uh, there's pigeons that fly across the ground. I've always been of the opinion, James, that uh, when you have an, a pace attack of the quality mm. that Western Province do possess, 
the men behind the wicket become equally crucial. They do, indeed. Um, the, you, you are expecting to get a few nicks, you're expecting to get a few edges, and it's those men that uh, need, to, need to hold on to him. As you can see, Eddie Moore, though, he obviously uh, is feeling just a little bit let down and uh, mm -hmm. needs to get it out of his mind and uh, focus on the next one. Addison in very nicely bowled again and he's doing what we said earlier on he makes them do, he makes them play and uh, that one coming in again to the left-handed plain fault and just defends back uh, actually to the man at a shortish mid-off that's Yasin Valley so bowl two to the left-hander that have been coming in when's he going to bowl the one that goes away so <laughs> He does have the experience <laughs> of just uh, setting up the batter. In towards us again. Oh my word! That again. Oh. I think that's just the pressure that's been exerted by Western yeah. Province this morning where Matthew Kleinfeld's been uh, in survival mode and uh, the first time he saw an opportunity to let the hands go, he threw it at it. He did, yeah. And it could easily have led to his demise. And fortunately for the Arctic Knights and Plainfall, he wasn't able to get an edge on this occasion. No, it has been an outstanding display of pace bowling yet again from this Six Gun Grill Western Province pace attack. Uh, it is going to be one of them now, Dane Patterson, towards us from the Kelvin Grove end. Another one on the money, and he has yet to concede a run in the 16 balls that he has bowled this morning as uh, no doubt this will be the over that takes us in two drinks and one will expect to see very much of the same from this quartet of pacemen after the drinks break a bit of time for the batsmen to reset maybe time for the bowlers to do the same will be interesting to see as often does happen after the break that uh, maybe some kind of uh, the wickets sometimes do fall after breaks. It is uh, Patterson fielding of his own bowling. And it's crucial that Western Province uh, do transfer this pressure into wickets because the longer the night batters uh, are out there, the more they will gain in confidence, particularly as the sun fights his way through the clouds. Yeah. As they know, batting uh, after lunch at Newlands becomes a pleasure. And that's uh, when... Uh, they will look to cash in if Western Problems are not able to uh, just get some more reward for the efforts. Most definitely is I hear. And this uh, just searching for something there. Dane Patterson concedes his first run. It's going to be two of them as uh, Tebo Mareki chases it down to the uh, deep mid-off, uh, sorry, mid-on area. And uh, they go through four the three that they scored there sorry it was uh so Kleinfeld was who played that one to the area that is uh, the end of the over it's 31 uh, for the loss of uh, one and uh, we are going to take a bit of a break uh, while the drinks come out onto the field and we'll be back in a couple of minutes
Welcome back to Six Gun Grill Newlands here after the first drinks break. Buren Hendricks continues from the Weinberg end. The Knights just losing the one wicket in that first hour of play. Slow run rate, but it's not about the run rate in the first hour in the first session of play. And Buren Hendricks right on the money once again. The not out batsman, Reynard von Tonda, 50 not out, and Matthew Kleinfeld, 30 not out. The one wicket to go down this morning, Isaac De Kale for two. Nandre Berger picking up his wicket in the first over of the day. And that's the last wicket to fall so far. The Knights have done well to not lose any, wick any more wickets in the first hour of play. 90 overs remain in the day. That's very well bowled there from Bjorn Hendricks. Good energy behind the stumps as well. Good morning, James. Good morning, David. Lovely to have you here with me on this uh, glorious morning now. It's, uh, the sun is coming out. It's been a really cool uh, morning. Cool yesterday evening. Bit of rain overnight. Yeah, I was a little bit worried yesterday. Then me too. <laughs> leaving the office yesterday here at Newlands. I um, have the privilege to have my office here. And it was... It was pumping down with rain the wind was pumping mm. um but luckily the match started on thursday um on my way into this morning oh it's pinned him on the that's pads a is that huge out? appeal that's a good appeal and the umpire wow. is not having any of that oh i'm not sure why that looked no. very straight <laughs> maybe just swinging a little bit down the leg side but that's an excellent shout there from Bjorn hendricks to be fair he wasn't too convinced no. um but the the slips and the wicket keeper Oof. the men behind the stumps were that, that looked plumb uh, to you james yeah i don't know i think uh, i can understand why adrian holdstock would give him that not out it, it uh it was um it actually looked like it was perhaps a little bit high okay and uh, going down uh, uh, on the offside so uh, umpire's call may well have been the case uh, there uh, for that one uh, of, uh, from Hendrix, but he's been outstanding in the spell here from the Weinberg end as once again uh, Fontona can do absolutely nothing with that. On the money again this uh, Western Province uh, pace attack this morning David just no reward yet uh, necessarily except for that one wicket that of Isaac Di Kale uh, in the first over mm. caught at first slip by Mgajima off Nandre Berger it's looking more and more like, as we saw in the previous over, uh, that, that another wicket could be falling at any time. Yeah, I think it was, a, it was one of those tosses that was not a bad toss to lose. Um, yeah. And I know that Carl Barain is the kind of captain that... Oh, has he found... Oh, oh my goodness, geez, no. the swing outside <laughs> off stump. Just teasing Fantonda outside off stump there. But, you know, Carl Barain is the kind of captain that likes to bat first. Um, yeah. Ideally, and in four-day cricket, most of the time you will see a captain deciding. But yeah. the conditions this morning were a bit uh, overcast. They were yeah. a bit cold, a little bit of a breeze. So you could see that there was a, a possible inclination to to possibly um, to bowl first here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the decision was taken out of Arena's hands. Yeah. Pat van Bolleon immediately um, went to to bat first, um, and they've done okay so far. It's not about, as I said just now, it's not yeah. about. The run rate in the first session of play, just about not losing. Has he him, I think up? this time has he, or did he hit the ground? That's uh, another huge appeal from uh, behind the stumps, and uh, umpire Holdstock is uh, unmoved yet again. And to be fair to the uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province team, they uh, did sort of stifle it towards the end, uh, but it's very difficult batting out there at the moment. Yeah, it's not easy. You've got Dane Patterson putting piling on the pressure from the one end, from the Kelvin Grove end, and you've got Bjorn Hendricks coming in for changing ends in the first. Maybe he just wasn't mm. too happy in the on bowling from the Kelvin Grove end this morning, but he's he's bowling really well from the the Weinberg end so far. His six overs have just gone for 14 runs, and Dane Patterson's just given away two in yeah. his three overs. He's, I actually thought maybe the the captain would have been tempted to open the bowling with Dane Patterson this morning. One left-hander, one right-hander, but yeah. I think Matthew Kleinfeld being there as a left-hander. And it's the self-same. Kleinfeld facing at the moment, just shoulders, arms. 
to that one. Uh, four slips waiting for that edge and uh, there have been two catches that have gone into the slips this morning and Kojima taking the first one but uh, Eddie Moore at second slip unable to uh, take the one low down to his uh, right hand side. Uh, got two hands to it, bobbled out uh, but unable to uh, juggle it uh, sufficiently and hold on to it there as the clouds sweep across the ground here. That's, That's well a played. glorious shot uh, from Claim Thought. That's going to race away to the uh, northern end of the ground uh, in front of the very impressive new building at the front, uh, uh, down at the northern end of the ground next to the commentary area and the north pavilion. And David will tell you a bit more about that uh, particular development uh, during the course of the next uh, few days and perhaps today but uh, Kleinfeld just playing that beautifully perhaps a little bit over pitched from uh, Patterson there David yeah James what did you do with your Sunday off last week <laughs> you weren't expecting Sunday off no I wasn't the uh, missus wasn't expecting you home no I spent a little bit in the garden it was a, it was a nice day um, just pottering around at home doing a few things not knowing what to do good. with yourself absolutely you weren't it expecting was, uh, to <laughs> to do some house chores around the house but you <laughs> You know, you could have told the missus that the game was still on, I, would she I have known? I could have done well, you know. <laughs> but yeah, the Sunday was off uh, right. after a, a dismantling. Uh, there's no other better way of no, putting it. No, no, uh, a dominant performance by the Western Province team uh, last week. The batting laid the foundation uh, and the bowlers dealt with the 20 wickets that, or the, ninth, the 18 wickets yes. uh, that needed to, to be taken uh, there after the injury to Khafildin. Uh, see, he's not playing this week. Um, oh, well, the for the there. rocks, obviously, mm. his finger, fractured mm. finger, so we knew that he would be out. Yeah. Looks like um, uh, Fariska Adams is back in, in the side, okay. and they brought in That's Ron to Blanche yes. as well. So, Which, and Fariska has taken over the captaincy from Yanaman Milan. Obviously, the, okay. the club captain, or Peter Milan's a club captain, but he's, Fariska has been kind of 2 IC. Mm. Mm. Um, but he was obviously injured the last game. That's why Yanaman Milan took the captaincy. Interesting, uh, I've just seen on the on the other games that Rassi van der Dussen is opening for the Lions. Oh, interesting. And, uh, wow. Fortunately, it doesn't look like Tembo um, and KG are playing for the Lions. Mm -hmm. uh, would have been nice to see them maybe play a bit of Red Bull cricket uh, ahead yes. of the Australian turn. That's w oh, that's oh, brilliantly filled well in. Mo Valley once again. Oh. He's a live wire in the field and he does brilliantly to stop that one off. Would have been a certain boundary from Matthew Kleinfeld. Outstanding fielding uh, from uh, one of the premier fielders in uh, this uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province team and uh, always seems to be uh, there or thereabouts. The ball uh, seems to follow the better fielders around, doesn't it? Uh, and Yassine Valley last week uh, also doing some outstanding fielding for his team as he has done uh, throughout uh, his career. The four slips are waiting for the catch here. And not going to happen oh. there again. And uh, there, Klein felt missing out on what looked like <laughs> it could have been a certain boundary, yeah. putting it uh, straight back at uh, Reynard van Tonda. And uh, van Tonda just thanked there by Dane Patterson for fielding <laughs> <laughs> that one for him. Uh, Patterson, again, outstanding in his attack this morning. Just the one boundary coming off him in that over. Only two scoring shots of his four overs so far. Four overs naught for six. Hendricks. Six overs, naught for 14 in his second spell now. His first spell, uh, four overs, naught for 12 from the Kelvin Grove end. And uh, this spell, two overs, naught for two from the Weinberg end. And the other bowler this morning, Nandre Berger, successful bowler in his first over, he took the wicket of Isaac Dikale. Six overs, one for 15. Yeah, an interesting. Oh, is it? oh my I thought goodness. he found the edge. That swing <laughs> is. We saw the frustration from Buren Hendricks last game. And he nipped a couple of wickets in at the end there to, to clean up the, the rocks last week. But he was a frustrated man for most of the game. He, he was, he, A lot he? of teapots yeah. going there. <laughs> and uh, that drop catch in, the, in a couple of overs ago from Eddie Moore won't help that. No, not at all. But he did bowl really well. He can be pleased with his effort so far. Yeah. He's been on the money, pace as well. Um, and, and he's looking really good this Red Bull season. An important member of this six gun grill Western Province bowling team. Uh, he's away from us now. The Weinberg end, 
and uh, well left there by Fantonda. He has been a little bit guilty this morning of uh, playing at those ones that are a little bit wide of uh, the stumps and uh, perhaps a little bit fortunate not to have uh, caught the edge a couple of times. So uh, we are here at uh, Six Gun Reel Newlands. We're broadcasting to you from the South Pavilion. Cameras are provided courtesy of uh, Pitch Vision. He's giving you the visuals. We'll go through a bit more of that after this. And uh, this is on the official CSA YouTube uh, channel. And uh, we are bringing you this uh, Broadcast the commentary provided with courtesy of uh, Western Province Cricket Association. Uh, here, David Brook next to me, the brand and sponsorship manager for Western Province uh, Cricket. And it really is a, a privilege to be here and be able to talk you through this game and give you the context of what's happening because we're aware you can only see the bowler, and in this instance, you can see the three slips or potentially four. That's yeah, it's too straight from Bjorn Ennis. The shy to stumps. Oh, my goodness. Dave Patterson has done well there, but yes. just keeping mm. the batter on his toes. Fantonda getting off strike. Quick single there. And, uh, yeah, very, very good. Quick single. Good, some good fielding there in uh, the mid wicket region by Patterson. As the field changes over for the left hander, Kleinfeld. And he'll be facing. Hendricks is bowling left arm over from the Weinberg end. Umpire Adrian Holstock at this size standing in his 101st first class game. Yeah. His 100th last week. Uh, on the other end, another experienced uh, umpire, Abdullah Stienkamp, uh, is standing at the Kelvin Grove end. Uh, I think oh. both, that's quick single, that's good running there from the Knights yeah. batters. I think these two batsmen are very are two examples of if you have to get them early. You do, yeah. Um, they, they can bat big. Matthew Kleinfeld is a confidence player. If he gets going, gets his eye and he can bat long, he, he can bat big. <coughs> and as well as Reynald Fontonda. Reynald Fontonda wants to test himself he does, on, yeah. the, on the coast here. Yeah. And uh, it's a, it will be a good test for, for him. He does enjoy playing at Newlands. He, he, uh, he does seem to always be in the squad, mm. in the team when, when the Knights are in town. Um, and the Knights will need these two batters to really bat long and bat big to set this match up for them. As he oh found Nick, my goodness! I, I heard, heard something here, yeah, James. I definitely I heard a sound, but I think it was the bats on potentially pad and uh, absolutely no appeal from behind the stumps or in front of the stumps for that matter. Another good over from Hendricks. He only concedes two in that over yet again seven overs naught for 16 and it has been an impressive bowling display from the six gun grill western province this morning and just to uh, also uh, speak a bit about our sponsors here uh, six gun grill uh, every man's every meal should i say every man's best friend every that's, <laughs> that's a dog isn't it <laughs> every meal's uh, best friend six gun grill who've been supporting and sponsoring Western Province Cricket now for a number of years. The headline sponsor here this season at uh, Western Province. Oh, well left again by Kleinfeld on a length as much as line and uh, it's yeah. no addition to the score. Yeah, James, you know, just on, on Six Gun Grill, you know, I think it's important to, to pay tribute to the, the partners. I don't like to call them sponsors, yeah. but the partners that that get involved, especially on domestic level. Mm. Um, domestic level is the is the lifeblood of um, of, of cricket. Absolutely. Um, the feeder system to the proteas it needs to be strong around the country. Um, and partners such as Six Gun Grill, we get involved not only at, at uh, uh, from a stadium point of view, but from a team point of view. Mm. Uh, it, it's absolutely crucial to the survival of, of domestic cricket. Domestic cricket needs to be strong around the country, not just in in one region, yep. one or two regions. It needs to be strong around the country. The whole restructuring mm -hmm. um, of domestic cricket last mm -hmm. season, I think, um, played a big role in that. Um, but it is nice to see that most of the teams around the country um, have got uh, sponsors involved, whether yeah. it's you yeah. know it's partners or uh, trade partners, value in kind, as they as we call it in the mm -hmm. in the sponsorship yeah. game. 
but it's important that we, that we, but it's also important that um, we are able to oh that's well bowled there from Dave Patterson there again. it's also important mm. that you know the, the game has evolved um, mm. and you know the four day games back in our day some of those games were broadcast on on TV at least once a week yeah one game a week but we don't have that anymore um, so it's important that through Pitch Vision and through Cricket South Africa YouTube page we are able to bring you the action here um, but we wouldn't be able to do that with our partners involved such as Six Gun Grill. So Absolutely. I think it's important that we, 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 we really pay tribute to them and say thank you for that. Um, and we get to broadcast our games around the world now. So uh, another very good delivery from uh, Patterson around the wickets and there are three balls left uh, in this, his fifth over, probably coming to close to the end of his uh, spell here and I would expect we're probably going to see Tepo Mareki from uh, the northern end of the ground. Uh, could be Nandre Berger but uh, one feels uh, Tepo not having bowled yet this morning. He's going to have a bowl within the next few overs one would feel but as you say David very important that we acknowledge that. Uh, very much involved in the development of the game Oh, that's a good delivery from Patterson again to the left-hander and uh, fielded here in front of us by Nandre Berger, who's coming around from his position at uh, fine leg. And uh, they take the single or change now for the right-handed uh, Fantonde. And as you say, Fantonde will be looking to uh, push on from here. Both of these batters have got starts. It's not been that easy out there. They've done the hard yards and there will be Dane Patterson, the four slips behind the stumps. They're all going to be looking to uh, try and prevent that from uh, happening. You might have seen in the corner of your photo, in your of your screen there, as, Ed, Dane Patterson, as Eddie Moore doing some, some yeah, push-ups push there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a fine for dropping a catch. For, for every drop catch, you have to do 50 push-ups. But uh, Eddie Moore is a fit young man mm. and uh, He's just showing that he's, he's up for it and I like the energy. I, yeah. And I, I think there's, there's a good spirit in the side at the moment. Obviously, being quite close to the team, you do see the, 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 inside, um, the inside vibe. Um, but I think Carl Varane has got a very um, honest way of captaining. Mm. I think that's a good way of putting it. Um, he does let you know, the senior guys, uh, Coach Salak knock it in yeah. as well. He does, um, he does allow the, the guys to... to not run the side, but lead the yeah. way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's not top-down no. um, kind of messaging. Uh, he's a very kind of he's a very good um, uh, man manager. Hendricks away from us at the Weinberg end. Another very good delivery. This is squeezed out into a backward point. Tony Dzorzi is in that position. We got four slips. A backward point. A man at uh, a wideish <laughs> mid off. We got a mid on. A mid wicket and a man at. Uh, Long leg, it's a 6-3 offside leg side field. Uh, I was going to try and explain to you, you may hear some uh, noises in the background and in, in the forum. We are broadcasting in the open air, as it were. Uh, we are in the South Pavilion, overlooking the pitch slightly to the uh, offside of straight for the left-hander. That's another very oh, good well delivery called. from uh, Hendricks. And, uh, resolutely defended we have uh, 40 minutes to go until uh, lunch this is a very important period of play in fact as every period of play is probably yeah, in a four-day game but it is important uh, that the consolidation uh, after that loss of the early wicket of Dikhala continues yeah I think it for for the Knights it's not about the runs in the, in the first session they want to keep the scoreboard ticking but it's not it's about not losing wickets and they Correct. want to still be one down at lunchtime if they get one down and they've only got 50 runs on the board They'll be quite happy with that. Um, they will be very. They will, their lunch will taste really good. Oh my God! I think he's got, got him this time. I say yes, he's given him, and James. that is the end of Matthew Kleinfeld. Commentators curse there, James. It is, yes, it is indeed. <laughs> Apologies. Just but calling it, yeah, but it, it was uh, no less than Buren Hendricks has deserved. Yeah, he's deserved that one, and I think that might be his last over, to be fair, it before be. he got that yeah. wicket. Yeah. But he might have his his, uh, his tail up after that, and Buren Hendricks, he's caught Carl Verena. Matthew Kleinfeld's gone for 19. He was there for 70 minutes, 56 balls, 
plays 46 dot balls yeah two four so 46 dot balls tell us a big story of it how does. good the bowling yeah. has been there hasn't been any loose deliveries from the bowlers keeping that pressure on and all of a sudden 38 for one moves yeah. to 38 for two and it's a whole different story here Indeed. as the western province pick up the much needed second wicket before the mm -hmm. lunch interval as Jacques Sneeman comes in at number four yeah. for the iTech Knights. I thought we might see Pipe Van Bouillon coming in, but when you have a batter like Jacques Sneeman, who's an attacking batter, mm. you might want to bring him in maybe a bit later on, but he comes in at number four to join <laughs> Reynard Fontonda out in the middle in a little tricky period now Yeah, very for difficult. these two batters. Yeah, I'm just talking about the fact that it was you know 40 minutes before the luncheon interval. Right, before you set him up, didn't we? But it, yeah. it wasn't the greatest of shots, one must say. No, it, it was must a be it was a, it was sort of in that uh, the lens was good from Hendricks, but trying to pull that one uh, away to the leg side uh, just just, yeah, didn't no. just didn't rise enough. Just didn't rise enough to to get that um, good bowling there from from Bjorn Hendricks. Really, just making him play at that uncomfortable length. And he did well. Carl Verena picking up another catch behind the stumps. Just giving the team that much needed boost, that second wicket that they were looking for. And Buren Hendricks has delivered. Are we going to see another over here for him after this? Well, we shall see. We might yeah. see Tepo Moreki come in from the Weinberg end. May well uh, see a, another over having had this um, very, uh, yeah, very good potentially end to his spell as it's Hendricks. As oh it, my goodness, that's a huge, he's getting on first ball, my goodness. That seemed back into the uh, right-hander and he took the pad first and then onto the bat and Adrian Holstock has given the decision. James, I felt like that was in slow motion. <laughs> to be honest, I think it hit his pad three times while, he, while they were appealing. But Jock Stoneman, that is a massive oh wicket goodness. here in Hendricks, the second oh. wicket, two and two. From yeah. the left hand, left arm swing we'll bowler. Just take you through that again. It's Hendricks is into the new batter, and in fact, that hit him on the front pad, then onto the back pad as he came halfway forward. Uh, the first impact on the front pad was in line with the uh, middle stump. It was going to careen on uh, one field's hit between the middle and leg, and uh, Jacques Neyman batting at to number four this week after he batted number three for the iTech Knights and he has to make his way back to the pavilion without bothering the scorers at yeah, all. It says that he's been there for two minutes. Yeah, that's it, it about took, right. It felt like two minutes <laughs> it took to for the umpire to make that decision. But uh, it was a great delivery there. That's not the kind of delivery you want no. to face first ball. Not at all. As a batter under tricky bowling conditions, batting conditions at least. And Rainer Fontorna grabs another drink as he face as he welcomes a, another new batter out to the crease. Are we going to see? Yes, it is. The, the captain, Pipe van Bouillon, is sporting in November. Well, that's, uh, yeah, and very good cause. <laughs> Maybe he's uh, uh, very good. making sure that uh, supporting that men's uh, prostate cancer drive uh, every November. Uh, as David says, now it's called uh, Movember. Uh, I won't even try and attempt to give you any information about the attempts that I had <laughs> at growing a moustache, so we won't go there. I'll and, stick to my beard, yeah. James. I, won't, uh, I don't look good with just a moustache. <laughs> but uh, Bjorn yeah. Hendricks has wow. been... He's on a hat-trick here, James. He is on a hat-trick. Are we going so to see a first-class oh, hat-trick? Are we, are we indeed? For Bjorn Hendricks. Uh, have us then... Give the man an extra Looking slip, surely. The, uh, yeah, he's got the four slips still. He's got the man at backward point. He's got the mid off, mid on. Man forward square on the leg side. The right handed Van Bouillon. And the right handed Fantonda now at uh, the crease together. And it's all gone wrong in the last two deliveries for the iTech Knights after that really good start. And. Uh, I say a really good start, that very good partnership of 36 between Fantonda and Kleinfeld. Tension mounts here. In. Oh, oh, very good delivery. My goodness, that could have taken the edge so easily. Oh. Out of half of the bat to the man at backward point and uh, hands in the air on their heads. Oh, my goodness, if you're a six gun grill Western Province supporter, that was. Uh, <laughs> Very close. 
wry smile from David here yeah, next to that, me. That was an excellent <laughs> delivery there from Bjorn Hendricks, forcing them to play at that one and just did well to get out of that delivery there. Pai van Bilyon, that's did. a tough one to oh. face up front and Bjorn Hendricks is building up. One ball left in the over. What will happen with this one? Oh my goodness, it found another bigger pier, but that uh, looks to me uh, significantly like it was uh, going to be going uh, on with the arm outside the off stump, but fielded at second slip by Moore as it's off the pad. And an outstanding over, it must be said, comes to an end as uh, takes his cap, does double, Buren Hendricks, double, double wicket. Mm. Double wicket maiden there from mm. Buren Hendricks. Mm. Obviously, more uh, maidens are quite prevalent in four-day cricket, but double yeah. wicket. Yeah, he's done well yeah. there. Yeah, maybe tempted to give him one more over. Um, I but think so. I think yeah. you you, yeah. you kind of have to. His confidence is up. Yeah, I think you've got to let him have one more over. Temple Moreki will be held back a little bit longer as Dane Patterson continues from the Kelvin Grove end. That scoreboard looks a lot different. We said it, it does. before that over, yeah. that if they get to lunch with, at 50 for one, they'd be very happy. Mm. 38 for three is a total different complexion to those first innings as Dane oh. Patterson continues and Bjorn Henrik oh. taking that ball <laughs> at, at, at third slip like a man who's just picked up two wickets, at mm. fourth slip, sorry, uh, yeah. like a man who's just taken two wickets. And he does brilliantly in the field. His energies are up, he's smiling. Completely all action from Buren Hendricks in this, his second spell. He's bowled four overs. He's taken two for four. Uh, incredible bowling and very similar to the kind of results we, they were getting last week. This man, Dane Patterson, who led the way on in the second innings on that occasion, as that is a whisker away from Reynard Fantonda's uh, off stump. And uh, that's that uh, extra coat of paint. I think that uh, they'll be looking at the Black Friday specials for the Black Paint <laughs> special. Uh, Six Gun Grill, Western Province. Absolutely. I'll give you a bit of inside information here is that if you are looking for one day cup mm. tickets, we are going to be running a Black Friday special Awesome. On our one day cup tickets at Six Gun Grill Western Province for all our home games. They're coming up in December. And stay tuned to our social media pages for that. Oh, goodness. With the link to buy on Ticket Pro tomorrow morning from about 9 o'clock, you'll be able to get one day cup tickets at just 20 Rand. So stay tuned for that. That is going to be uh, some outstanding cricket that you're going to be able to come in and watch here at Six Gun Grill Newlands in uh, December. Uh, four matches that are taking place, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, David. December the 4th, December the 9th, the 11th and the 18th. And we'll be bringing you the live stream as well for all the non-televised TV games. And uh, just to uh, talk a bit more about David, you were talking about uh, plenty of maidens in, uh, in cricket. Uh, the WSL have been announced as well, the Women's Super League T20 competition between four composite teams yep. announced to be held here at Newlands between the 12th and uh, 15th, is it? Or 12th, 12th and 16th, 16th yep. of, uh, so of December. So something really outstanding to look forward to there. So plenty of cricket uh, in, coming along. Yeah, I think that's, we love hosting that tournament here at Six Gun Girl Newlands. It's some of the best talented lady cricketers from around the country. Yeah. It hasn't been played uh, since COVID. They, sure. they took a year for COVID. But it's back and it's back coming. That December period is yeah. just a wonderful period. Yeah, it is. Um, it really is a, a wonderful period. The school holidays kick in. Yeah. Um, companies go on their Christmas breaks. And what better place to be than Six Gun Grill Newlands than watching some cricket here. It's going to be summer, the start of summer. The start of what is going to be an incredible season here with the SA20 taking place in January and February. The, so we start in December with the One Day Cup and the Women's Super League. Then in January, February, early February, we have the SA20 where MI Cape Town are going to be, and they just, uh, we can yeah. talk about it just now, but Jofra yeah. Archer has been announced yeah, yesterday, as, jo the, saw that yesterday as the wild yeah. card for yeah. MI Cape Town. So that should be packed crowds in January. And then in February, we've got the Women's ICC Women's T20 World Cup most of the games including the opening yeah. ceremony the t the, the semi-finals and finals 
taking place right here at Tipton and Golden Newlands. So a season of cricket uh, to look forward to here as we look forward to Buren Hendricks bowling his ninth oh. over and that's a one bounce to George Linder at fourth slip. This has been an outstanding spell from him here from the Weinberg end, Buren Hendricks is continuing the attack. Uh, Pite van Bouillon is uh, facing, he is just just come in, uh, came in in fact on the, I think it was fourth or fourth ball, fifth ball of the last over where two wickets were taken in consecutive deliveries by Hendricks and it is going to take all his powers of concentration to survive the next uh, few minutes, let alone the next half an hour until lunch. Ooh, just down oh. the leg side there, coming across the stumps there. Mm. Almost uh, taking out his leg stump a little bit closer. Maybe it's not as close as what we think it is coming from this angle here. But Buren Hendricks into his ninth over now. And I think credit to, to, to the captain as well. Yeah. Because when a bowler says to you, I'm not maybe feeling it from the one end. Yeah. But it's still early doors. Let him change, uh, let him change uh, ends. And he's done just that. And he's done the job. He's repaid that faith by his captain giving him two wickets three wickets down so far in the first session as it stands a very good performance so far from the Western Province bowlers Hendricks after, lo oh, Sorry, after yeah. losing the toss uh, yeah, the Knights won the toss, the toss yeah. um, Pat van Bouillon said we'll take a bat first um, Carl Varena wasn't looking too upset about that no. the conditions did look good for bowling but you never know because you, you don't ideally want to bat last no. on, on certain pitches but his bowlers are <coughs> making sure that it wasn't a bad toss to lose. And, and the run rate, they've yeah. kept the run rate to 1.9, James. It was a little bit yeah. over two, yeah. but 1.9 is very good. It's okay to have that run rate if you're only one wicket down, yeah. but you're three wickets down. And uh, the cream of the uh, batting order, it's, some of it has uh, gone. Okay. That's in the air and it's way, and he's taken the catch. Has he taken the catch? Yes, he has indeed taken the catch. That Sefo Marecki on the boundary at fine leg. The entire team just hairs across the field to go and congratulate him. Pipe van Bouillon, who's not been able to get bats on ball, has uh, taken that short one, taken it on, and he has hooked it down to Sefo Marecki, and he's gone without scoring. Buren Hendricks showing all his experience there. He's been bowling straight and full with a bit of swing, and he bowls. He knows that Pat van Bouillon is a bit susceptible to the short delivery. He's going to go after it, Pat. And he did just that. And that was a fantastic catch. That went flying to Tepo Moreki down at fine leg. And Pat van Bouillon, that is a massive wicket as sure. we near the lunch break. Another batter out for without scoring. Jeez. And that is just in the context of the, of the first innings. Yeah. That is a massive wicket. We, we, did, we haven't mentioned yet that the first bonus point for, for the bowlers... The bowling team came when they took the three wickets. You get bonus points for three, five, seven, and nine, and they are on their way. Six Gun Girl Western Province have the Knights struggling here at Newland. The score still remains on 38, 38 Yeah, Three wickets have gone down on 38, uh, so no runs have been scored since uh, the wicket of M Matthew Kleinfeld. The first wicket went down with the uh, De Halle, it was gone two, uh, then 38 for 2, 38 for 3, 38 for 4, and 2 ducks uh, for Sneeman and uh, Van Bouillon. And the score is still 38, 38 for 4. Jean Klutter, who comes to the crease, it's, uh, he batting at number 6. And he will be looking to consolidate with Reynard Fantonde ahead of uh, the luncheon interval, which is now 25 minutes away i think i remember saying at 40 minutes away from the lunch interval that this was a crucial period of play just as uh, you you just getting into that period when the two batters were looking set and took one shot from uh, clay felt perhaps slightly injudicious trying to play a short arm jab against hendrix who'd been bowling really well and kept it tight and uh, got the edge behind and then no sooner that happened that the next delivery, Sneeman, LBW trapped probably in front and no hesitation from uh, 
Adrian Holdstock, although uh, David Brooke said it felt like an eternity. <laughs> Not that much hesitation, let's put it that way. From Adrian Holdstock, it was Stone Dead LBW, and now with the fourth ball of his ninth over remaining uh, bowling from this end after taking those two wickets in the previous over. Bjorn Hendricks gets a fight van Bouillon and he's going to be bowling to the left-handed Jean Clutter. Yeah, it's tempting. Oh, that's oh. a good first delivery. It's tempting yeah. to keep the left-arm bowlers on. You might see Nandre Berger maybe replace yeah, Dan so. Patterson or maybe from this end, from maybe replace yeah. Buren from this end. I think so. Um, coming back before lunch interval, I think that, I think credit also must go to Dane Patterson. Yeah. He's given away just seven <coughs> runs from that from the Kelvin Grove well, end. And he's, he's given away nothing. No. And uh, he, th th this bowling lineup bowls in packs, as we said last they week. Do indeed. Nobody yeah. took five hers or anything like no. that, but they no. dismantled them twice. Yeah. And I think that they're well on their way. Bjorn Hendricks getting just reward. Oh! Getting just reward for his <laughs> efforts, and the energy is up. The slip fielders are running too. They want to get as many overs in before the lunch interval. They are a little bit behind the mm, run rate. They are 16 um, minutes behind. 16 yeah. minutes behind, which will. But when you bowl a team out, that, yeah. that gets wiped out very quickly. Yeah. Um, and that will be their aim. 21 overs so far, just before. The, I mean, normally we're looking at about 15, 16 overs yeah. per. So they wanna get, they're they not going to get nine overs between, maybe nine overs in the next 20 minutes. That's going to take yeah, a lot, unless so, some spin yeah. is going to come on. But they One, won't want to bring I, in George I don't Linder. think so. I think they'll make up for that uh, in perhaps the next session. 38 yeah. for four, just uh, to... Uh, remind you of what's happened here if you are tuning in to us for the first time welcome here from six gun grill newlands it is now turning out to be a lovely day it is uh, quite windy out there not that warm as it's dame patterson towards us oh, oh my goodness patterson uh, comes off the inside half of uh, reynald fontana's bat but and he uh, plays it out to the man at mid wicket, that is Yasin Valley. We've got four slips backward point, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a man at uh, long leg. And it is all six gun grill Western Province at the moment. Had you been tuned in about 20 minutes ago, it was the Knights who were 38 for one. They're now 38 for four. Yeah, I think you know a lot has been spoken about Reno Fontondo as one of the young, talented batters mm -hmm. in the country. And if you're going to go into high honours, these are the kind of innings yeah. and the kind of situations that you need to deliver for your side. 38 for 4, you're the not-out batsman, you're the set batters. Batter at 60, not out, but his team are going to need a big innings from the young man to they, really yeah. put something on the board here in the first innings. They are indeed, and uh, he has probably Clutter and uh, Aubrey Swanepoel to come who are the ones that are going to have to stay with him that's a lot finer but Berger will do the fielding will he down here in front of us no he's not able to get around we couldn't see that to, to Nandre Berger coming around from fine leg not able to uh, cut that off and it went very fine and down to the boundary for four and that is uh, only the second boundary conceded by Dane Patterson in his spell. So uh, just uh, to reiterate what has happened this today, it's uh, ITEC Knights winning the toss, uh, as we'll give you some more of that information now. Another good delivery from uh, Patterson. They won the toss, ITEC Knights decided to bat. Uh, we get in the first over, Isaac Dekale uh, was uh, caught in Gajima, bowled by Berger for two. Uh, for the fourth ball of the innings and then a very good partnership between Fantonda and uh, it was Matthew Kleinfeld. Uh, Eddie Moore dropping uh, Reinhardt Fantonda at, with a score at 27. Uh, score got to 38 before Kleinfeld uh, played underneath slightly as, as Patterson again. Oh. I rolled him, has he? That's LB. Yes, he's given him because he didn't play a shot. That ball came back in towards him, targeting the up the top of off stump. And to me, I thought that had bowled him, but it almost did just as well as that. Yeah, it? I think that I, I also thought that, James, but yeah. Dane Patterson, he's deserved that wicket. He's he bowled with absolute accuracy and precision this morning. And that is the big wicket of Reynard Fontonda, LBW, Dane Patterson. 
He was there for 90 minutes, faced 63 deliveries, 53 dot balls again, while showing the accuracy and the precision of the bowlers this morning. Just two fours, and that's the fifth wicket down for the wow. high-tech Knights. That is disaster for Completely. the away team. 42 for five in the 22nd over. We're still 20 minutes away from lunch, James. Yeah. And this has been a phenomenal last half an hour from the Western Province bowlers. Incredible stuff uh, once again from this pace attack of Six Gun Grill Western Province, 42 for 5. Just to, to remind you, it was 38 for 1. And uh, Fantonda to that one, uh, just padding up outside the off stump, but the ball did not move away. It came back in, and that would have uh, knocked over middle and leg. It was coming back in to the uh, right hander. And it will be Aubrey Swanepoel now that will come out uh, to face uh, Dane Patterson with Buren Hendricks uh, from this side on fire as well. David was talking a little bit earlier before the wicket about how the pace bowlers have been working as a pack, uh, this uh, wolf pack as they are, <laughs> the Western Province pace men, uh, putting together an incredible spell of bowling between Patterson and Hendricks uh, where they've conceded virtually nothing. Uh, the last uh, 10 overs uh, has been about 10 runs I think that have been scored and uh, for the loss of now four wickets, three wickets going down at 38, one now at 42 and it has been carnage. That's all one can say. One can say international standard Swing, yeah. uh, seam bowling, a oh. uh, bit of an inside edge from mm. Aubrey Swanepoel there, but world class bowling here from the Western Province seamers. And we still haven't seen the fourth seamer no. in the attack, and it looks like he might get around now. Yeah, Temple Mareki is taking off the jumper, and Buren Hendricks, what a smell of bowling wow. from him. He will go into the lunch interval with three wickets in his pocket for just 16 runs, nine overs, and that's a good, that's exactly what you want yeah. from the captaincy point of view. Mm -hmm. Tepo Moreki needs to hit the ground running here and keep that pressure on when you've got a team down. This is exactly what you want. You want to keep that team down. You don't want to give them any runs, no matter if the, the scoreboard is, says 42 or 442. You want to keep the pressure on and they've done just that. They've picked up already two bonus points, bowling points already before lunch. Mm -hmm. Coach and captain will be delighted with that. Yeah. And the run rate is excellent. So just uh, to give you that second spell from Buren Hendricks, uh, he bowled four overs from the Kelvin Grove end, uh, naught for 12. He's come back on and he's bowled five overs, three for four from four. the Weinberg end and you cannot ask for a better return than that. Last week we saw him leaving the field after his spell of bowling but he wasn't oh. going anywhere now. He wants no. to be in in the action Buren <laughs> Hendricks. He's going to be ready for that. We saw him drop a catch last week <laughs> in the slips but he knows that if that catch comes to him he's got it and Tepo Mareki starts well right outside off stump. Does indeed. His first delivery of uh, his spell so far has been the three pace bowlers for Six Gun Grill Western Province. It's been uh, Hendricks, as I've just given you his numbers. Patterson, one for 11 of seven, getting reward in that last over. He's bowled those seven overs uh, on the trot. One would perhaps expect Andre Berger to come back in uh, from the but from the Kelvin Grove end uh, at the end of uh, this over. Uh, probably eight overs, a little bit too much perhaps for Dane Patterson in one spell, but it has been outstanding bowling uh, once again. Last week we saw them, uh, this pace quartet, working together to inflict significant damage on the uh, G-Bets uh, rocks, and uh, they have rocked the iTech Knights back here in the last 25 minutes, David, four wickets for the, uh, in the space and four runs only that's been scored. Yeah, it's a totally different game right now as it was 25 minutes ago. <laughs> good good wow. steep bounce there from Seppo yeah. Moreki. Even the, the wicket keeper in the slips realised that and they're giving him, giving their man all the confidence. Nice He's got his yeah. field set here, he's got four slips very close in. We've got a, a point, Yazin Valley at point. 
we've got Tony Dezorzi at mid-off, Dane Patterson mid-on, we've got a mid-wicket, I think that's Nandre Berger, mm. and then it looks like George Linder, I think down at fine leg. Uh, Are we maybe going to see an over from, well, we, we see Nandre, Nandre's warming up there. Yeah, I, I do think it'll be, should be Berger, I think you need to continue with this pace attack. Yeah. Um, Relentless pace attack. Yeah. I don't think there's any need to bring on the spinner before lunch. No. Normally, if George is, is going to bowl, he's warming up every single ball <laughs> of the <laughs> yeah. seven overs before he, he comes on to bowl. He is a rhythm player, but he's not looking like he's warming up there. As he, I think that's Ashley Flockman from Gallo Images, one of the legends of, yeah. of uh, photography in, in this region, shooting once again here at, at Six Gun Grill Newlands. His worst places to be as a photographer yeah, on, a, on, a, on a Thursday morning. And I think credit to him as well. He's been a stalwart over the years, Ashley Flockman. I saw Grant Pitcher here as well from Gallo. And oh. it's great to have the guys here shooting the action here. Yeah, just uh, David, really great of you to talk about uh, Ashley, some outstanding images uh, that he, he, he's produced. Uh, I know certainly since uh, I've been uh, here at uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands. Always great to to say hello to Ashley. Really, really great character. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, you know we don't give those kind of guys enough credit in the in this industry. They're the ones that capture those incredible yeah. moments. Yeah. Um, Gala images behind the scenes have, have done some. Oh, just teasing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Clutty's an attacking player, and just mm. put one outside the outside the off stump there to drive, but Clutty realize he's playing red ball cricket and his side of five down before lunch yeah and it's just not worth playing at that shot he did well to pull back as Sepul Moreki bowls a maiden in his first over a good first over there from Sepul Moreki keeping up the pressure as we said as Dane Patterson looks like he's continuing from oh, interesting the Kelvin Grove end he'll go into his eighth over taking one wicket for 11 runs I think that wicket in the last over yeah, there just, really just gave him a just G'd him up one a bit, more didn't it yeah yeah. Dane Patterson's got a huge engine yeah. and he's, he's worked on his fitness over the years and I think working in the county game, yeah. learned how to manage his body, learned how to manage his game and he's really come come back as a, a renewed bowler. I think yeah, you know, it, it he, just, was, he yeah. was maybe a little Incredible. bit um, susceptible to, to just running in and bowling yeah. and not, yeah. but I think the county game makes you think about your game and where to land every delivery and how to land every delivery on the money um, and he's done just that he's taken over 50 wickets for his county knots in both seasons that he's been there just recently signed a two-year extension there and he's come back here and he's got his tail up here and he's what's out oh. oh, Aubrey Swanepoel goodness me didn't need to play at that no. one no reason at all to play at that one and he almost finds the outside edge from Dane Patterson a little bit shorter but mm. just teasing Swanepoel, he knows that he's got two attacking batsmen at the crease at the moment. Aubrey Swanepoel's only played seven first-class games in yeah. the four-day series at least. I think he played some uh, three-day cricket, but still considered first-class. Yeah. But four-day stats only showed him play seven games there. Um, and there's a reason for that. He is an attacking player. Yeah. Um, and he just couldn't help himself there and he almost found the edge. That would have been even worse for the Knights top score of uh, 34 Aubrey Swanepoel and he gets himself off the mark with a single into the midwicket region Yasin Valley uh, does the fielding and uh, that takes the total to 43 for five yes you heard correctly 43 for five on the Knights uh, Captain Pipe von Bullion winning the toss this morning and deciding to bat first on what looked like a good cricket wicket it's got a bit of green on it. David, you were down there a bit earlier on. Perhaps you can give us a bit more insight. Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the wicket, just like last week, was actually a bowling first wicket. Last yeah. week we saw the rocks just not getting harder for you and bowled really well, but the mm -hmm. other seamers, the young seam attack, didn't really find the right areas. I still believe that it was a bowling first yeah. um, wicket last week, and I, I felt the same today. Mm. As the, Gian Clutty gets off the mark with a single, but again, a good delivery there from Dane Patterson. And I think this morning was a was a bowling wicket as well. The conditions and the pitch. Yeah. Um, often you're tempted as a captain to bat first because it's it's red ball cricket. Yeah. Get the runs on the board and try and pile on the runs. But I think it was a good decision in the bowling lineup for 
Um, Gerald Kutsia is going to be looking to make a name for himself here. Yeah. He's been called up to the test side. He has been. Uh, spoke yeah. to him this morning and uh, he's, he's going to be leading their attack. Um, and he'll want to put on a good performance here. But when your team are 44 for 5, you're going to need the pressures on. Yeah. And uh, no, no Michael Petroius in uh, this uh, iTech Knights lineup. Uh, Swanepoel replacing him. Was that pad, bat onto pad? And uh, unmoved Umpire says in no. both instances, Abdullah Stienkamp. Um, not quite. He's indicating that it was too high. Uh, was it just Swanepoel obviously is uh, standing. Uh, exactly where he is. The umpire needs to make the decision. Daniel Smith, it was. You would have seen in your picture running forward and uh, yeah. It did to, look like to, a to heavy. Pick that one up. It, it was uh, off the back pad, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure what could have saved him there, David. Um, you know, in terms of the decision, looked very straight from Patterson. Uh, seemed to hit him very much in line with middle and leg as that's played nicely this time into the covers. Dzorzi does the fielding, it's only the single. Uh, Patterson will probably not have another over after this. Uh, he still looks a bit uh, perplexed as to why that wasn't given out. Uh, presumably Western Province feeling that the only reason why it wasn't given out was if he got a scratch on it. And then the catch was taken by Daniel Smith running diving forward and uh, Abdullah Stienkamp indicating that uh, there was no impact with the bat uh, and that the, the, the ball had uh, hit the batter probably going over the top of off stump, sorry, top of the probably middle and leg stumps as uh, that one hit him very much, I think, in front. So perhaps a bit of a let off. Yeah, a night. little bit of a let off there and they, they need some luck they do. here at, at Newlands. As they head towards the lunch break, I think we'll get two overs in before yeah. the lunch break. Yeah. Dane Patterson showing all his experience here, telling, giving Tepo Moreki some advice on where to bowl, where to pitch on this, on this pitch and to this batter, Aubrey Swanepoel. That's a tough period. He didn't think he'd be in here before no, lunch time. No. He might have even been down at the nets asking the assistant coach of the Knights to come throw some deliveries. And they probably called him back to say, yeah. listen, mate, you're up early here. Tepo Moreki comes in. Oh, he slashes that oh, one. That's two short outside off stump. Yeah. And Swanepoel slashes at that. And he knows there's no protection there. And he get, picks up a boundary. A much needed boundary there for the Knights. Too short for Moreki. And he will know that the pressure. he needs to keep that pressure on. And that's a good start of the over. To the over for the Knights. So it's just that little bit of width. And there is good bounce on this wicket for the bowlers and that meant he could just take his arms through that and sort of flay that one over the slip cordon and he is playing his shots though David you're right uh, Marek will want to tighten this up right arm over the wicket to the right hander Ooh. oh he plays and misses that's at much that better. one that's where you want it to be short of a length on that uh, in that uh, corridor of uncertainty uh, that's a good, that off stump. much better delivery there for Tepo Mareki as he smiles. He knows that he, he gave away a short delivery first up and he gave it back. Good delivery there as Dane Patterson is on ball shining duties. There's always that one experienced player yeah, that's got, that knows exactly what to do <laughs> with the shining of the ball. He was doing that last week as well, David. Yeah. He's uh, been given the, uh, the honor or the task of making sure that you manage the ball very important to do that oh he just steps across oh, there goodness. just steps across his stumps and he gets an outside edge swan pull and he'll pick up a couple as the score reaches yep. the 50 run mark for the itech knights they are 51 for five that's coming 148 deliveries 125 minutes five boundaries no sixes so far in the innings as 51 for five Aubrey swan pull Eight not out, Jean Clitty, one not out. They're going to need a big partnership here, James. They will. This, these two, uh, David, I was going to ask you a bit about that as well. These two, uh, the last of anybody with uh, recognized batting experience, they're in to come next uh, on the scorecard, Gerald Kutsia. And uh, we shall see exactly 
how it's going to uh, play out as uh, Swanepoel is coming across his stumps again. That's his first yeah. trigger movement yeah. is uh, to the offside. And uh, I wonder whether it wouldn't perhaps be uh, an interesting ploy to go around the wicket even to the right-hander. Yeah, we saw Tepo Mareki bowl Yanaman Milan with an excellent full delivery yeah, last week. Did, yeah. And we might see one fired at middle and middle and leg maybe yeah. to test out that pad or even try and bowl him. Swanepoel is using that trigger movement to move across his stumps. Maybe somebody in the gully position as well. I wouldn't mind seeing. You've got you've got yeah. only 51 runs on the board. Yeah. You don't need. You've got a man on the fine leg boundary. It's in once again from the Weinberg end. That's a good delivery outside the line of the off stump, uh, but no need for Swanepoel to play at that one on this occasion. Uh, they seem like a man who likes to have uh, get his bat uh, onto the ball, and uh, that sometimes can be. But dangerous in a four-day game when leaving is also a very good shot to play. And sometimes uh, one forgets that and see that is probably a, a bit of the impact of one day and T20 cricket where you're really playing shots uh, all the time. And youngsters who may have grown up in the T20 and uh, uh, era now uh, very much looking to play shots and so it's Marecki away from us again. Oof, and he just gets yeah. that one down to fine leg. He picks up a single. Uh, we will get one more over in here, yeah. and it looks like Dane Patterson will bowl that final over before lunch. Yeah. Why to not? try and I mean, nip out one more. It's been a fantastic yeah. session so far for the Six Gun Girl Western Province. Bowlers, after losing the toss and being uh, Knights deciding to bat first, the bowlers have done their job for their captain, taken five wickets so far for just. Sure conceding 52 runs in the session at a run rate of just over two. They've kept that pressure on relentless, even when they only had one wicket at 38 for one. They've given away another only 14 runs, yeah. and they picked up four wickets in that time. Yeah. As we move to the final over before lunch break. Can, if they get a wicket now, they'll take yeah. the lunch interval during the over. But one more over for the Knights batsman to get through as we head for 25 overs a slow over rate from the yeah, bowlers this morning the captain won't be too worried about that as you say the spinner will come on after lunch if need be and make up the overs but at the moment an excellent job as dane patterson comes in for the final over before lunch and it'll be interesting to see bowling to swanapool how he wants to set this over up he seems to be a past master at that he got him he has yes indeed exactly what Six Gun Grill Western Province and uh, David Brook, my co-commentator, were looking for. Aubrey Swanepoel, he does it again, that trigger movement across uh, to the uh, offside of straight, and it's a straight one outside the line of off stump, and he edges it low down to Daniel Smith at third slip, and Patterson picks up uh, his second wicket of the innings, and at lunch it is 52 for the loss of six are the iTech Knights. Yes, 52 for six. And Swanepoel scores nine in 13 balls. He was at the crease for 17 minutes and uh, caught by yet another, another catch going into the slip cordon. This time it is Daniel Smith at third slip, taking it uh, well low down. And uh, the umpires have uh, called for the luncheon interval, with that wicket falling on the stroke of 10 minutes uh, past 12. And uh, over the last 15, sorry, last 40 minutes, David, we've seen five wickets go down. We were commenting at uh, half past uh, 11 uh, South African Standard Time that there were 40 minutes to go for lunch, I and think it was I came 38 on. for one. I came <laughs> on, I've had a, a yeah. good first hour here. Yeah. It's a good start to my. <laughs> My, my match, James. It has been. It's brought it, about five mm, wickets. Wow. What a, what a really good second hour of play. Something yeah. must have been in that power aid. I think that, so. Uh, yeah. That really G'd them up. And the coaches, the energy as we're seeing on the, on the dugout, the home dugout, the energy was there. They were clapping off their men. As a captain, as a coach, that's exactly what you want from your, from your, your bowlers when you get put into the field. And they've done just that as we head to the lunch interval. We'll see you back in 40 minutes. Yeah. 10 40 to minutes. 1. We'll be back for the second session of what looks like is 
an enthralling first day here wow. at Six Gun Grill Newlands.
Welcome back to uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands and uh, we've just enjoyed a delicious lunch provided here by the team here at uh, Western Province Cricket Association uh, down in the South Pavilion. Thank you very much once again to the catering team and the management here at, here at uh, Six at Western Province Cricket Association for that and we're back live on the pitch in front of you and it is going to be Gerald Kutsia who is going to face the last five deliveries of the Dane Patterson over as uh, he has bowled unchanged in this spell eight overs and one delivery he has taken now two for 14 together with Buren Hendricks has ripped the heart out of this iTech Knights batting lineup and we'll go through at the end of this over we'll take you through what has happened in the day so far uh, I'm James King the Kate Fox and uh, joining me later on will be uh, Tariq Ibrahim as the start of the afternoon session is uh, left alone outside the off stump so the field is a four slips you have a backward point a man at mid off a man at uh, mid wicket and doing some limbering up you can't see him is Nandre Berger presumably he will be coming on from this potentially this the Weinberg end having then Seppel Mareki perhaps take over from Dane Patterson at the Kelvin Grove end Patterson in again and played nicely by Kutsia a right-handed batter to Dzorzi at the middle you have Yassin Valley at a forward square leg and down on the fine leg or the uh, long leg boundary it is Seppo Mureki. Mureki took an outstanding catch to get rid of the ITEC Knights captain Pite van Bouillon earlier on off uh, Buren Hendricks and really in that spell that oh my goodness gracious me another delivery that goes past the outside edge two balls left now in the Patterson over as uh, Tariq Ibrahim joins me. Uh, afternoon, Tariq. And you have the sound of cutlery and crockery going, uh, <laughs> flying in the background. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah. How are you, sir, today? No, no, can't complain. Uh, it's nice to be uh, back on the mic with the uh, Cape Fox. And uh, what, a, what a brilliant day and a, a brilliant oh. opening session we had. Incredible from, uh, stuff. Six Gun Girl, Western Province. Patterson, oh again there, another off the inside of the half of the bat onto the pad, could so easily have cannoned into the stumps, uh, could see her survives, and yeah Tariq, uh, incredible stuff this morning, I mean uh, it looked as if that uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province could have taken a lot more wickets uh, before they did start to fall from about half past 11 this morning. Uh, some outstanding pace bowling, uh, but 38 for one would never have thought it would be 52 for six at lunch. Yeah, that uh, second wicket partnership looked as though that uh, following that early wicket, yeah, that the ITEC Knights you know settled things down a little bit. Uh, you know, Matthew Kleinfeld and, and, and Van Tonder they were really applying mm -hmm. themselves and yeah. getting themselves accustomed to the wicket, and then we just saw. Buren Hendricks with that yeah. uh, yeah, two a over, a two over yeah. burst yeah. that completely knocked over the uh, top order of the ITEC Knights mm -hmm. and that's what has uh, set up uh, Six Gun Girl Western Province to be in the situation mm -hmm. that they're in which mm -hmm. is a good thing because um, yeah. we saw in last week's games okay. against the uh, GBET Rocks and the first game two weeks ago against mm -hmm. uh, the Momentum Multiply Titans the, the confidence that is in this uh, Six Gun Girl Western Province oh, yeah. uh, bowling yeah. line incredible uh, and uh, you know one feels uh, you know feel for a young man like Michelin Pongwano who now clearly you know with the unchanged lineup couldn't make his way back into the team this week when I mean, Dane Patterson coming back in to the team and and immediately making a, a huge impact just in terms of how the bowling attacks put together as Mareki 
away from us uh, from the Weinberg end and it's played confidently out into the offside but uh, De Zorzi is uh, well behind that from a wideish mid-off there is no run. Yeah, uh, just the, the bowling as uh, David was talking a bit earlier on uh, about you know, hunting in packs uh, or bowling in packs, bowling, you get bowling partners, you know, they talk about all these things, you know, commentators all the time, the former players, but I know they sound like cliches, but they're not actually, I mean, it, that's the way that it works, I mean, that you had uh, Patterson and, and Hendricks this morning, just watch this delivery, well, that's going down the uh, leg side for Mareki, I think he knows it. Uh, but it always helps to just uh, get the lungs working after lunch. Um, I say that you know they they bowl, you bowl in packs, you know, or you bowl as, as a you work in partnerships together and try and work batsmen through and keep the runs down. I mean, what was your take on what happened this morning? No, it, it was a dare we say it a bowling masterclass from yeah. this uh, four prong uh, seam attack, and we haven't even seen. George Linder into the attack no, and we know no. how, how good he is with the ball. Yeah. Mareki away from us now. Good leave uh, from uh, Klitter. And the one thing that has been that has really stood out in that uh, that first session from, from the Seamers it's just that the areas that they were hitting it was always there for the batsman always keeping the batsman honest they mm -hmm. either had to play at it or you know being two minds with it to play or to leave so they were always giving themselves a chance mm -hmm. and by doing that Oh, that's exactly what they got. They're giving themselves the chance, and uh, well, they picked up six wickets. Yeah, it's um, it has been outstanding, as you say. It was a, you know the whole thing was based on uh, really when Dane Patterson came into the attack. Uh, it's a very good shot from Jean Clutter. It's uh, through the cover region and uh, out to the boundary at. Uh, uh, Widish extra cover, sort of between extra cover and mid off. In fact, right in front of the Western Province dugout here at the uh, Members Pavilion. And uh, that goes for a boundary. And uh, Clutter's first boundary of his innings. Left hander looking very good. That one slightly over pitched from Mareki. And uh, he gets uh, the score going after the luncheon interval. Yeah, probably just searching for a bit of swing is uh, Moreki. So uh, goes uh, a bit too mm. full, half mm. volley, and easy to play through the covers. This time, you know, changes his length a bit, yeah. gets it uh, back over length and clamps the batsman up, who's uh, able to work this one down to uh, deep fun. Yeah, it's uh, certainly not been easy out there. Overhead conditions have been uh, Look cloudy. It was quite humid this morning in Cape Town. More humid than normal. Uh, for, yeah, for a bit of overnight of rain year. as well. Yeah, which was very nice uh, to have uh, the gardens and the greenery here on the outfield. Uh, certainly very happy to have that rain. You know, groundsman Brom Mong here at Six Gun Grill Newlands. Uh, probably listening to the grass growing out of his headphones this morning. Another shot, well, well played, but that's Valley who's uh, in quickly from the uh, backward point region and uh, throws the stumps down at uh, the bowler's end. You would have seen that in uh, your screen, uh, but not before. Clutter is uh, through for the single. And uh, so, yeah, sorry, from the point region that he uh, took that in. And good feeling from the uh, evergreen um, Mo Valley. And uh, well, he's really, he, uh, we were speaking about his feeling last week, uh, Tariq, in the spell that you and I was ahead uh, together, and just how, how fast he is over the outfield, and just a fantastic asset to have in your team. Uh, it's one of the, it's one of those things where you, you know you've got a little bit of a whippet in the in the yeah, field, yeah. and uh, you can almost like leave him. You could probably pack the offside field, yeah. leave him alone <laughs> on the leg side, and just know he's going to chase everything down. <laughs> And it's uh, Patterson that continues after that is another delivery uh, left by uh, Clutter not far away from that uh, off stump it comes in the uh, right arm over uh, around the wicket uh, bowling into the left hand just kept its line 
So just to update you on uh, what's happened with the score here so and, and, and the game so far, in case you are just joining us and you're listening to us rather than uh, watching, it's, uh, we'll just watch Patterson coming towards us from the Kelvin Grove end. That's very well played by Kluter down the ground. It's not going to be cut off and it is uh, going down to the long on boundary for four. The second boundary takes him uh, into double figures. One of only the third bat to get into double figures. For the iTech Knights, they move to 63 for six in the 28th over. Uh, you feel maybe Dane Patterson will probably be taking a break soon. Uh, and I know he's bowled the balance of that over. He's now into another over. Uh, it's going to be bowling 10 on the trot. I know broken by the luncheon interval. As we see another goes uh, down to the man at mid on. That's uh, Nandre Berger. And there is no run on this in this instance. Uh, but probably do a break soon. Yeah, you do. You would think that uh, this will probably be like a two or three over burst yeah. from Patterson before uh, perhaps bringing Nandre Berger yeah, on from, I, from I that think side. So. And Andre having bowled six overs, one for 15 so far. The good thing about Patterson's spell is that you can see that there's been a concerted plan and you can see yeah. that he's thinking as a bowler. It's not just being your case of run up, pitch the ball and see what happens. He's, he's bowling with a, with a definite plan. As, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> earlier on, you know, I was uh, setting up in the, in the media center right. on the Calvin Grove inside where he's bowling from. Yeah. And you could just see that there's, there's a concerted plan is there's a lot of balls that came in mm. then the odd one that went away which uh, some of the batsmen flashed at mm. so it's nice to see that you know he spent some time over in the county yeah. in the county scene yeah. learned new skills or added to yeah. his uh, skill set just come back down come back home and uh, is showing exactly yeah. how, how much of a class bowler he is just watch this delivery and uh, another one that's uh, straightish but he's trying to make Kluter play and he's certainly achieving that and nothing wrong with that with the score at 63 for 6 11 runs have been added uh, from the blade of uh, Kluter since the luncheon interval uh, but uh, Patterson as you say I mean last week we spoke about the fact that he's been almost metronomic in terms of where he's pitching the ball and, and, and how he's how he's bowling uh, and there's some thinking going on here as well. He's going to be bowling over the wicket now, angling it across the, the left-hander. Kluter liking to feel the bat on the ball. Or he looking to play that into the offside. That's what he's going to want to have him driving outside the off stump. Four slips waiting for that edge. Oh! And his shoulder, his arms, and just, it just... Uh, brushes the pads that comes through very dangerous ploy uh, to pad up to uh, Patterson uh, we saw that uh, with Reynard Fontonda who was given out LBW without playing a shot and Abdullah Stienkamp would have had a look at this one Ooh, my goodness uh, soft signal from uh, Tariq Abraham is out <laughs> no, I reckon. I reckon. Oh, listen, okay, let's, no, listen. Reckon after not, not after going, last sorry. week, that's right. Yeah. You well, know, there, there's no way I'm going <laughs> to give any soft signals while sitting here watching this. But um, I think on, on first glance, I, I definitely yeah, agree it, with the uh, umpire Stian Kamba. Yeah. Was probably going across. It, it did look like it was going to be missing uh, the off stump, but uh, worth sort of a half appeal as uh, it's uh, Mareki uh, who's going to be <laughs> coming in from the from the Weinberg end, uh, it's having a bit of fun here uh, with the... Uh... Oh, he has got him this time. Oh my goodness, another one falls. Gerald Kutsia uh, goes fishing for it outside the off stump. And those ones uh, generally, um, the, the hook's been caught, hasn't it? Uh, good catch from Aviwa Ingwajima at uh, first slip, diving away to his left. There's quite a gap there from Verena to first slip and he Oof. took it exceptionally well with two hands it went very quickly That's... to that man and uh, Tepo Mareki joins the party yep. as uh, Gerald Kutsia uh, goes for yet another duck scored by this uh, iTech Knights lineup it's 63 for 7 that's one of those catches that uh, 
it's in between first slip and the and the wicket keeper. You know, Calvin Rain could have probably also have gone for it. Um, Good, yeah. Decided to leave it, so uh, we were in Vijima. Had to throw himself uh, to his left hand side. The ball stuck, and well, almost yeah, immediately after the lunch and break, yeah. it's uh, a seventh wicket for Siskangrel or Western Province. And uh, at the moment, the uh, ITEC Knights are looking at a total potentially that is going to be uh, below 100 for the first innings, unless uh, Jean Clutter can get some quick runs. And one feels that uh, he is going to be looking for the runs now because not much batting to come. Yeah, a lot of this uh, innings relies on the bat now of uh, Jean Clutter. And. Uh, probably feels perhaps that he should uh, go into white ball mode perhaps you know Maybe. just uh, play, play some shots and and hope uh, that it comes off because at the moment it is all going the way of the home side it is most certainly going the way of uh, the home side as uh, Tepo Mureki as we say comes to the party here 63 for 7 and that partnership uh, with the uh, lunch coming with the score at uh, 52 for the loss of six which was when the last wicket fell that partnership was only 11 it's Mareki into the new man Alfred Matar and uh, that is just defended back uh, to the bowler uh, what a bowling performance this has been and the wickets shared across the pace attack uh, Hendricks has got 3 for 16, Patterson 2 for 18, Berger 1 for 15 and Marecki now in his fourth over from this the Weinberg end 1 for 14 and whilst there was one catch put down by Eddie Moore uh, generally the catching has been outstanding behind uh, the stumps for the six gun grow western province team and those four men in position there been there the entire day so far and that really talks a lot but maybe to the conditions but also to the attacking nature of Carverena and, and his team yeah it's just a good ploy from the captain to uh, show his bowlers listen i back you all the way so yeah. i'm going to give you four catches yeah and uh, you know where you need to bowl the ball so ensure that you do your job and us behind the stumps will do what we need to do. Mareki away from us. In the air, in the gap, uh, where a gully may well have been standing and Matawa is off the mark with uh, that boundary through the vacant gully region and another ball that goes in the air into the slip cordon behind the wicket. and. Uh, yeah, one feels at the moment almost that you could have uh, your entire other nine fielders, um, all, all nine fielders fielding <laughs> in the slip cordon. Uh, such is the way that the bowlers also bowling to their field and Mareki now wanting to uh, have a, 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 a gully in position. Um, one wonders whether that is going to happen. In fact, it is going to happen. And just a change to the field on the leg side, uh, we were in a 6-3 offside leg side field we now are bringing that man in at gully and uh, that is going to be Nandre Berger coming in at gully but that's uh, interesting it looks like uh, Berger is it there? George. Okay. Uh, it's Linda sorry George Linda I do apologize George Linda is down at uh, fine leg thanks for that Tariq and Dane Patterson's gone down to fine leg Nandre Berger in front of us as normal at uh, mid on Mareki again and now of course <laughs> he uh, bowls it onto the pads exactly where that man's been taken out from and he must be holding he's holding his head in his hand sort of how, how do you manage to get that wrong well, <laughs> how, many, how many times have we seen that you pull a fielder from a certain spot uh, to get an extra catcher in and yeah. uh, well the very next ball goes exactly where that fielder was that you pulled him from <laughs> and uh, that one there was angled in to uh, leg and uh, middle and leg and Matara doesn't miss out. That's one of very few deliveries that have actually been uh, anything like loose today from this uh, very, very efficient pace uh, quartet. 
you know, pigeon in the way there is going to just maybe distract him. He doesn't. He, he's in now, and he, that one is uh, very nicely outside the off stump again, defended uh, into the leg side. P Berger picks up, and a, a successful over comes to an end for Six Gun Grill Western Province and Seppo Moreki in particular, and one of the men in that four-pronged uh, pace attack. Uh, really pleasant young man, uh, Tepo Mareki, as are uh, uh, the, these cricketers out there. Some really you know, they get on the field and they, they do their thing for their, for their province, for their team, and the really exceptional performances from many of them. Uh, Tepo Mareki last week, just chatting to him, uh, in the morning uh, of day three and talking about the wicket of Yanaman Milan he bowled him you know bowled him neck and crop last week that certainly uh, the smile on his face when talking about that <laughs> wicket was uh, you know you hear of the, the Cheshire cat ear to ear stuff but such is the, the the nature of this attack is it is going to be Nandre Berger from mm. the uh, Kelvin Grove end, replacing uh, Dane Patterson. And immediately on the money. He it, is, it's, isn't it's he? almost as if uh, yeah. Nandre hasn't stopped bowling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> first delivery, right there on the spot, getting a Gianquitti and a bit of a, a pickle. Yeah, and that's exactly what you do want from uh, your bowlers. They're bowling in tandem, they're bowling as a team. Uh, this quartet, as we say, all on song, as they were last week. And there's just no letter. It's just one no, after the other is, coming at them. And this is the hallmark of a a very good attack working together. Uh, one thinks of this often at uh, test match level, where you have the cream of the crop. And here one can see, and uh, as one has seen last season particularly with the Lions attack as well uh, with Duane Olafia coming back uh, and having Luto Sipamla in that team uh, Sisanda Magala they really had a very potent pace attack nicely played by Kluta on this occasion to Valley at uh, mid-off where they do bowl well as a unit and that wasn't necessarily evident in the four-day competition last season for Six Gun Grill Western Province, Tariq. Yeah, it's been a remarkable turnaround. Uh, and it's, it's good to see that uh, there's, there's this type of confidence in them. Yeah, incredible uh, to see how they... And just they stick to their plan, which is what you want to see at this level uh, as well. It's where you learn your trade. And having experienced campaigners like... Bjorn Hendricks and Dane Patterson in this attack can only be beneficial for uh, Nandre Berger, Tepo Mareki, Michlali Mpongwana uh, in, in this team and uh, not playing today but um, he has the makings of a, a really outstanding all-rounder. One could potentially see him uh, in national colours uh, in, in the years to come. He continues his form with both bat and ball. Nicely played by Klutter, last recognised batsman for the Knights. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why I mean, mentioned earlier on that uh, a lot uh, in this innings is uh, reliant on the shoulders of, of Gian Klutter. Um, obviously, you know, as it yeah. stands, yeah. There's, there's no bonus points, batting no. bonus points heading no. to no. the Aitek Knights. They've got to at least get to the 150 mark That's to secure right. one point, it, at least. It doesn't look like they're going to get there. I mean, Western Province already having secured three bonus points, uh, having got to the seven wickets. Uh, and that's played, uh, that shorter delivery uh, is a nicely played, a sort of short arm jab into the leg side. And... Uh, it's Dzorzi who does the fielding coming around from mid-wicket. They take a single 73 for seven after 30 overs. Matoa's on eight, two boundaries in uh, that over off Mareki in the previous over, the one that threw the vacant gully region, uh, which was then filled with the man from square leg and very next ball. Uh, Mareki straying onto the pads and 
Mator playing it through that region down to the boundary in front of the Oaks uh, for four. So it's been all action since the luncheon interval. We had 21 runs in the space of uh, 25 minutes. So we had 19 runs, sorry, in the space of 25 uh, minutes. Uh, that scoreboard is rectifying itself all the time. It's 72 for seven, 20 runs. I'll get it right in the end. 20 runs. Uh, in the time since the luncheon interval as it's a Marecki again away from us from the Weinberg end past umpire Holstock defended nicely by Klutter into the offside Klutter looking confident looking compact which is exactly what you need to be on this pitch it is going to be a hard graft to begin with and once you get in, you can potentially fill your boots. Uh, Tariq, we saw that last week. You know, it takes some time to get your eye in, see off that uh, new ball, uh, make sure you blunt the attack. Uh, it's uh, nice to play it again. Uh, it's uh, does at mid-off, does the film. It's still got four slips, backward point, mid-off, mid-on, mid-wicket, and a long leg. Yeah, it's all about applying yourself up, up front. And I guess uh, the Aitik Knight saw, got onto the back foot immediately when uh, Isaac De Gale went early. Mm, mm. Uh, you know, Van Tonda and Plainfeld then, you know, did. Basically, mm. while the opening part and shouldn't yeah. you keep themselves in. And it seemed as though they were going to keep going before, you know, before we saw that uh, spell from, from Buren. But there hasn't been anybody since the Kleinfeld and uh, the Van Tonda mm. who's decided to listen I'm going to prize my wicket here yeah. I'm just going to stand there and uh, frustrate Sis mm. Gangrel Western mm. Province we haven't seen that and, and no. perhaps that is no. the one thing that's been lacking from this Itech Knights batting lineup mm. it's just mm. one batter that's just going to stand there and put a, a big price on his wicket well that's right you know blunt it you know one felt that really there were that was the op there was the opportunity i wanted to chat to you a little bit about uh, that reynard fantona dismissal and we'll do that a little bit more after this delivery mareki away from us now nicely played again straight down to de Zorzi. but uh, terry what was your take on that because you almost felt that this was, you know, with his recall back into the team, he'd done so, he'd done the hard yards, he'd got to, or was it, I think it was 18 or, or something, uh, it was, it was, and 20, he got to 20, he faced 62 deliveries to get there, it was a grind to get there, and then it was almost inexplicable how he got himself out. Yeah, that's just the thing, I mean, you've been there for 60 odd deliveries, you know, you've seen off the new ball, you've you've grafted and you've grinded and you know you've yeah. you've played dare we say it ugly innings, mm. which is mm. what you needed at that stage. Yeah. So you got yourself in. Yeah. It was just yeah. a case of keeping that going, sustaining that for a lot longer mm. than uh, than what he did. And if we go back to what we saw last week yeah. when Six Gun Girl Western Province were batting mm. against the Rocks, that's kind of the difference that's what those batters were doing last week yeah, they yeah, got yeah. themselves in they stayed yeah. there for long periods yeah. and yes it wasn't pretty at all times no, no. but they did what they needed to do and it gave them the partnerships yeah it's uh, as you say I mean last week you, you had Dezorzi and Moore that, that saw off a very hostile opening spell uh, from the g -Bets Rocks Oh my goodness, again, but that was in the air, wasn't it, uh, past the diving uh, George Linder at uh, fourth slip and uh, it has gone down to the boundary for four. Alfred Mateau are not holding back, in fact, none of them are holding back. Well, Gian Klitter is, is just trying to graft something out uh, because he I think he knows that it's not going to be long before somebody is going to get an edge. Uh, or is going to be uh, potentially on their way back to the pavilion. He, he did defend or protect Matoa quite significantly in that over. Only the one ball he had to face, which he slashed through the gully region uh, for four. And it'll be Kutter once again to face uh, Berger. 
It's that old saying that the coaches would tell you, if you're going to flash, flash hard. Absolutely. And uh, Motowa is certainly doing that. He's just throwing his back as hard as he can. Tutu facing Berger. So that if the edge yeah. does come off the Motowa back, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's going to make things a little bit harder for, for the slip fielders to catch. Oh. And as we saw there, he flashed, got the massive outside edge. Yeah, one, past the fielder. you wonder whether it wouldn't be, I mean, maybe it's... Uh, just looking at it from up here, you're not going to look at it like this necessarily on the field, but if you have that happening outside the office, I mean, nothing really has come through forward of square. There's been a couple, but those have been good shots. You know, you're happy, you're happy to let that uh, happen uh, and just dab down. Buren for Hendricks just misses out, but they won't take the run. It's only the second ball, third ball of the over, and... Uh, Nothing more to report. And say to put maybe a fly slip in position, you know, with a man flashing outside the off stump just for a Matoa. Um, difficult, I don't know. Yeah, look, maybe maybe is, I'm overthinking it, yeah, you know, in I, terms of the captain. Yeah, you know, perhaps. I, I think this is the, uh, this is where, you know, you want your bowlers to be patient. Yeah. You know, yes, you've got a tail ender that's coming in and he's just flashing at everything. Yeah. Keep putting it in the right spot. Yeah. And that is very, very well played by Cludy. Picked up the length early and uh, pummeled it down to in front of uh, the Oaks for a boundary. And uh, that takes him to 18, 81 for seven. Now, this partnership now worth 18 with the seventh wicket, that of Gerald Kutsia falling with a score on 63. It's been quite a lot of action uh, off the blade of the bat since the luncheon interval uh, batters have gone out there with the intention to play shots when they can at the ball that, that is wide and it's an Andre Berger who want to just uh, tighten up these lengths probably a little bit I know was beautifully played again by Klutter wow it's a great shot I think Andre, the ball prior to this, uh, oh. just tried the short ball just yeah. to see because we haven't yeah. really seen any no, short we balls. we haven't, have we? No. So probably just tried it just to see what's in the surface. Set up nicely for Jian and got smacked to the boundary as, as mm. it should. Mm. And uh, you know, just one of those old edges, edges where yep. it's uh, mm. been telegraphed, you know. The short ball gets dispatched, so what happens in the next one? He goes to <laughs> full and you know, you can you know, drive it through the covers. <laughs> So applying a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure back onto the bowler. Uh, not that there should be any pressure necessarily on uh, this uh, Western Province bowling attack, having the Knights at 85 for seven in the 32nd over. There's been a bit of a flurry of runs uh, in the 35 minutes since uh, lunch. And that's a better short ball from Nandre Berger and Clutter trying to get bat on board to everything that he can at the moment. Uh, misses the high flash outside the off stump through to the keeper Verena. And we haven't said much uh, about through to the keeper Verena today. That's been <laughs> largely because the uh, bowling has been very much targeting uh, off stump or just outside off, making a better play. You know, the one catch that's gone through uh, to Carl Verena, and he took that uh, well, that of uh, Matthew Plainfield. That is in the air, and it's just going to fall away from uh, George Linda, who was after that. And a single has been taken to end the over, so uh, it will be Twitter who will keep the strike, protecting his batting partner. Uh, that's the way to bat with the lower order try and manufacture something which is what he was trying to do Nil nearly lost his wicket as a result but fortunately for him in that instance he, he didn't he's marshalling the troops uh, he's marshalling that well isn't he young Clutter at the moment uh, Alfred Mateau in the last over only faced one delivery didn't face any in that uh, over uh, and that's good to see yeah. uh, you know Jan Clutter being the uh, senior batter is uh, taking the responsibility onto his shoulders and uh, doing what he needs to do from his side to ensure that uh, Motoa is protected, but also that uh, yeah. 
Yeah, he starts scoring runs at least. Absolutely. You know, and, uh, I mean, they want to be out there for as long as possible, uh, these two batters and, and those to come. Only Van Heerden and Budaza that are still in the hut for the ITEC Knights. And the pitch is starting to look a bit flatter. <laughs> uh, uh, the little green tinge that we saw yeah, early this morning starting to fade away as uh, mm. a little bit of the sun sneaks through. It's still a bit overcast. It is, yes. Uh, it's not as uh, hot as it was last week, so no. completely different conditions. And, and that's why you know, if you look at the decision earlier this morning to decide to bat, uh, I know it is, as you say, the old adage is that you, um, you, know, <laughs> you look at the conditions and, and, but then you decide to bat anyway as Kluter lashes it through the offside. And that is uh, going to go to the same advertising hoarding that most of the boundaries have been to today as it's uh, retrieved by Linda uh, under the oaks. And that is another four. Clutter dealing in boundaries at the moment. 27 he is. And uh, that is 90 for seven. This partnership grows to 27, second largest of the innings. And Jean Clutter doing his best to try and get the Knights to a position where they may be able to get a batting bonus point here. Yeah, the first 100 overs count in the first innings. Mareki uh, in again. Matoa wants the run, uh, but he's not going to be uh, persuading his, bat his batting partner, Kluter, that time to take that. So, still three balls left in the over. And he will be looking at farming the strike again uh, for Gian Kluter. Up and coming player, Jean Clutter, has been for a couple of seasons identified as somebody that potentially could go on to have higher honours. Um, he's also can and does keep wickets. I don't think he does for this team necessarily, um, but he is a uh, very, very competent middle order batsman. Oh, oh. he's. Uh it was pulled up uh, a few seasons ago to the national side in the mm. T20 format and gave a, uh, that came off after good performances. Uh, mm. Since then, one feels he probably went into the wilderness a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he just dropped off a little bit, didn't yeah. he? I mean, he was at the Warriors at that time. Um, he no, no longer at the Warriors. I mean, you have got a plethora of players there that were able to play him. Another player that I was looking at or thinking of the other day is uh, Sinatemba Koshile, who also yeah, doesn't seem to be anywhere at the moment and had played a couple of matches for the national team. But Jean Kluter, uh, having made his debut quite a long time ago, uh, is a very senior player, uh, really got into the national limelight, uh, as you said, uh, a few seasons ago. Uh, it, it's got a Good batting average, 30. It's uh, nothing necessarily uh, to be that excited about at first class level, but as I say, very good man to have coming down the order. 125 uh, matches at first class level. Uh, has scored nine centuries, 31 50s. And so he's the right man to have out there at the moment to, to marshal this lower order amongst quite an inexperienced. Uh, to an extent, inexperienced batting line. We're not talking, I mean, he piped from beyond very experienced, um, but some of the others just making their way in first class cricket as Mareki finishes another over. Six overs, one for 32, and we may well not see too much more of Mareki. Uh, maybe another one or two overs from him in this post lunch spell. He's been quite expensive, uh, as he is quite often. But he does have uh, that wicket-taking delivery in him. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Um, I guess batters, if you look at this uh, for for prong seam attack, the batters would have probably identified Moreki as the one to try and cash in on. Yeah. And uh, while they you know, sometimes do get a hold of him and he does uh, you know, concede a bit of runs, mm. he, like you mentioned, he does have that wicket-taking ball. He does. So it's yeah. uh, it's a bit it's a bit of. Uh, you know, uh, the batter saying, right, we can go after Moreki, yeah. but, you know, we've got to be 
patient and, 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 and think about it. Yeah. Because you, you don't know when that wicket taking ball is going to come. Yeah, exactly. As uh, Yanuman Milan found out to his detriment last week, I see the rocks are struggling yet again in the four day competition away to the Hollywood Bets uh, Dolphins. Uh, some of the matches taking place around the country if you are and you can only be watching this on uh, the CSA YouTube channel or maybe on Pitch Vision you will be able to have a look at the other scores. This broadcast brought to you by CSA and uh, visuals via c courtesy of uh, Pitch Vision and the commentary today being brought to you by Western Province Cricket. Oh. Good delivery from Berger. Uh, he was the man to pick up that first wicket, Isaac Di in the first over of the morning. And uh, after that, uh, we haven't given you those figures uh, again in terms of what happened after that, but that was two for one. It was then 38 for two with Matthew Kleinfeld edged behind, when he edged behind to Carl Varena, uh, behind the stumps of Buren Hendricks. Uh, well bowled again by Berger and uh, that was your second wicket down for the Knights on 38 that was about half past 11 this morning so a period of an hour and a half when uh, Kleinfeld and Fantonda consolidated both of them uh, got to, to in the high teens uh, Kleinfeld out for 19 then with a score on 38 for 2 it was quite soon 38 for 3 with Jacques Slayman out first ball LBW to Bjorn Hendricks, no doubt about that decision. It's uh, into the gully again, back of point again. That is uh, good fielding by George Linder, rolling away to his right. So it was 38 for three. It was 38 for four when Piet van Bouillon was uh, tempted after a period of scorelessness by Bjorn Hendricks to go after one. And how was that catch from Tepon Wereki, Tariq, down at uh, final leg? You were closer to it than we were. Yeah. Listen, as soon as the ball went up, I just uh, immediately, I, in fact, I started <laughs> shouting in the middle scene to catch it. <laughs> and uh, to see him, because that ball flew. It, it actually, it, it traveled at quite the speed yeah. and uh, arrived at him very quickly. He still had to move. Um, oh! He had to move a few yards to his yeah. right. Yeah. And, and I think initially, yeah. Watching him, he misjudged a little bit because he yes. came flying in. He did, yes. and then realized hey, this ball's coming at me quite quickly. So he backtracked a little, yeah. and yeah. then got himself into it, and pretty much uh, got into the perfect position in the end, yeah. Yeah. and uh, held on, and then also just kept himself in because yes. he was uh, quite close to to the boundary. Well, thank you. Uh, outstanding description of that catch because you know from the distance here, could see he was getting closer to the boundary and. The worry was that he was actually going to go over that boundary uh, when he took the catch because he said he came in quite a long way. Uh, but uh, hey, really, oh, it's good running from Kluter as he uh, takes the single off the last ball of the over to uh, protect Matoa once again. The other thing, that. the other thing that Mureki was uh, would have been pleased about is the fact that his um, his cap. Yes. when it came off yeah. uh, it didn't didn't cross the line either. <laughs> uh, yes. you, know, you know it's it's one of those anomalies where you know if your if your your cap or your sunglasses or whatever decides yes. to fall off and it hits yeah. the boundary it's yeah. you know it's one of those yes. weird ones yeah uh, so he, he he definitely did well to not only keep himself in but his cap as well and you know everything that he basically did at that moment it just uh, yeah. went his way. So, so just for, for those listeners that may not be aware of some of the laws of cricket and, and, and very important, they're not rules of cricket, they're <laughs> laws of cricket. Um, that, if that's part of his clothing at the point of which he takes the catch, we'll talk about it now. Oh, well, yeah, well played, well bowled. It was a bit over pitched, but well fielded on his way through. On his way through. Just... Uh, the law states that, that if, if it's part of his clothing and it's on his body, 
when he takes that catch, if it then does fall off and touches part of the boundary, that would have then been six runs. Yeah, he was uh, within inches yes. of that happening. Yeah. Uh, so, fortunately for him and uh, Six Gun Girl Western Province, that wasn't the case. But like you say, uh, it's just one of those weird anomalies. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That, that, you know. Oh yes, Mgajima takes his third catch of the innings and Klitter going for the wide one, going for the gap in the cover region and uh, he can only find the edge as it's angled across him by Moreki. That wicket-taking delivery again from <laughs> Tepo Moreki. We spoke about it in the last over. Tariq, another very good catch by Abiwe Mgajima. You can see that yeah. the shot played by Kluti was this is the bowler that we're targeting. Absolutely. We're going to go hard at him. Yeah. And there's that delivery from Tepo Moreki. Yeah. Yes, he might concede a few runs, but he's going to get you that one ball that's yeah. in the perfect slot, gets the edge and another comfortable take from yeah. Gijima yeah. at uh, first slip. Yeah, very, very good catch once again, going away to his uh, left-hand side this time and uh, pouching that one of uh, Jean Kluter. Well, it's been a good rear guard action uh, so far by uh, Kluter comes to an end and uh, he has to go back uh, to the pavilion uh, with his uh, score. We'll have to get that for you uh, shortly. The uh, scoreboard not giving us the uh, correct total there. He was into his 20s, so the third batter to have made a score that looked like they could potentially go on but uh, with the scoreboard pressure telling on him, he had to try and make something of it. And uh, that, unfortunately for him, not happening for them or for the iTech Knights in this particular inning. 92 for 8 in the 35th over. Mareki's second wicket, 2 for 32 of 6.2 overs. And uh, Klutter getting 29, uh, the highest score of the innings. All looking a little bit too processional for the ITEC Knights at the moment. And now only Nilan van Heerden, who's in his debut uh, in uh, first class cricket, according to the scoreboard. So I'm not sure of that. You know, we have to check our stats on this side. I don't know the, the player. Apologies for that. Um, but it actually doesn't show that here. Maybe in uh, uh, Nilan van Heerden, 33 matches. Uh, 35 innings, so the scoreboard is not correct. 158 runs with a high score of 29, uh, average of 6.32. And uh, that's off the pad and uh, just down to fine, down to the man at, uh, who ran across from slip, but no shot was offered. Uh, another cricketing anomaly and dead ball is uh, signaled by uh, umpire uh, Holstock who's standing at this, the Weinberg end, so... so the one thing, I yeah. think, the one thing that the uh, viewers and listeners uh, wasn't privy to is that as that ball came off uh, Van Yerden's pad, yeah. you saw him run and then stop. <laughs> it was uh, Tsepo Moreki That's shouted right. at him, yeah. no, no like, just yeah. to remind him, listen man, you didn't play a shot there, you didn't offer a shot, so you can't run. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, that one angling across the uh, left-hander and he leaves that one alone so apologies for that uh, in the school book uh, scorecard we're going a bit by the scorecard but uh, on our stats here debut 2016-17 for Nilan van Heerden uh, more of a bowler he's in the team to bowl and he will see him bowling I would think today still <laughs> the way well, this is going the way this is going we'll <laughs> probably see him bowling the next half an hour <laughs> yes it does look very much like uh, Six Gungru Western Province will wrap this up uh, within the next uh, period of time uh, as he defends back down the pitch. Uh, Mareki picking up his second wicket with the second ball who is over. And it, yeah, so uh, Van, Tonde, Van Heerden, sorry, Van Heerden and uh, Matoa who are at the crease uh, at the moment. And uh, Matoa, uh, or as uh, his, his uh, official name is, uh, Motloring. Um, it's, I think that's, oh no, sorry, Alpha Motor, sorry, S.A. Motor, sorry, I got the, the name wrong here. S.A. Motor, 68 matches, 66 innings, uh, 21 not outs, 389 runs, high score of 34, average of 8.64, uh, 
uh, as it's around the wicket from Marecki. He's upset with himself, perhaps, or maybe with the batter for getting bat on ball. <laughs> <laughs> or the, perhaps the ball didn't carry. <laughs> yes, or that the ball didn't carry. He slaps his uh, thighs in frustration, perhaps, but... I don't think there's too much for six gun grill Western Province to be frustrated about with an, the Knights at 94 for eight. All 94 for eight, uh, run rate under three runs and over. Yeah. There's there's nothing to be uh, frustrated about no. if you're a six gun girl, girl Western Province uh, player. But perhaps it's because they've uh, come out this season. Yep. with their tails up and they've set really high standards for themselves they have, yes. and uh, it could be the frustration on that part that uh, you know, they, they, they want to keep that standard going yeah I think that's a very fair point I mean uh, they don't want to give anything away now they, they know they've got batsmen 9 and 10 at the crease they know they should be getting through them quickly and it's Matoa facing Berger away uh, sorry towards us from the Kelvin Grove end He's a hit in front, but already umpire Stian Kamp indicating, uh, as is his uh, soft signal, that that one was going uh, too high over his, the top. His soft signal was too high, and that sounded very soft as well from here. <laughs> That's definitely uh, from, from, from what yeah. we saw and what we heard is that it hit him pretty much on the flesh it did. of that uh, back leg. Tall man, uh, Alfred Matoa and uh, definitely did hit him a little bit higher. It was more of a, a gentle sort of inquiry from an Andre Berger and the men behind the stumps. As he whips that away beautifully off his pads uh, through uh, into the, uh, re the mid-wicket region and that's brilliantly fielded by uh, yeah. oh, Yassine Valley and that's so nearly so nearly went uh, directly onto the stumps from brilliant fielding out in the deep. Tariq Ebram next to me has got his hands on his head. I mean, that was so close to well, being run out. Listen, it was a good shot, first of all, from Motoa to work with, and then deciding that they're going to take on the arm of yeah. uh, Yasin Valley, a bit of a stutter Van from Van Yerden. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, had Carl Verena picked that up, he was gone for all love and money. That's uh, uh, what and it comes down that to. That really was a close close call on the on the run out there what great work by valley in the deep and we've spoken about him uh, you know, uh, at length around how good he is in the deep he did so well there but here then he's bowled him he has bowled him that is a great delivery from uh, nandre burger he picks up his second stick and it is the ninth wicket down and he gives a signal to uh, the sparse crowd and the dressing room here at Six Gun Grill Newlands, the salute to say thank you very much. Uh, I'll take that one any yeah, day. Absolutely. An unplayable delivery. It sees the back of uh, Newland van Heerden for two. His uh, stay only lasted uh, five deliveries, but what a ball that was from uh, Andre Berger. Yeah. The perfect line, the perfect length, and I don't even think that a top order batter no, would have gotten was. something on the end of that. Beautiful as a fast bowler to see that uh, previous ball he had gone uh, for three, potential run out, and that was just superb. The delivery just clipping that uh, off stump, was it Tariq, uh, middle and off? and a beautiful beautiful delivery a great sight for a fast bowler and that noise as well isn't it it's just like that as it clips that stump it just makes that beautiful like ball on wood noise that uh, that is that something is, you really want as a fast bowler that is exactly what a fast bowler wants to see you know just clipping the 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 off stump just dismantling the bells you know so yes some bowlers prefer to see the stumps go cartwheeling yeah but uh, I guess every <laughs> every fast bowler's dream is just to have that one perfect line, perfect length, just clipping the top of off stump. Beautiful, yeah. Because whether the, the, the stumps go cartwheeling or whether it's just the bale that trickles over, it's the, out. the net result <laughs> is the same. As we have uh, Budaza coming uh, to the wicket. score now 97 for 9 and Budaza's numbers uh, also he's into 
Oh, my goodness. You just, uh, my goodness, that was uh, very interesting. You're jumping out of the way. He edges it onto his pad out into the offside. And we still have four slips. Uh, we have a man at backward point, mid off mid on mid wicket and backward uh, or long leg on the boundary I actually think I could have just said at the beginning of every over the field's the same as the previous <laughs> over the, the field it's hasn't, been, changed, hasn't since really ball one. changed since ball one virtually <laughs> uh, just a couple of uh, changes uh, around between maybe mid wicket and, and mid off and again that one uh, yes that um yeah, that's not convincing anybody that you've actually <laughs> made a, a play in a miss. Uh, uh, but yeah, it looks stylish though. Shame from uh, Budaza, and he uh, played 62 matches. He's in his 75th innings now in first-class cricket. High score of 26, and uh, average of 5.35. A lot of cricket, one would think, played at a. Uh, former sort of uh, provincial level the old uh, under the old system in uh, South African cricket oh Oof. ouch that must have hurt uh, it hit him uh, on uh, the soft fleshy part um, we won't go any further than that <laughs> and down to Verena at, uh, in, in his wicket keeping position a good over from Berger comes to an end he's bowled 10 overs uh, 2 for 29 his second wicket falling in that over his first spell when he took the first wicket to fall and he's taken now the ninth wicket so the wicket spread between the bowlers and uh, Buren Hendricks and Dane Patterson the old uh, the old firm we call them that can we <laughs> the Western Province the, or the Western Province team have uh, made it happen once again they made it happen last week they made it happen again and when you've got uh, experienced bowlers like Patterson and Hendricks in your yeah. in your lineup, uh, they strike early. Yeah, sets everything up for for the rest of the bowlers. Yes, and indeed. you know, just them being on song, yeah. automatically feeds that energy off to the other oh, bowlers. Yeah. And massive uh, opportunity for Mareki. Oh, it's a lovely looking shot as well there from. Uh, uh, Matoa, it's going to go to the boundary and it brings up the 100 uh, for the Knights, uh, which uh, potentially did not look like it was going to be possible, but the 100 is up, 101. 218 balls, 14 fours, 36 or 37th over we're in, um, 101 for 9, but not what they would be looking would have been looking for when they opted to bat this morning. Yep, 100%. And one probably wonders, James, if, if that decision... Uh, of winning the toss and batting came as a result of what they saw last week. They obviously would have you know, yeah, had their so. eye on yeah. it yeah. And, and saw what Western Province or Six Young Girl Western Province did last week. Yeah. So perhaps that influenced them a little bit, mm. although I could say conditions were perhaps fairly similar to last week in that first but session the, as well. They were. I just think overhead conditions were that different. That was the only change, yeah. Um, pitch looked very similar. Yep. The difference is the bowling attack. You know, so so last week, Six Gun Grill, Western Province, uh, opening batters Moore and Dzorzi took the score to 137 uh, in the opening spell. You know, that, that it was a, a very good opening partnership, and but they had to grind it out. Oh, playing a miss uh, wide outside the off stump. Uh, it wasn't easy, you know, but the thing was, Harris Fulun was the only real strike bowler in that team. You know, and the, the, the Rocks had gone in selecting Imran Manak, uh, you know, two spinners, only three frontline bowlers, no Frisco Adams last week. So you feel they just, you know, I mean, with all due respect, you know, to Ashok Kluzhu, who'd taken his first five for in first last week of the previous uh, week. Um, and, um, um, brain's gone now in terms of the other pace man uh, last week but you know the backup bowlers for Harlis Fillion just just not of the same calibre uh, as this attack from uh, Western Provinces Mareki the way from now the Weinberg again looking for the uh, 10th wicket and that's played very nicely once again by Matoa uh, into the mid wicket boundary and uh, another one uh, for him that's uh, 23 he goes to now, score 105 uh, for 9. 
I think that uh, the last two balls of the over, they will want to try and keep Matoa on strike and have a go at uh, Budaza in this next uh, over. But Matoa knows one way, and that is to swing, swing yeah. hard. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, it seems as though he's, he's starting to middle them more often. Yeah. Maybe a little bit shorter this time. It is indeed a bit shorter. They will take a single. And that's good batting uh, from Matoa. He's trying to protect his uh, fast bowling partner. And uh, protect his uh, bowling partner, shall I say. And uh, Budaza will take strike now one ball left in the Mareki over what would you advise here Tariq full and straight well attack the stumps and uh, try and see if you can get it either through the defense wrap him on the pads and uh, or if you can get a bit of movement yeah a bit away from him get the edge walk off and uh, enjoy the innings break that's right four slips waiting for that edge and it is full and straight exactly what he wanted to do and uh, it is played straight down to the man at mid-off. There uh, is uh, 106 for 9 after 37. It will be Nandre Berger who will be trying to wrap this innings up. Uh, we have Alfred Matoa who is on 24 second highest score of the innings of what's been a very lopsided scorecard only four players so far making it into double figures and scorecard De Halle 2 Kleinfeld 19 Fantoda 20 Sneeman Nort Van Bullion Nort Kluza 29 Swanepoel 9 Kutsia Nort Matoa 24 not out Van Heerden 2 and at the moment Budaza on Nort it'll be Matua taking strike at uh, two burgers going to be uh, around the wicket. The I'll, put, I'll put yeah. money on Matua swinging hard. I it's think so, I think so. Uh, most definitely. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll just leave it there. I'll send you the lot of numbers later on as well. <laughs> Better have closed the book. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, um, yeah, it's uh, 106 for 9 and looking at zero bonus points, staring zero bonus points in the face, the iTech Knights. Uh, that is played up uh, in the air, it's uh, bounced. Uh, they do take the singles, they expose Budada to, to Berger for four balls in this over. Uh, this could be an interesting, interesting uh, rest of the over. Let's see if it is going to last as long as that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, Motoa came over to Budaza to say, "Listen, we've got nothing to lose. Here. No, let's don't. just, you know, let's swing. Yeah, let's see if we can get some extra runs on the board. Yeah, uh, at least give yeah. ourselves something to bowl at oh, when we come right. out. I mean, their job is not to be in this team as he plays a very nice-looking shot. Uh, no foot movement, but just with the eye, uh, playing that straight to De Zorzi at to mid off. That just sounded so lovely when it came off the bat, didn't it? It can still sound good coming off the bat of a tail ender. <laughs> yeah, no, these, these blades that uh, the, the batters use, whether you're number one or number 11, Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm sure the, the type of wood is exactly the same, so they'll still sound right, amazing. So you still fancy yourself as a batter, even if you are number 11. Uh, Oh, so well what, what bowler doesn't enjoy being out there in the middle with bat in hand? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, it's just uh, that kind of sport, isn't it? I mean, that's what we love about cricket. It's just being out in the middle, whether you're on the beautifully manicured turf of Newlands uh, fielding, whether you're standing with willow in hand, and uh, just it's, oh, whether you've got that, ball that red cherry with you that you want to make it talk it's just uh, all about the game oh yeah just plays that one straight back over the bowler's head and they're only going to go through for the single though and uh, one ball left in the over uh, one fancy burger should be looking probably at a, a short one here doesn't whether it's short or full uh, Matoa, yeah. Matoa is going to swing. He is, isn't he's, he? He's yeah. just going to throw anything he can at it. 
Yeah. And I reckon for that one, for, for Budaza, was a bit of a, a lucky one. Yeah. It could have could have gone anywhere. It could, yes. And just uh, <laughs> went straight over the bowler's head. So perhaps got away with one, did uh, Budaza. 108 for nine. And he does go short. And uh, as is the right thing to do, Mato, not wanting to get in the way or hurt himself. He still has a job to do. His job is uh, not necessary to bat, although he has done that better than uh, nine of his uh, colleagues in the team. And he looks well <laughs> on his way to do better <laughs> than all of them. He does, doesn't he? Yes, he, he is uh, uh, certainly looking like he could end with a top score given the opportunity. But uh, somebody might uh, have a little something to say about that. Tepo Moreki is going to be trying to knock over uh, the last batter for I take the I take Knights uh, that is Budaza who is uh, going to be facing now it's in the air but it's over the slips and that may uh, they are, they're going to take just a single uh, I think down to the third man boundary fielding done by who else but? Yasin Vali. <laughs> that uh, is definitely good as I probably as he ran past Alfie Muto. I said, job yeah. done. Got, yeah. uh, got myself off strike. Up to you now, Alfred. Exactly what they would have wanted to do. Matoa, who has uh, looked at the part here uh, when compared to some of his more illustrious batting uh, partners. And um, Mbolelo. Budaza has uh, managed to farm the strike over to his more senior partner on 25. One shot away from equal highest score in this innings, 109 for 9. He has a go and that's good bowling from Moreki. Too close for that shot and as he practices it again, it wasn't quite the way that he did play it initially in the press, but it never is uh, how you do that. Um, always looks better in the mirror when you practice it <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you're probably shadow batting last night in the hotel room playing that shot that is the thing though isn't it you know <laughs> you're that you, yeah um yeah I'll tell you a bit of a story after this delivery another one that's uh, very short um, but that is uh, still okay uh umpire abdullah stienkamp who's uh, his arm movements are generally quite um, what, economical, <laughs> let's put it that way. You know, it doesn't have much uh, flourish to his, uh, to his signals. That one was uh, more of a flourish than anything, showing the, his partner, Adrian Holstock, that that was uh, one so far above shoulder height. What will Matoa do with this next delivery? Just an interesting one, and I'll let you know after this ball, James. Uh -huh. Oh, was, uh, a little, mm. bit, little bit earlier on. Yeah. We, we while we were chatting, you you mentioned perhaps you know put a little bit of a fly slip in. Yes. Uh, oh. You know, for for <laughs> Alfred Mutoa <laughs> and a just of skin. Buren Hendricks has moved from that fourth slip into sort of a fly slip in behind uh, the, the cordon. So yeah, has, uh, they've, yes. uh, I think Carl's heard you. You must have done. I wasn't talking that loud, was I? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are nice and open today. We are the... very nice and open onto the field, unlike uh, last week where we were uh, in the uh, media room and a couple of windows between us and the field. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, played, but he's not going to get the single Dzorzi in quickly. And... Uh, there is going to be one ball left uh, in the over. Yes, Buren Hendricks in at uh, fly slip. Thank you very much for that, Tariq. Oh, listen, um, they, they certainly, well, either that or, or they've got uh, an earpiece in where they're listening to, to us yeah, uh, on the stream. And if you uh, are listening in on the stream, please uh, tell your friends. There is live commentary. This is the uh, only game, as far as we know, in uh, the four-day series that is being broadcast with commentary and we would enjoy your comments uh, that short one is designed to keep uh, Matoa off strike and I think we're going to be saying goodbye to Tariq Ebrim always a pleasure yeah uh, James yeah. that's uh, that's me for for the stint 
uh, as nice. the players also do, take a bit of a, a drinks you. break. Take a drinks break. I will uh, mm. see you all a little bit later on this afternoon. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, sir. And uh, enjoy your time uh, off the mic as uh, we're going to take a short break while they go for drinks. And uh, when we come back, I will be joined by David Brook, who has uh, just uh, pulled in here next to me. And... Uh, it will be a goodbye from me for the moment. Mandre Berger towards us from the Kelvin Grove Inn, past the bat of uh, Mbolelo Budaza. And uh, there is no addition to the score, as I promised you before the break. It is uh, David Brook who has uh, joined me here in the commentary box. you with me, James King, Cape Fox, and David Brook, brand and sponsorship manager for Western Province. And, uh, just want to we'll talk to you a little bit more about uh, how you can contact us uh, we have got Twitter going and that is another very good delivery from Berger how was that one that uh, got through uh, was it uh, Neil van uh, Neil and van Heerden, uh, David great delivery from and Andre Berger yeah, it's been relentless James it's been beautiful to watch if you're a six yeah. Angro Western Province supporter yes the, the seamers, we haven't even seen George Linder today, no. and I don't think we will no, see him. No, you won't see him. Uh, in this no. first innings, at least, he might have a job to do in the second innings. But, oh, that's an excellent delivery oh. from Nando Berger. <laughs> as he looks to pick up his third wicket of the of the day. Two wickets for Patterson, Berger, and Morecki. Whoa. They are very much down on the over rate they as are. it comes up. And they, they need to be careful of that. You don't want to be docked points, especially when you're getting maximum bonus points. Every single point counts in yeah. the four-day competition yeah. and to the overall mm. position of the of the the league system division one and division two picked up some very good bonus points last week uh, did uh, six gun grill western province andre Berger uh, started the rot this morning if you can call it that for the uh, itech knights with the first wicket and since then uh, really only two or three partnerships to speak of yeah if you just look at james at the overall league table yeah. currently western province are second behind the warriors have two picked up two excellent victories yeah. in so far the season yeah the batting bonus points they're way ahead of 
Oh. Uh, he gets that away for a couple probably. Yeah, I think they'll just but take Daza's the two. picking up a couple they? here. Mm. But uh, if you look at the batting bonus points, uh, Western Province 10.98 ahead of the Titans 7.76. And ahead of mostly everyone, including yeah, the Warriors, have only right. picked up 2.54 bonus well, points, which means yeah. their first innings performances have been... They have been woeful. They've been though, woeful, they? but yeah, they've been, somehow come yeah. back. Their bowlers have done the job for them. Um, as the as the screen goes bolder on the over rate, <laughs> the minus 25 minutes on the over rate. I think the scorers are sort of saying, saying, Carl, did you see that? The scorers are sending a message to the captain. But uh, yeah. yeah, bonus points are, are, are key, James. Oh, you know, well. often... Yeah. You can turn you can turn draws into into uh, as many points as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You get your maximum bowling points, your batting points, and obviously the the bonus <laughs> points. Um, the, the quicker you score it, within yeah. your hundred overs, also picks up and you get maximum bonus points. So, the bonus points picked up last week were incredible. Yeah, I think it was, it was six over six was. batting points, yeah. uh, just the last game, and then the, the bowling points. I mean, they they didn't they only picked up uh, two bowling points against the Titans because. Yeah. Three they only five, got yeah, they were six, six down, down yeah, yeah. so they only had uh, but they would have probably picked up maximum bowling points there as well so they're sitting on 38 points only four points behind the Warriors who've won oh. both their games yeah so it just shows you how you pick up the bonus points even though there's one drawn game for that's Western right. Province they're only four points behind the leaders well you know that's the thing I mean that game uh, against the Titans rained out after pretty much half of day two I mean wow. lost the majority of the game but not until six gun grill Western Province hadn't scored a very good uh, total into the 300s as the change of bowling gets Ooh. Buren Hendricks in uh, to Matoa who uh, yeah uh, plays it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a good it's a good word for that uh, it wasn't uh, a textbook shot you won't see no. that in the in the, the cricket manuals but Buren Hendricks, you will see them in well, the cricket banners. He, he, he has will. been mm. technically correct, spot on for uh, not just this game. You know, no, we've we spoken uh, about yeah. his his efforts in the last game didn't get rewarded too much. Previous games, but well, he's yeah. been yeah. he's been absolutely relentless. He's got a new energy about him. Maybe that's what uh, SA Twenty gig can do. Yeah, he got picked up by the home side. Am I capable? Catch him, catch him, Tony Dzozzi. Uh, yes, Dzozzi is under it. Dzozzi. Takes that. It was a leading edge uh, from uh, Matoa. His uh, 25 uh, comes to an end, as does the innings of uh, the Knights for a score which uh, may be one eye, one arm, and one leg. It's 111 all out. Uh, Nelson has struck, as has uh, Buren Hendricks. He takes his fourth wicket, and how well does he deserve those four wickets? He ends. With 4 for 16 off 9.2 overs, the wickets, uh, the rest of the six wickets have been shared by the Six Gun Grill Western Province uh, Bowling Quartet, uh, of Pace Bowling Quartet, Patterson, 2 for 18 in 10, unchanged uh, before and after the lunch break. He was instrumental along with Hendricks in making the breakthrough and then keeping the momentum going against them and just to to break into that bowlers bowling figures with Matoa's numbers uh, caught by De Zorzi, as we said bowl Hendricks 25 of 25 balls he didn't hang around and uh, five fours in that innings and it is an outstanding bowling display yet again from the six gun grill Western Province team being led off now by Buren Hendricks and Dane Patterson and the the duo who have made so much happen this week as they did last week and leading this attack where you have the the youngsters in Mareki and Berger taking a massive lead from their more experienced uh, counterparts and uh, Buren Hendricks showing the fact that showing I think the uh, national panel and saying to you know, look, I could also be on the plane to Australia um, if you want me. I'm available. Very much so, James. You know, not having his national contract renewed this season, yeah. um, he has made phenomenal progress. I mean, he's bowled so well in the four-day uh, competition. Uh, actually, we'll have a bit of a look at those numbers now for you during the 10-minute uh, change of innings break, as we see the heavy roller being brought out uh, to 
Just flatten that pitch a little bit more. Yeah. Make it a little bit easier for I batting. I saw Kyle Verena, the captain, called straight away to the groundsman yeah. to bring out the heavy roller. He wants it as flat as possible. You never yeah. really judge a pitch until both sides have batted Correct. on it. I've always believed that, James. Yeah, absolutely But right. um, the bowling was absolutely spot on. Um, lost the toss this morning. Can you yeah. believe it? Yeah. Lost the toss. toss Pipe yeah. van Bouillon was very confident um, that he was going to bat first on this pitch. I think I said it earlier, but I think it was a good toss to lose. Yeah. The bowlers looked up for it, and they did the job for their captain. We are sitting an hour, just over an hour after the after the the drinks break after lunch, and they bowled the nights out for 111. Who top scored there? Uh, Aubrey Swanepoel top yeah. scored 29. No, Clutter was young Clutter. Uh, sorry, yeah, young Clutter 29. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a really good effort from the bowlers. George Linder didn't even have to limber up. No, didn't use his spinner, James. If I can just take some sure. uh, some scores around the country. Yeah. Uh, the DP World Lions, Rashi van der Dissen, they interestingly opened mm. up the opened yes. up the batting there, um, mm -hmm. and they are currently 173 for four. Joshua Richards with the century there, 107. Oh. Rashi van der Dissen 30, mm. and Makwetu Wandila Makwetu has moved to the Lions, okay. and Ryan Rickleton at the crease currently at the moment. Mm. Um, if I just look at the GBET's Rocks are playing the Dolphins and uh, they all out yet, would you Rocks. believe it John John Smuts has taken a fifer oh my goodness for the Dolphins that is unusual and sure. Red Bull Cricket John John Smuts I can't remember the last time I saw him taking a fifer in, in Red Bull Cricket the, the, the Rocks there Clyde Fortain top scored with 93 un, unbeaten wow, very cool. little support from anyone else uh, Farisco Adams scored 30 nice. but John John Smuts doing the most of the damage there and uh, three spinners in that team, so we know what mm. kind of pitch has been set yeah. up there in Durban. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently Keshav was bowling on the sev in the seventh over already. Just wow. seven overs from their seamers. Keshav Maharaj got through 29 overs. Subrayan sure. 16 overs and John John Smuts 13.3. So we, we know that it's not a seamers wicket there. And, what, did uh, they end up on uh, David? Uh, 211 all out. Okay. So not many spinners, uh, they've only got, from a pole point of view, they've only got Emi Manak there and they've got Sean van Berg who might come yeah. into, very much is, might need to come into play. But the Dolphins went with the three spinners um, yeah, from that side and they've done well to bowl them out there. And I think there is another match I'm going to get there's there as two, well. There's, yeah, Titans there's the Warriors are playing the, really, yeah. the Northwest. Yes. Dragons, and let me just load that score Warriors up. Warriors were doing quite well uh, there, batting wise. They're batting, having a bit better of a batting uh, from what I saw a bit earlier on. Uh, they were one or two down um, and uh, a, a pretty good score on the board. Let's see if we can get that uh, yeah, they are, for you. They are 155 for four, the Warriors. Kyle Jacobs uh, opening up the innings there. Uh, he's got unbeaten on 55. Jordan Herman, he just got picked up as a wild card in the for the Sunrisers Eastern Cape. Well, that's not he, surprising, is it? No, no, not surprising <laughs> at all. He's he's a young talent. Um, done really well so far this season. He was run out for 48 My by Aino Kun. Probably he's, a runner ball again. Yeah, <laughs> it was 40 more than runner ball. Striker over 117. So that's he 41 insane. deliveries, nine fours. Nasiba Nguepe, who hasn't had the greatest season, he represented SAA in the yeah. in the India series, um, but hasn't had the greatest season so far. He picked up, he got 32. Abrietska out cheaply for one, really mm. second out for five, um, 155 for four. Again, not doing that great in the first innings. Ronaldo Mayer, who used to play for Western Province mm. in the in the semi-professional setup, he's taken two wickets. He was a decent signing for the Northwest Dragon. Duan Johnson taken one wicket there. Okay. 155 for four so that's uh that's setting up for an interesting game but we all know that the warriors seem to be a second uh, inning side <laughs> yeah. this season um and let's see what they can come up with there but uh, we expect tony de Zorzi and eddie moore to come out to bat in yeah. the next couple of minutes change of innings awkward little period just before tea maybe just under an, what times three uh, 45 yeah, minutes tea before tea tea tea. three yeah so we're watching the knights warm up as yeah. They're going to need some early wickets here. The conditions are still good for bowling. They are. Very yes. good. Overcast. It's a little bit cold here at Six Gun Girl Newlands today. Started out this morning before the start of play with a bit of rain, but that thankfully has gone away and it hasn't rained since. And it's a big 45 minutes for the iTech Knights bowlers. Pipe from Ballon winning the toss earlier today. 
and getting rolled for 111. A brilliant yeah. performance by the bowlers from Western Province. Coach and captain will be very happy. Carl Verena will be sip, sip, sipping on that coffee <laughs> very, very nicely with a smile on his face, talking to his coach. And they will, what will they be looking for here, James? Somewhere first, obviously, take it into small breaks, yeah. into small sessions, but they need to be scoring 400 odd. I would think so. Only bat once in this, uh, in this match. Once again, they'll only be looking at batting once. Uh, last match, they scored over 500, 577, I think it was, for the loss of five. Yeah. Big contributions down the order. Yeah. Uh, Moore and De Zorzi, Verena, Linda. Uh, one would expect Daniel Smith will want to make amends for his uh, first yeah. baller last last week. He got a good delivery there from Sean Fodberg last week, but he was disappointed, but he did the job in the field as well. Absolutely. And uh, I think that's it's good from the young man as the umpire started making their way out. And the heavy roller is still continuing, yeah. trying to get that wicket as flat as possible from the batter. The batting team decides which roller they um, they want. Uh, it's not up to the bowlers. If it was up to the bowlers, they'd say keep the, <laughs> the roller off. No, but keep batting, doing this on the pitch. <laughs> yeah, the batting side want it as flat as possible and as the knights gather. Yeah, I think that's something that we, uh, if we're looking at interesting videos that you may want, we may want to sort of put together. So we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that, uh, about sort of how you get hold of us uh, now. So, uh, yeah, 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 heavy roller, very important. Uh, make that pitch as, as flat as possible so you can get some good runs on the board. Uh, probably, if the sun stays out, tomorrow will be a very good batting day, one feels, on this pitch. Yeah, absolutely. I think they will want to, they're going to take the, the this innings in short sessions. You've got 45 minute Agreed. period yeah. now. You don't want to be losing wickets. And then after T, try and at least get past the score without too much damage. And then you can accelerate from there and try and build as big as first innings as possible. Ideally, you want to, they, again, like last week with the batting, they've bought themselves time in this game. Yeah. Uh, they bowled the team out in the first innings before the T interval, which has bought themselves a lot of time. Yeah. And if they can get off to a good start from a batting point of view, they'll be well ahead of this game. They will indeed. Thank you, David, for that uh, really good summary of uh, how you would be approaching this from the Six Gun Grill Western Province aspect. The Knights, on the other hand, will be looking at uh, their pace attack. They'll be wanting something similar to what we saw from Western Province in terms of bowling in partnerships, getting a, a team effort going, hunting in a pack, try and get amongst these batters as quickly as possible to put a bit of jitters into the middle order. Uh, a lot of experience in this six gun grill Western Province batting lineup. Uh, Eddie Moore opening with Tony DeZorzi, both of those players very experienced. Yassine Valley at three has been around for a long time. Uh, Daniel Smith, youngster who can only benefit from being in and around this level of experience. Uh, relatively inexperienced in first class cricket, having made his debut last year, uh, but having already shown massive signs of promise in uh, both this and the white ball format of the game. Mm. Uh, is the reserve wicket keeper for Six Gun Grill Western Province. Yeah, I and, like the fact uh, that yeah. I like the fact that Daniel is in as a, as a batter. He deserves yeah. his spot there as a, as a batsman. Um, with Kyle learning his game yeah. and, and learning with Kyle as well. Yeah, uh, Kyle didn't get the opportunity to learn with Dane Villas when he um, when he uh, took over from Villas when yeah. uh, Villas left uh, from the Cobras era. Um, but Daniel Smith has had Kyle Verona right next to him. This is going to be a great contest as Gerald Kutsia yeah. opens the bowling from the Kelvin Grove end. His captain is going to need early breakthroughs as the umpire signal to the scorers, are we yeah. ready? And we yeah. are. Eddie we Moore are is going to take first strike. <laughs> there is four slips in place, similar to field to what yeah. the Western Province had, fine leg. It's exactly the same, I think, in the yeah. footholes of the guys that were there before. Gerald Kutsia. Oh, that's a good delivery. First up uh, from uh, the Proteas call-up, uh, Gerald Kutsia, youngster, who is 
certainly was already earmarked a couple of seasons or so ago as having a bright future. Yeah, I remember seeing him at, um, at the Wanderers. We were playing a Mzanzi Super League game. It mm. was Cape Town Blitz oh. playing Josie Stars. And I saw him warming up. He was, he was a youngster mm. playing for the Josie Stars. And on the Wanderers side wickets there, he was warming up. And I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know? And uh, <laughs> I felt like, wow, this is a young talent. He is, he is bowling quick. As Eddie Moore looks for the quick signal, Tony is not going to look to yeah. get run out again as he did Definitely in not. the first game, which <laughs> I, I've been assured that it was not out by the by Mr. Dzorzi himself. I'm sure. But, uh, and um, yeah, no single there. But uh, yeah, Gerald could see. You could see. You know, you you know when you see something special. If yeah, you're in the game, absolutely. you do know you, when there's an, a little bit of an right. X factor. You're right. Yeah. Um, and he definitely has that X factor. It doesn't bowl on the Bloom wicket is not the best for no. uh, for for seam bowlers. Oh he's, oh, he's found the net. They have got him. Oh yes, right early he's got that wicket and he's bowled it in the right spot. It's gone away from. Uh, Eddie Moore and he's taken the catch at first slip, first slip in action again. Three wickets went there in uh, the first innings to Imdu Ingwijima and it's gone there yet again. Uh, huge strike for Gerald Kutsia. Nothing Eddie, could, Ed, Eddie Moore could do about that and Pipe von Bullion, the captain, has taken the catch at first slip and it's naught for one. Yeah, that was an unplayable delivery there from Gerald Kutsia. Very good start for the young man, as that just gives the Knights a huge lift. It does, first yeah. over, just like Nandre Berger picked up a wicket in the first over, De Kale going in the first over. Gerald Kutsia has done exactly that. They've set the same field. It feels yeah. like we, it does. we're in Groundhog Day here, James. <laughs> but I think that the Knights have picked up exactly the kind of fielding placing that Western Province had. And Kutsia has done the trick for his captain, thrown the new ball. And that's exactly the start that they were looking for as Yazin Valley comes in at number three earlier than what he wanted to come in. Yeah, it was almost, that was scripted, wasn't it, uh, David? The, uh, the build-up, uh, Joe Kutsia having the chance to bowl on a responsive wicket. As you said, the Mangong Oval, not the most responsive wicket in the country. That's where you feel batters like Reynard Fontonda who have uh, made, uh, set out their stall there have really scored runs. He scored a lot of runs there at Mangong Oval, but can't quite make it happen elsewhere in the country with the, with a seeming wicket. And you have the same here. This uh, opening spell was always going to be very, very important. And Fambulion takes the catch. Captain must be happy. He's got that wicket. Moore's looked in good form so far this season for is a new team here at uh, Western Province as Mo Valley is uh, at the crease a bit earlier than he would have hoped. I think Mo Valley is exactly the kind of man for this, yeah. the kind of player for this situation. You don't need to do anything fancy, James. No. You're not looking for quick no. runs. No. You're looking for somebody just to not give away their wicket. Yeah. And Mo Valley is exactly that kind of player. He could knuckle down and he can score you slow runs but good runs important runs the key is to try and get to this total it obviously won't yeah. be there at tea time but try and get unscathed by tea yeah and take that post tea session try and get ahead of the score and start building on that lead but a good start here for the knights gerald could see leading the attack yeah Oh, another great delivery. That one goes uh, and swings after it pitches and moves away from the right-hander. And the youngster uh, with uh, the sweatband in place tied at the back. Looks a bit like uh, uh, the karate kid, doesn't he? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> wax on, wax off. <laughs> exactly. But his trademark, uh, his trademark headband and his, and his fiery nature, I love to see it. I love to see some characters in the game. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what you want from one of your fast bowlers. You want those Dale staying crazy eyes. You do. Indeed, you do. And uh, he has those, and he can make this happen. One, one wants uh, him to make it happen down. In Australia, that is uh, in the gap where Gully would have been, and it's gone down to the third man boundary. Gets uh, the six-gun grill Western Province team off the mark, but it should, could 
sh so easily have gone to fourth slip Mo Valley off the mark. Yeah, good, excellent first over there from Gerald Kutsia. And I think what Kutsia and his captain are going to need is that that bowling bowling unit yeah. to come together. Yeah. We saw that last week where how for Yun was a lone ranger he was, from a Rock's he? point of view, yeah. and the, and and the team suffered because of that. He yeah. was bowling in the in the right areas, and it's yeah. important that from the other end. Your other bowler is backing your strike bowler up. Budaza is going to come in. Mbolelo Budaza is going to be coming in from the Weinberg end. Left arm seamer, not really that quick, but yeah. a very accurate bowler. And he needs to get off to a good start here. Tony De Zorzi is going to have his first sight of the action. Yeah, De Zorzi, a been a spectator from uh, the, at the Kelvin Grove end while well, it was that one moment of carnage and then the edge from Yassine Valley at the last ball but it was a thick edge through the gap uh, and uh, it is four runs without loss of Budaza uh, conventional left arm over to the left-handed De Zorzi and uh, there is no addition to the score there a little bit of movement away from the left-hander to begin with yeah, as the traditional train comes past here yeah. on the railway stand at Six Gun Grill Newlands. You can hear it probably. You can hear it oh, yeah. from your screen if you're watching from around the world. There's a railway station right next to the ground. A famous Newlands railway station with the SAB breweries right behind that. And the old DHL stadium, rugby stadium. Oh, that's Tony a good De Zorzi delivery. gets mm. bat on ball for the first time. You'll enjoy that. Mm. Any good batter loves the sound of, oh, yeah. of bat on ball just to get the, the nerves out of the way. <laughs> and uh, yes, yeah, so please, uh, if you do want to be in touch uh, with us, this broadcast being brought to you by Cricket South Africa on their YouTube channel, visuals courtesy of uh, Pitch Vision commentary here, courtesy of uh, Western Province. It's uh, Six Gun Grill, the key partner for Western Province uh, bringing you this broadcast Six Gun Grill every meal's best friend as it's Budaza away from us now yeah the, the delivery angling into the uh, I say, away from the uh, towards the offside towards the slips but started too straight well played by uh, Tuzorzi and uh, good to see a little bit of shape on the delivery uh, you say that the backup bowl is here going to be very important yeah David. just uh, looking at a tweet from uh, deep third man thank you for tweeting western at western province underscore blitz saying nights win the toss and bat 111 all out yes it's true we should not judge until both sides have batted but can't help think november pipe got it wrong <laughs> I, I could see a michelle michelle pfeiffer obviously before t will have me eating my words well <laughs> deep third man you He's taken one of those five. He has. And you'll be Indeed. if he gets a fifer before tea, you will indeed be eating your words. <laughs> but thank you for <laughs> tweeting. Great to have some of the media here as well. Um, yeah. covering the game. We appreciate the, the the coverage, the media coming out to support domestic cricket. Cricket Fanatics magazine is here in representing as well. Grit Sports as well. Thank you very much. Fantastic to see you guys covering the game. <clears throat> some supporters around the around the ground sending us pictures from where they're sitting newton cricket is sitting what looks like oh james it looks like my office to be fair okay. well, he might be in my <laughs> office but he, i think he's just in below that in the, I think so. in the, the northern, north stand north stand there yes but yeah. uh, it's great to have some people along if you've got if you're able to get out the office early on a Thursday afternoon after the tea session, feel free to come. The play will continue until around six o'clock. Not yeah. sure we'll get the, we'll see how the light develops over the afternoon, but it will be interesting to see if we get 60 overs still left in the day, James. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see. We certainly won't see all of those, um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see with Budaza away from us now and another good delivery with nice shape. Left alone well by De Zorzi. That's something he did very well last week, David. He left the ball, uh, left the ball a lot. Yeah, he did very well last week with that. Plays the ball on merit. Yeah. Has adjusts his game towards the Red Bull cricket. Obviously scored centuries against India in the SIA mm. uh, mm. series prior mm. to the season starting. Mm. And he's uh, 
that he needed that innings for his confidence last yeah. week. He, you know, there's been a lot of talk about him potentially playing for the pro tier soon. Yeah, uh, I still believe that he should be given a run at some point. Yeah, but you need to be scoring those big hundreds consistently as well. Well, well certainly there are opportunities uh, for players uh, from a batting point of view to be able to make things uh, happen and get into that pro tiers lineup. Not 100% settled on field at test level yet. A number of players finding their way, and others that may have dropped out of contention as it's good to see to Valley into the pads. Uh, good delivery, nice length from could see tall man, and just down to probably one of the shortest players uh, in uh, this match. Although we have uh, got uh, Matthew. Kleinfeld also quite uh, not not uh, the tallest player who's in at uh, fourth slip. So that's what we do have a very conventional field, which has been the same virtually throughout this match so far. Whether you are a Western Province or Arctic Knights uh, player, and nicely played by Yasin Valley uh, through the covers, uh, not quite through the covers as it's uh, fielded there at uh, extra cover by the man running around from mid-off, and that is, I think, it is Swanapool, is it? No, Swanapool, um, we'll give you the name now, so we'll get to, get to recognize and identify the fielders for you. Could well have been Reynard van Tonda there at uh, mid-off, he's gone now to mid-off as well for the left-handed Dezorzi, he'll be facing up uh, for the first time to Gerald Kutsia in to him now. Nice delivery from uh, Kutsia. Still bowling over the wicket to the uh, left-hander. And it is, we have got uh, for the Knights, we have uh, wicketkeeper Jean Kluter. Uh, we have Van Bullion at first slip. Snamer at second, Swanepoel at third. Kleinfeld at fourth slip uh, in the Backward point, we have uh, De Kale, and then have, uh, see it's uh, Joel Kutsia in to De Zorzi. great delivery. Very similar to the one that uh, got Eddie Moore earlier on today in at the first over from Kutsia. He's into his second over, bowling against, uh, against the, we've got a, we got a, still got a southeaster bowl blowing today, David. I'm, I'm trying to just see from, uh, uh, can't see any flags. Where's James, the flag? You are the compass here. Yeah. You know exactly the directions of yeah, this. Yeah, I've got to I try and just get it. Looks like a, kind of looks like a southeaster. Yeah, no, it's a definitely a southeaster coming through. Um, blowing quite strongly. It's not a hot day here. No, it's definitely not. And it looks like tough conditions to bat. Yeah. As it is, uh, Fantonda there at uh, Mudoff. I thought it might be Fantonda. Um, and we, the final two uh, fielders, we've got to Matoa, who is at uh, mid-on. We have uh, got, and then we have at uh, square leg, Nilan van Heerden. And down on the fine leg boundary, it is Zambolelo um, Budaza, who is uh, going to be picking up the attack off this delivery from... Uh, Gerald Kutsia, good over from Kutsia once again, just a single off it. Uh, Yasin Valley playing one uh, through the covers just to rotate the strike. Uh, Valley is on five, as is the score. It's five for one in the third over. Eddie Moore, the man out, uh, caught at first slip by Pat Van Bullion. That's the fourth catch today, David, that's mm. gone to first slip. Uh, Aviva Ungujima taking three catches. At first slip, and all good ones, I must say. He took uh, some really sharp catches there at first slip uh, today. And in case you have been uh, uh, watching somewhere else or just joining us and you want to know why it's 5 for 1, well, did we have a rain break? Or did uh, 6 Young Grill Western Province <laughs> only come out to bat now? No, they didn't. Uh, the Knights are already all out for 111. and. An outstanding bowling display from Buren Hendricks, 4 for 16, I think it was in the end, for Buren Hendricks. And the other wickets shared across the pace quartet, as that is not a great delivery from Bordaza to Mo Valley. 
outside the off stump and uh, it's uh, played down through the vacant uh, backward point regional gully region and uh, down to the wide backward point boundary in front of the scoreboard here at six Gungul Newlands for yet another boundary uh, nine to Valley, nine to score, nine for one in the fourth over. That's not what you want uh, from your captain. No, uh, definitely. And you need to back up your, you need to work as a unit, as a bowling unit. And Bodaza just, uh, that's better from Bodaza. Yeah, that's coming better. back in, nice swing back into Valley. Mm. Just gets a bit of an inside edge there, miss stroke. That's yeah. better from Bodaza as yeah. they look to keep things tight. As I said, Valley is the man for. The job, but not too much of a run rate. He scored nine runs of just six balls. <laughs> I think we've realised today, James, that He's keeping it slow, <laughs> that, uh, that things are not going traditional way here. But uh, it's been an intriguing day of cricket so far. If you're a Western Province supporter, it's looking good from your side of things. Yeah. If you're a Knights supporter, it's not all doom and gloom. You've got off to a good start here in the bowling innings. And that man. Uh, as that is again just not consistent enough uh, so far as Valley moves into double figures and takes the uh, six Gungrul Western Province score into double figures as well 10 for 1 in the fourth over so consistency here on this wicket David you know the Western Province experienced Western Province bowlers it must be said that the bowlers that made it happen for Western Province were yeah. you know, Dane Patterson and Bjorn Hendricks, really good captaincy, or uh, you know, one feels or probably, as you were saying earlier, team decision making. You've got the senior bowlers in the team. Um, we'll talk a bit more, more about that now. Oh, that was uh, well left by Dzorzi. I think it's a bonus to have yeah. the likes of Dane Patterson and Bjorn Hendricks in the team at yeah. the same time. <clears throat> I think that as a bowling as a bowling unit the partnership those are mm -hmm. two of the best around in south african cricket to work together mm -hmm. if they're both on the money you know we're looking at what the pitch that we're using today james we we are three yeah. further on, along from the from the oaks grass than we were uh, last week but quite similar pitches yeah very um, similar. if you bowl yeah. in the right areas you're going to get reward yeah. uh, and that's what we saw from the western province in both games yep <laughs> and if you're looking for people to bowl in the right areas dane patterson is just your man Ooh. Oh, Dzorzi. Yeah, looking to get oh, off the mark, Dzorzi. Yes. Not, not much foot movement there. And that swung away from him. Almost found the mm. outside edge. Mm. He'll be livid with himself. He must yeah. just stay patient. Mm. No need to go after that delivery. Play the ball on merit. Yeah, you might have seen him remonstrating uh, to himself there for playing that shot. It's very early on. He needs to be there. It's... Uh, could be the makings of another big innings for him. I haven't put the mockers on him now, but uh, no, if you need to, you need to go back to back. You do, yeah. Always good to back up a big score with another big score. That's how you get noticed. That's how you start barging national doors down. You get some bat on that, but doesn't get past the inner ring. Yeah, Reynold Fontonda is uh, there at uh, extra cover, and uh, there is uh, no run off that, and a quick change from. The iTech Knights, they realize that they are also going to be struggling from a run rate point of view if they're going to want to keep this uh, concentrated attack mm. going uh, against the Six Gun Grill Western Province lineup. Uh, one that looks with uh, the likes of uh, Daniel Smith, Kyle Verena, Aviwe Mgujima, George Linder, uh, still to come. Uh, in this batting line there there are players there that have been in form have scored runs but Gerald Kutsia oh is a uh, is trying to prevent that he has looked the part hasn't he looked ferocious uh, if that's the right word I don't yeah, quite know but uh, looked looked dangerous uh, looks like he could take a wicket at any time with the right ball that that one perhaps uh, I think yeah, Yassine Valley might feel he missed out a bit there. But yeah, there did, is good um, fielding there at, um, yeah. at, 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 at Fontonda, I think leg. it is. Yeah, short he's been leg, moving really. around a bit, Fontonda, but a good fielder. He is the young man. Interesting as we watch Kutsia. That's a beautiful oh, shot oh, by Yassine Valley. Lovely shot. Oh, Spanked wow. through the covers 
That is a beautiful shot from Mo Valley. I think that's the shot of the day so far. Beautiful. Uh, just beautifully played on the up through the offside and wow that is uh, yeah just uh, going to fetch that in front of the three spectators that we have on the banks mm -hmm. under the oaks and a few more though in the ground in the shelter of uh, the grandstands um, it's Bit of a cool day to yeah, come it out. Is, it is a little uh, bit nippy out here, James. I, I, I was looking at the team sheet earlier on as we just see what Gerald Kutia running in again to Mo Valley. That's well defended yeah. there. But I was looking at the team sheet and I was quite su surprised to see Miguel Pretorius wasn't uh, in the team. And yeah, they played too, Jock actually. Sloman. Yeah. The spinner, uh, like yeah. he, obviously, is there as an extra batter. But, um, and uh, Aubrey Swanepoel, we don't know much about Aubrey. Yeah, I mean, spin, it's spin bowler. Spin bowler. Spin bowler so um, batting all rounder, really. But yeah not they might be lacking that extra second real paceman um Nilan van Heerden is is not is not bowling at the pace of of a Gerald Kutzea but um you know maybe there's an injury that we don't know about or a, a mm -hmm. little niggle but uh, they I think when the uh, that's a good shot oh, another one again value. that's also uh, is, is that going to go all the way it'll be a long chase I think they are going to get there but not before the batters are going to turn uh, for three and uh, so seven uh, off this over so far uh, off the bat of uh, Yasin Valley and uh, he has uh, gone in pedestrian style to 17. Yeah, just coming off the, coming <laughs> off the bottom of the bat, didn't, <laughs> did time actually, it, yeah. didn't time it but got it into the gap and picked up a nice three runs there. He moves on to a well played 17 so far, he's looked good coming yes. in. That number three batter is, is in a crucial position. Uh, Hashim Amla did it for a number of years yeah. in test match cricket. Sometimes you lose an early wicket and you're in in the first over. That's oh, better from Tony oh, that is Very good. And Kutsia trying to strike is going for runs here. That's 11 off the over so far. And the scores raced from 10 at the end of the previous over to 21 now for the uh, loss of one wicket. The partnership's also 21 having lost uh, Eddie Moore with the score on zero in the first over, only into the third over for Kutsia, and uh, just hasn't quite got it on the money as yet. Yeah, I think Tony Dezorzi, he did well because he'd yeah. been patient, he, had, he wasn't off the mark for 13 deliveries, and then he got that boundary shot and he, he got off the mark with a boundary. So the fifth over comes to an end, 21 for one after five overs. The rate achieved is well the deficit at the moment is 90 yeah. after the Knights were bowled out for 111 that's the first number that they'll have in mind yeah to try and get there without too much damage from a batting point of view and they are made a decent start after the early loss of Eddie Moore who got an incredible delivery from Gerald Kutsia Gerald Kutsia almost bursting yeah. a blood vessel in, in celebration <laughs> there we might have to have a, a medic on standby for that if there's any more celebrations like that but it's good to see the fire from the young man as yeah. Budaza continues from the Weinberg end. <laughs> Away from us now. Uh, past umpire Holdstock and uh, just played back by Valley. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so, so you called this, David, uh, yeah, Mo Valley being steady, secure, not going to bat too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what do I know, James? What do I know? <laughs> Mo Valley's <laughs> making a play to be to be a starter in the upcoming One Day Cup. That's maybe right, he yeah. got a, his first list day century uh -huh. last season. He did. We were there for that. It was yeah, a great it, innings. It there. was. It was a really wonderful. It hundred. was special. His family were on the grass embankment, and it was really one of those moments that will stick in the mind long. I mean, maybe he's looking for one of those last wild card places in the SA20. Um, that's well fielded by uh, Kutsia going off to his left, and uh, that gone past him. It would have certainly have. Uh, gone through to the boundary uh, just not consistent enough in terms of lines and lengths the, the free state pace attack so far yeah um, they need to be more consistent i think neilan van heerden's warming up here so we might see yeah. him in the next couple of overs and uh, alfred matoa uh, david yeah he's, a, he's a, a very funny bowler to face as a, mm. as a batsman he's got that funny action that d little delay as he's right. about to deliver oh, okay, the, yes, the, yeah. the ball, very good in white ball cricket. Mm. Haven't seen much of him live in, in, in four day cricket. Right. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he can, he might just go with a bit of a fuller length yeah. um, uh, this time round. You know, in, in white ball cricket, 
you're looking to get away all the time from yes. a batsman's point of view, but um, it, it, it's not going to bowl it that quick. But if mm. you can get it fuller and in the right areas, and you might be able to get some yeah. seam going. Um, bit of swing, perhaps. Bit of swing, yeah. exactly. He's going to yeah. need to rely on that because if he bowls yeah. it short at his pace, no. The batsmen are going it, to deal with him. It's going to travel. That that ball is is sitting up. It was noticeable last week as well. Not too much that was bowled short. You, you get reward at the right lens here. Uh, you really can't afford to be bowling short on this pitch. It does sit up quite nicely. Although it does have carry if you're prepared to put your back into it. It's not the type of. It's got to be done more as a surprise delivery than anything else. Yeah, we saw that. Fields. We saw that a bit earlier. Nandra Berger was um, was bowling full, full, mm. and then he mm. surprised them with the with the short delivery. Mm. And I think it was Bjorn Hendricks who got um, Pipe Van Bilion yeah. with the shorter delivery, and he got him caught on fine leg there. Really so good bowling. Surprise delivery, yeah. um, rather than at your standard delivery. Um, I think the when you when you think like that as a bowler. Mm. Uh, it's uh, Budaza away from us now. Ooh. Oh, that's shaping in. I don't think uh, Adrian Holstock's going to give that one out. The bowler looked very interested. Uh, looked to me like it was probably shaping too much mm. uh, down leg side. Will I thought I heard an inside an edge there, James. It could well have been an inside edge. Just the way that he was shaping to play it, yeah. it may well have been an inside edge. Uh, He'll be, that, yeah. he'll be upset to that, actually, Mo Valley, because well, I think it was full enough to, to hit through mid-wicket. Um, he yeah. should have really dealt with that. He just leant on that a bit. Maybe pitching outside leg stump yeah, as well. Yeah, I was pitching outside leg, going down leg from what we could uh, mm. see of it. Uh, Mo Valley is very much on a leg stump stance to uh, Budaza. And that one oh. played beautifully through the offside. That is going down towards the uh, railway stand boundary. It's going to be cut off by De Kale, And uh, they only take uh, the single and uh, Valley moves uh, to 19 with that two. It's uh, Valley on 19, Desorzi on four, 23 for one. Halfway through the sixth over, batting already at over four and over. Uh, it's, uh, the scoreboard's a little, little bit, bit slow, yeah. sorry. Um, but the score is correct. For, yes, the score, score is correct, 23, 23 for one, one after yeah. six overs. And I think Neil and van Heerden is gonna come for his first round. Do in apologize there, yeah. From the, the Kelvin Grove hard. end. Taking over from Gerald Cotillo. <laughs> Gerald Cotillo might do what Bjorn Hendricks did. You might see him come back from, yeah, maybe. from this end, mm. uh, get some purchase, it worked for Bjorn Hendricks, and maybe they're looking at copying exactly what they, what happened early in the day. Yeah, yes. back, uh, back on par with the scoreboard at the moment at 23 for one after six overs. Apologies there. Uh, looking across the scoreboard. Uh, so it is Nielian van Heerden taking over from uh, Gerald Kutsia and one can only think that he is going to be coming in from this side. It's been three overs each for the opening pair of uh, Kutsia and Budaza and uh, it'll be Van Heerden uh, towards us now from uh, the Kelvin Grove end, right arm over the wicket. It looks like a medium fast bowler. Nice action, reasonably economical action. Uh, quite a long run up though. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, we're going to look at his numbers uh, now for you. Uh, David, just getting the uh, paperwork together. And just thank you very much uh, to Andrew Sampson, the stati statistician at Cricket South Africa, for sending the pack uh, through to us. That saves us a huge amount of uh, time and energy in putting together the very comprehensive stats packages that uh, we utilize here uh, to understand the players uh, statistics up to date yeah he's um, he has played let's see how many matches Neil and van Heer has played he's 33 um, not too many for the night itself but I think more in, in for free state in the yeah. in the three-day cricket what used to be first-class cricket as well um, he's taken 69 wickets at an average of 29.97 mm. best of five for 33 picked up two fifers in his on, in his career um, he's gonna need one of those fifers to today to do yeah. a job for his team. He's made a decent start here, the young man. Mm. Tony DeZorzi on strike. He's just looking to get through to the T interval now, unscathed. Yeah, he is. It's indeed. not about runs at the moment. Get through the session, regather, and reassess. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting session. This final session of play to for Six Gun Rural Western Province to try and 
get as close as possible to that score of 111 made by the Knights in their first innings by the end of the day. If they're on 112 by the end of the day, without yeah. too many wickets lost, they'll be very happy with that effort. Yeah, and that will be their first day. And they're not looking to get too far ahead of it. There's a lot of time in this game. Yeah. And they just need to get to try and get to that score without yeah. too much damage from yeah. a wicket loss point of view. <clears throat> so, uh, absolutely, David. I mean, we're looking at probably a minimum of... Uh, we'll have uh, probably maybe 40 overs. Mm. 42, 42, 40, 42 overs maybe. As you said, they've got a few, a couple of extra spinners in the team. I, I suppose we will see some spin before the end of the day, potentially. Um, Although, you say with Matoa and uh, Van Heerden in the team, it may just be that they'll focus on the pace attack. Depends on whether Western Province can get, do get away from a batting point of view after the uh, T interval. But, uh, at the moment, Dezorzi being very, very watchful. I think your assessment there is spot on. He just wants to get through to T now. It's all about uh, survival. Four of uh, 20 deliveries for the... Uh, left-handed uh, opener from uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province and coming off a 163 in uh, his previous match against the G-Bets Rocks and uh, Nieden van Heerden just uh, bowling that one across the uh, left-hander he'll have nothing to do with it as has been the case for most of this over so far he's not going to play it now if he doesn't have to showing the the resilience and patience that is required to really build an innings on a wicket like this and that perhaps not being evident necessarily with the uh, Knights batters. Yeah, interestingly, Aubrey Swanepoel is coming on. That is interesting. Our first look at spin. <laughs> sure. As we go mm. into, I think this is just, if it wasn't before T, yeah. I don't think we'd be looking at it. Um, but they're going to have a look at spin and see if it's anything in the pitch. George Linder will be looking at this closely. We saw him walking around the ground. He's, all of, he's always got a ball in hand. <laughs> at some point, whether it's white ball or red ball, he's always got a cricket ball in his hand, George Linder. Um, and he'll be looking at this Aubrey Swanepoel coming in from the Weinberg end. Yeah, very interesting, isn't it, that they brought on spin this early, maybe with the hard ball, trying to see if they can't get the... Swanepoel can't perhaps get a bit of bounce. Yeah, he bowls these um, kind of awkward leggies as well. He switches it up mm. between offies and leggies, uh, mm. Swanepoel, mainly in, in white ball cricket. But he can be quite a tricky bowler. Um, and I, I think this is actually not a bad call from, yeah, from no, the Knights. I, I like to see a bit of um, experimental play. And, 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 and at 111, yeah. you don't have many runs to play with, so you don't have no, time no. either. So this is, this is quite nice as we see him bowl the off spinner. Yeah. Uh, or maybe the wrong end even. Yeah, it looked, uh, like, a, it looked like a sort of bit of a bit of a, a leggy with yeah. going down the leg side. He's got a very got the opportunity just before T to be attacking from a fielding point of view. Got a leg slip. Uh, man at 45 on the leg side, a short leg, mid wicket. A man at a mm. deep mid wicket, and uh, that didn't do what uh, Yasin Valley expected it to do. No, exactly, and that yeah. I think is mm. that exactly what Swanepoel does. Is that a little bit of mystery, a bit of unknown. Um, I don't mind this at all. I'm looking no, at it, no. and I'm looking at Ugh. you know blue versus orange. This is kind of domestic cricket at its finest out there. There's it blue helmets, there's orange yeah. helmets. Yeah. Western Province it versus is. Free State. I mean, I, uh, something I, I love to see. The the teams have embraced their colours again. I even did this and for you. And you, know, yeah. <laughs> you got your blue and your orange <laughs> highlighters there, James. A proper student of the game. I love to see it and I uh, love to see that domestic cricket is a is good battle between these two teams. There's a lot to play for this season from a yep. four-day four cricket point of view, from an overall points point of view. Yep. Both teams in the bottom half of the overall table. So every single match that they play in the season <laughs> is important. And it's a decent start here from Swanepoel, yeah, a bit of chirping a around. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what the Knights need right now. They need wickets. And this is good from Captain Pipe van Villon. He's got men around the bat, leg slip, first slip. As yeah, Yazin Valley drives that well one. play. That was outside the off stump, tossed up, asking uh, for Mo Valley to do uh, what he did with that. And he plays it uh, 
beautifully through the offside down to the boundary at the scoreboard and he moves into the 20-23 at the end of the over 27 for one after eight to Zorzis on four bowling figures so far could see a three for um, one for 16 in three overs uh, Budaza naught for seven in three Van Heerden one over and one maiden Swanepoel one over and just the boundary off it but it was a very good over actually it was really mixed up a bit second ball he got a lot of bounce uh, which went into the gloves of, of Valley yep. and then bounced down in front of leg slip uh, that's fun here and quickly into the uh, action again from the Kelvin Grove end and uh, as has been uh, his want it'd be interesting to see actually if one could we haven't got that information with us but uh, De Zorzi, I think it's probably left I mean, he's only played one scoring shot yeah. out of the uh, 22 deliveries that he's now faced. And uh, so one scoring shot, I reckon he's left probably 20, the other 21 he's left alone. He hasn't had to play much. Well, that's exactly it, you know, and I think that, that that's a positive thing for his game. Yeah. He's not, he's not feeling the pressure. He knows that he needs to be there after tea. Yeah. He cannot expose. We've got five minutes till the, the tea break. Yeah. I don't think a new batsman would come in, but mm. he can. He might if if a wicket falls on this over, but mm. he doesn't want to expose the next batsman no. to the to the bowlers too early, and he knows that he just needs to be there. If he is four not out after twenty five deliveries by T, his captain will be a happy man with that. Yeah, he will. I think Yazin Valley has, has played this inning so far really well. Played good cricket shots. Just waited on the ball. Yeah, it's been nothing uh, to. Too extravagant. That's a no ball from uh, Nieland van Heerden. And uh, first extra is uh, on the board in the uh, ITEC Knights uh, bowling effort. Uh, we saw one no ball, I think only one extra in the entire innings uh, of the Knights. Granted, it was a short innings, and that was also a no ball from uh, Bjorn Hendricks early on. No um, free no free hit in, no, uh, in Red no, Bull cricket. No, not in Red Bull cricket. And the batting side. And I, I doubt that they'll bring that in. It's just uh, something the traditionalists would not be that happy with. And that's uh, nicely played down the ground by uh, De Zorzi. But only as far as uh, Reynard uh, Fantonda, who is patrolling the mid-off region. A good fielder, the young man. He's uh, very lively in the field. We've got four slips, uh, backward point, mid-off, mid-on. Uh, square leg and a man at uh, long leg. How many times have I said that today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed, James. It's uh, been very, very similar field. In fact, the same field for both uh, the uh, iTech Knights as well as uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province when they were bowling. And uh, yes, they have finished bowling in the first innings. The Knights all out for 111. The score card you're looking at is not as a result of a rain delay although we did have some overnight rain which did threaten to perhaps delay the play, start of play this morning but great work again by Brom Mong and his team here at Six Gun Grill Newlands it looks an absolute picture yeah, uh, it, is, yeah. it is beautiful some summer rain timed beautifully just yeah. before the start of play absolutely yes the drainage system <laughs> good to test the drainage system here at Newlands and it's working like a charm and the, when mm. we got here this morning, the covers were already off. Mm. The rain had stopped, and when the sun came out, it dried out nicely. As Tony Dezorzi just does some gardening of himself. Yeah, he wants to just make sure that uh, at most we can get one more over in before tea. It looks like it might be unlikely uh, as uh, Neelan van Heerden comes around the wicket, right arm around uh, to the left handed Dezorzi. It's all a bit slow at the moment. Uh, chatter, not too much chatter amongst the Knights. A lot of chatter in the first over. Yeah. When that first wicket fell, we're now only nine overs in. Uh, we didn't have that many overs uh, between the end of the Knights innings and uh, this tea break. But it has been a bit quiet out there now. Uh, Very the much so. Mm. Nilan van Heerden as the clock. That's well left from Tony yeah, DeZorzi. The Knights well bowlers will rush to their mark to try and get in. Yeah, they, they will get in another yeah, over. Yeah. One final over. Are we going to see Swanepoel again? It looks like we yeah, will. Yeah, I'm sure. One more over of spin before the tea break. 
The coffee machine is on, James. Oh, that's very good news. <laughs> coffee. I didn't say there's one for you, but I said there's a coffee machine on in the players' area. Oh, there we go. Sorry. I thought uh, I misunderstood that. Yeah, that was uh, You're hearing what you want to hear, James. Me. Yeah, no. That's but, what my uh, wife always says. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got one over here before before the tea interval. We'll, we'll make sure that the kettle is on, James. Oh, thank you. I don't yes. think we're getting yeah. load shedding today. Oh, that's Hopefully, good. only so, until much later on, after the day's play. And off the pad, uh, the body, and uh, straight looping to the man. At uh, short legs, we've got a uh, uh, leg slip, man at 45 on the leg side, short leg, mid wicket, deeper mid wicket, and a man at mid on on the leg side. It's a 6 3 leg side, offside field, and it's the man at slip, there's a man at extra cover, there's a man at uh, mid off, so yeah, 6 3. Leg side, offside field, spinning it into the uh, right hand, and that just uh, goes forward. A little bit of uh, purchase off the track there, a bit of bounce, yeah, maybe just uh, very much so. just worrying Valley. He's uh, shaking his bottom hand and into the bat. So something here for the spinner. There's only uh, yeah. how many balls left? Four balls left, and uh, quite rightly so. Reynold Fontonda is uh, moved from that shortish mid-wicket position to silly point as uh, it's another Louis perhaps just uh, too full that time from Aubrey Swanepoel uh, but uh, it they'll want to go into the T interval with one more wicket in the bag the night yeah and they've got three balls left to try and do that Aubrey Swanepoel keeping the pressure on Mo Valley who's so far done very well to keep it out as he takes oh, a quick yeah. single year that's yeah, good there it's good running uh, down to Kutsia, he picked out his man as well. Kutsia quite deep at mid yeah, on. on. Not really walking in with the bowler, old no, school walking no, in, nothing he, really, he was on the back foot. Yeah. And Bali quickly realized that and took the single. As Tony Dezorzi will have to see out the final couple of deliveries here before the tea interval. Yeah, and as you uh, can see on your feed now, still, uh, now the three men in close for the uh, left hander. Swanner pulls into Dezorzi and just goes back. Uh, and uh, plays that one from outside the off stump. Just got to be a bit more careful with those, as uh, that is uh, then the uh, T interval at uh, 15.01 on the scoreboard clock, 29 for one, and uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province will be happy that they have not had any further loss after Eddie Moore was out uh, without scoring <laughs> in the first over from Gerald Kutsia. Kutsia has looked uh, aggressive but not accurate enough as Budaza also has been uh, not as accurate as you would want them to be. Uh, Valley's taken most of the strike, and uh, in fact, they've equally taken the strike. 29 balls each for both of these two batters. Uh, 10 overs gone. Uh, score at the break is a 29 for the loss of one Western Province trail by 82. And the first innings of this match, and we'll be wanting to put a big score on the board. Uh, commencing after the tea interval. It's goodbye for the moment from me, James King, the Cape Fox, and uh, from uh, David Brook, and we'll be seeing you in about 20 minutes.
Welcome back to Six Gun Grill Newlands, and you're here with me, James King, and uh, with uh, Tariq Ebram, who's joining me for his second spell behind the mic today. Welcome, Tariq. Yeah, thanks for having me back. It seems as though it didn't take long. No, it doesn't uh, seem before, like it was long. <laughs> before uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province managed to wrap up the innings, and in that uh, brief period where I was away, mm. um, Eddie Moore falling as well, and Yasin yeah. Valley coming out and playing some shots. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, as uh, just that same self same Yasin Valley just defends off uh, Nidin uh, Van Heeren into uh, the third over of his spell from the Kelvin Grove end. Uh, so we see, I think uh, Alfred Matoa is warming up there, but uh, I think he will be coming in from the Weinberg end to replace Sir Aubrey Swanepoel. Just two overs of. Uh, his wrist spin and uh, that is a wide outside the off stump and uh, Yasin Valley who has been the senior partner from a run scoring point of view in this partnership uh, does what uh, Tariq has just mentioned as uh, uh, pushing the score rate along and he moves into to, to 28 and uh, plays it beautifully down in front of the North Pavilion just to the left of the Oaks as we look at it and uh, yeah, he's been playing well, hasn't he? Yeah, indeed, he's definitely come out and uh, taken the game to the high tech nights, which is good to see that uh, it is, uh, positive intent. Oh, okay, we nearly, uh, nearly, nearly sent him back to the pavilion. <laughs> Talking about how positive he was. Uh, yeah, he, he played well. Uh, I think, I think it, it was necessary to score runs. He took it upon himself to do that. Tony Dezorzi was always going to, I think, be the, be wanting to be more circumspect, protect his wicket as much as possible. Not that I'm saying that Yasin Valley wasn't sort of trying to protect his wicket. I didn't see him playing any, didn't play any shots that were unnecessary. Just uh, played every ball on it, on its merits, and that is uh, going fine. I think he'll only get the one. Uh, no, he's coming back for two. That's very good running from the Western Province man, and that's a hallmark of his game. Uh, chatting now to uh, uh, Shafiq, I'm, I'm sure of his surname. Uh, Nordin. Lo Nordin. Nordin, Shafiq Nordin, uh, who is uh, a legend here in the, the Western Cape, and uh, just talking about uh, Yasin Valley and uh, how quick he is between the wickets, how he rotates the strike. Uh, it's, uh, Plays that oh. very nicely again in the gap between gully and backward point. Going to get another two, and that's uh, eight so far off uh, this opening over from Nilan van Heerden after the uh, tea break. And uh, it's amazing how quickly, when you if you've got a score, only got a score of 111, how quickly those uh, runs uh, get eight in one over, how quickly that deficit uh, reduces. Uh, just good uh, cricketing shots from yeah. from uh, Yasin Valley. It's not uh, a case of him playing anything rash. Got on top of the bounce nicely with that last shot as well. And uh, so far he moves to the highest score in uh, this match. 32 not out. Uh, out of 37 for one for Six Gun Grill Western Province. And really has been so far very good innings from Valley 32 of 34 and the run rate 3.4 it's the end of the over 11 gone the first one after T from Nilan van Heerden goes for eight runs he's both three overs not for nine so wonderful two overs not for five Kutsia three overs one for 16 and it's going to be Gerald Kutsia in fact uh, from this the Weinberg end picking up the attack after the break, he's been bowling uh, with the wind away from us, uh, and it'll be uh, just down the hill. Yeah, indeed, this down the hill here from the Weinberg end with the wind. Bit of a southeaster coming through, the, the ground now bathed in sunlight, uh, expecting these conditions to continue for the next number of days. Now, getting a little bit warmer as uh, we go into the weekend, and it's the wicket taker. Could see it, who's away from us now. Uh, and that's on the pads uh, to Dezorzi, and I think he's going to double his score with that. He does indeed. 
as it uh, goes uh, to the boundary in the front of the railway stand. Uh, we have four young schoolboys who have made their way into the railway stand there. It's good to see youngsters coming in. Entrance is free into Six Gun Grill Newlands. If you are listening to us, please uh, come down. It could be a very interesting afternoon's uh, cricket here uh, and uh, free over the next number of days as well. Dezorzi uh, just leaving that one alone as he did so much in the pre-tea session. It's a, it's a good one. The first ball you get after tea is a nice That's juicy lovely, arm while you're yeah. on the pads <laughs> and you can just clip away for four <laughs> and then the next one just shoulder your arms and let it go through to the, to the wicketkeeper. <laughs> Uh, so, Tony Dezorzi, I was mentioning just before T, if you were with us, you'll remember uh, two scoring shots now so far. His 30 deliveries, then both have gone to the boundary. Uh, Sear immediately changes his line to around the wicket. That's just too wide to tempt uh, anybody. Tony Dezorzi wanting to build in innings here, one feels, Terry. Yeah, indeed. It, we, we, saw, we saw it last week as well. He's happy to uh, grind it out. He's happy to stay there for the long periods and mm. uh, you know, frustrate the bowlers. But one wonders why uh, Kutsia has decided to come uh, around the wicket. He's got a breeze yeah, that's playing right. across. Yeah. You know, if he stayed over the wicket, he could have gotten one to nibble yeah. you know, past the bat. But listen, uh, he knows what he's doing. He is off to mm. uh, Australia soon with the, with the national side. For, for the test match so yeah well, perhaps perhaps yeah. just working on something here as well maybe you know should he should his uh, exploits be needed uh, against the Aussies yeah maybe I, I think you know it, it, it's um, going, to, going to do him the world of good to be going to Australia work with some senior men uh, in the South African setup you can see what a difference it makes when you're a youngster and you get that exposure at uh, international level and a good leave again from uh, De Zorzi. Uh, just sense that he probably will then start to learn his trade a bit more you know raw pace is often the case when you are a bit younger but you know David and I were talking a bit about uh, Dane Patterson um, I was chatting a bit with Shafik about Dane Patterson as well during the break and just saying you know when He's come back here as, uh, I don't suppose you'd ever think of yourself as the finished article, but he's come back here, uh, you know, uh, as a, as a, I'd say a significantly well polished uh, batter, as that's well ridden by Dzorzi. He couldn't get out of the way, but he managed to get his, uh, get over that one, and it what did bounce just in front of fourth slip. Uh, the Knights will probably feel that uh, was a little bit unlucky on their part. Dzorzi will probably feel that he played it as well as he could have done, considering the situation which he, he got himself into. And uh, just explain to Mo Valley there what uh, exactly how he did manage to guide that one down, uh, which was good cricket from the Six Gun Grill Western Province opener. It's a really good short ball that from was he? Yeah, straight at the yeah. batsman. Yeah. He couldn't get himself out of the way. Caused him a, a bit of trouble, and uh, fortunately for Tony Dezorzi, he played it with nice soft hands and he did. got the ball to get which, uh, which down. Was get what was needed. Could so easily have, could have looped up off the top edge, but uh, fortunately, uh, no damage done. As it is, uh, Leon van Heerden to continue the attack from Kelvin Grove end. Eight coming off his previous over. There's been a change to the field, which has been precipitated by that. Uh, by the runs scored in the previous over. Now one slip has been taken away. We have three slips. A man at a interesting position, Tariq. That's what, like 45 down uh, on the offside. Um, and just in behind very nicely into that one. Uh, man at 45 down towards the sort of widest third man boundary. Uh, point slightly forward a point not quite a cover point in cricketing parlance a man at mid off the mid on forward a man forward a square just on the edge of uh, the pitches or the square here and a man that's uh, Woodaza who's down at long leg to the right hand just tickled into the leg side uh, Matoa does the fielding there's no run 
41 for one uh, deficit now is 70 and uh, lost the wicket of Eddie Moore in uh, that first over um, good pace from Gerald Kutsia he got it in the right place didn't he uh, for that delivery to Eddie Moore really an unplayable delivery almost that one is uh, certainly uh, unplayable for Yasin Valley and uh, Adrian Horstock just uh, tipping his the 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 top of his uh, Panama hat is it it's a Panama hat I'm not sure I'm not uh, not a, not a hat expert. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely not a peak. <laughs> no, it's definitely not a peak. Uh, umpires wearing similar hats. And uh, standard uh, CSA umpiring issue Panama hat with the uh, very nice uh, ribbon on top. Uh, that's very, very nicely played. A ball uh, just angling in too much into the legs and Valley will come back uh, for the second run and uh, takes him to... Uh, is that 34 he's on now 43 for one in the 13th over and uh, yeah it's, um, it's it's been an interesting day's play so far with uh, the iTech Knights being rolled over by the four prong pace attack Oh, beautifully played through the offside by Yasin Valley. Just waited on that, played it under his eyes, and uh, he gets uh, another couple as uh, Dikhali goes out from his position at uh, extra cover and uh, fields that ball. He dispensed with his, both his cap and his sunglasses along the way to go and pick that one up. And uh, it is the end of the over. Another four off that over. Uh, two, two twos to Valley. He's on to 36, 45 for the loss of one in 13 overs. Uh, Eddie Moore will be looking at this now and thinking, you know, why did he bowl me the unplayable delivery? <laughs> 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 yeah, Dzorzi on strike. Yeah, nice on the line of the stumps from uh, Kutsia. Almost seems to have uh, slowed down a little bit to try and get a bit more accuracy. Yeah, probably just uh, trying to find his rhythm uh, again yeah. uh, so after that uh, tea break. So he'll, he'll go back to the basics, just find the line and the length that he wants, and then once he starts feeling comfortable, he'll uh, start cranking up yeah. uh, the kilometers. Absolutely. I think uh, good for him to go on this tour. You, you were saying, Terry, good for him to go on this tour to Australia. And that is a lovely shot from De Zorzi. Just waited on it. And uh, under his eyes, again, played it beautifully out through the covers to the boundary under the oaks. And uh, he goes into double figures with that. The six-gun grill Western Province score goes to 49 for one in the 14th over just one short now of a 50 partnership as well as the 54 uh, six gun grill western province and uh, it won't come off that delivery yeah but a bit of anger behind yeah. that delivery from could yeah, you could see, uh, just so. <laughs> see a bit of extra effort after dishing up that wide half right. volley to uh, tony de so uh, could see uh, you can see the experience of uh, <laughs> the Bullion coming to come and uh, have a chat yeah, to the right. young speedster. And that's, that's nice to see you know, the, good, the experienced yeah. players just coming in, having a chat to, to the bowler, just to ensure mm -hmm. that uh, mentally he's uh, in the right spot. That's good. Running all the way from first slip, the captain, to come and chat to his fast bowler. And that's a much better delivery. Uh, one feels nice carry through to Jean Clutter. Uh, who earlier on today got the top score for the iTech Knights uh, in a batting performance that really, after having won the toss, uh, you wouldn't be sending uh, a letter home about that one. Uh, definitely, 29 he scored, and uh, he was trying to hold the middle and lower order together. Jean Clute, experienced man, but unfortunately uh, fell away quite badly after the. Uh, Pretty good partnership for the second wicket 
But once Matthew Kleinfeld was out, uh, Tariq, it all just fell apart. Yeah, floodgates opened from that point and that got the tails up of the six yeah. girl Western Province uh, bowlers. And from that point on, it was uh, yeah. all heading one way. Uh, absolutely. It was a period of uh, 40 minutes before lunch that uh, created those challenges for them as uh, Dzorzi does what he's done so well so far in this inning and just leaves it alone. Uh, leaves on height very well as well as on line. Dzorzi so far seems to have a very good idea where his off stump is. Unfortunately earlier today the same could not be said of Reynard van Tonda. Uh, probably the other key dismissal in that innings after uh, Matthew uh, Kleinfeld's dismissal Fantonuk and Klutter, who could potentially have uh, taken the night through to a better total. Unfortunately, Fantonuk going, uh, not playing a shot to the uh, to Dane Patterson, Patterson who'd been on the money pretty much all the time, uh, just uh, angling one in to the right hander and. Uh, getting Abdullah Steenkamp to uh, raise his finger in saying, yes, I'm afraid, young man, that would have gone on to hit the stumps. So you have to be back on your way to the pavilion. You know, one feels, James, also, I just had a squiz at the mm. uh, promotion relegation log. Okay, yeah, and, very interesting. Uh, yeah. The Knights are in need of some points mm. overall. Uh, oh, that's beautifully played off the no ball. Down the ground by Yasin Valley. It's more of a push than a drive. And uh, that will bring up the 50 as uh, they take three off no ball. So four will accumulate to the score. And uh, 50 up after only uh, 59 minutes, 86 balls, eight fours. And uh, Valley moves into 39. His partner does all do on 12. And uh, that is uh, only one extra. In fact, that will move to uh, two extras now. Uh, it should be, well, if you say 53, it will be the score. And uh, that is uh, a very good comeback after the early loss of Eddie Moore's wicket. Well, so going back to the promotion relegation, yeah, like yeah. anybody is, is uh, confused about that. It's, it's yeah. something that has uh, come into effect last season when uh, the... Van Heerden, uh, yeah, just played nicely by mm -hmm. Car uh, sorry, Terry, carry on. So when the franchise system was, uh, there we say, disbanded, yes. uh, and back to the provincial system, the first division and second division was then split up, and this season is the second year in the rotation of the mm -hmm. promotion relegation, and as it stands, after the CSA T20 challenge, yeah. uh, if we just focus on the on the bottom two positions yes. uh, on Division 1, it's the Dragons that have got 11 points in total, mm -hmm. and the iTech Knights have got nine oh dear. from uh, from the four competitions that has happened last season yes. and, and the one that's concluded this season. So the iTech Knights have got to find something. They uh, do, they've yes. got the, the uh, one-day cup that's happening soon, yeah. and they've got this... Uh, CSA four-day series mm. to to get themselves mm -hmm. off the bottom of that log. Mm. Otherwise, yeah, uh, there's a real chance that the High Tech Knights will be playing Division Two next season. Why? Well, a very strong possibility at the moment, as far as I'm aware. They're at the bottom of this uh, four-day log, uh, only having played the one match, uh, but having lost by an innings to uh, the uh, Titans. Um, Sorry, I am I'm incorrect in saying that. So they have played two matches, I do apologise. One draw and one loss. Um, they're at position number five on the log. The Dolphins at the bottom having only played the one match. Uh, the Dragons second from bottom. So the Knights do need the points though. It's not a, it's, uh, they are uh, in the bottom half of that log. Uh, only on a similar number of points to the, the G-Bets Rocks. So yes, it, it is going to be really tough for them, but the Dragons and the Itec Knights looking like they are both in contention for relegation. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously there's a waiting system. Yeah. Uh, and all those uh, numbers come into, into effect once the competitions have closed. I know it's 15 points yeah. awarded to you if you win the competition and then obviously if you end yeah. bottom of yes. the competition, you don't pick up any points. No, no, so absolutely. it is, as it stands, it's a good thing 
for the uh, eighth ignites. It's got to be close, but I think they hit him outside the line of the off stump. Uh, Nian van Heerden coming around the wicket to the left hand. Uh, the angle is uh, quite significant. Yeah, so it's, as, as it stands, the Aitak Knights is in a much better position than the, yes. the Northwest Dragons. Although this is the final game before yeah. the break, yes. before we break for the uh, one-day cup and resume the four-day series again you know, in the new year. So there's still plenty of cricket to be played in the four-day yeah. series. And uh, one feels that at the end of the one-day cup, yeah. once those uh, points have been uh, disseminated, we'll have a much better idea and understanding of where the Aitek Knights are. Yes. You know, you know, if, if, if you, I mean, you don't, you don't want to put all your eggs in, in the four-day series basket no. and, and try and pick up as many points uh, for the overall log standings uh, from there. You want to have a good showing in the, in the one-day cup. Yeah. I mean, the Aitek Knights picked up five points in the uh, CSA T20 Challenge. Right. So you know, one feels if they could replicate if, or, or go one better yeah. in the one-day cup, it'll stand them in good stead. Uh, in that fight for yes, relegation. Absolutely. I mean, it, certainly last season, uh, the Six Gun Grill Western Province not performing as well in the four day competitions as, that competition as they would have wanted to, um, but had a better performance in the one day, one day challenge towards the end of the season. And the, the remainder of the four day games, as you say, Tariq will be uh, very important uh, as you know that the um, they will have five games left uh, sorry four games left i do apologize they have four games left in which they can then make a difference uh, the moment uh, this is the last uh, of the matches before the four-day competition recommences on the uh, 12th of february uh, next year 2023 and that will be the last competition of the season. Um, well, that is uh, quite high uh, steepling bounce from Kutsia. We can definitely get that ball to come up uh, quite significantly. Signaled as uh, one for the over by umpire Hordstock, standing here at the Weinberg end in his 101st uh, first class match. His uh, has now umpired at test match level, having made his debut in test match cricket last season. Well, that's so uh, well played and well ridden by uh, Yasin Valley. Plays that beautifully with the pace down to the uh, backward third man uh, boundary for uh, four, and uh, that is really good. That's a really, really good shot from him, getting on top of the bounce. It's uh, one of those things that uh, we, we see far too often that the shorter the batter, the better he is off the back foot. Yeah, it really did play that well, you know, getting over the, uh, over the ball and uh, making it look perhaps easier than it uh, would have been. And now uh, overcompensates yeah. as Gerald Kutsia goes uh, leg sideish, and that's uh, fielded by Kale backward of uh, square on the leg side. So we have uh, somebody warming up down there at uh, on lo at long leg. Let me have a look and see. I think that seems is like Alfie Motoa. Yeah, it does seem that like that. Yeah, up. it is Motoa. Definitely. I was trying to see if it was because uh, uh, so we have uh, other quick bowlers that it might be uh, he's the only one who is warming up and it's too short and wide outside the off stamp uh, it's only going to go through for the single is Valley and that was a good call uh, from uh, the batting partners not to try and take the two as that was some uh, pretty sharp fielding out there by Reynard van Tonda uh, at, uh, who was at point for the right-hander. He's now at square leg or backward square. For the left-hander, Dezorzi, he'll have uh, one ball left in the Kutsia over 
uh, to face. He's away from us now. Gerald Kutsia around the wicket. It's too short and wide. Outside the off stand. Fentazorzi does not miss out. And he goes and scores his fourth boundary of the innings. That takes him to 16. So those mathematicians uh, who are out there. Four times four equals Ford Ranger apparently at the moment. I mean, sorry, equals 16. And uh, 16 overs gone. Dazorzi is on 16. Valley's on 44. And it's 62 for one. And uh, Gerald Kutsia, uh, he is going to learn a lot in his career, one feels. And the lessons he's learning uh, every day, you need to take lessons uh, uh, from uh, what you, how you ply your trades as a fast bowler. And lessons perhaps on this field or this pitch at uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands. The beautiful Six Gun Grill Newlands are consistency metronomic accuracy keeping it there the pace is important but it, it you know it, it doesn't repay you as well here at six gun grill newlands we certainly haven't seen on these pitches uh Tariq. you you've been here longer than i have been in the western <laughs> cable watching cricket here but um yeah this pitch now i mean you get reward for being on the spot on the money yeah you have to you have to be patient and i think that's that's probably one of the big lessons that uh, any young fast bowler mm -hmm. coming here to Newlands or yeah. Siskan Girl Newlands will, will learn is that you've yeah. got to be patient. Yeah. Um, if uh, if you're landing a ball where you want it to and the batsman's not playing at it, yeah, there's no need for you then to go and change it. No, don't don't change it. Absolutely, because the pitch, you know, generally the conditions, the pitch, it will it will assist you. Yeah, you know, at some stage. Get your variations in place, work on that delivery that's going to come in, work on the delivery that's going to go away, as it is Matoa, and uh, his first delivery uh, is outside the off stump, shortish and wide and punished, as uh, a short and wide delivery will be. Uh, we've seen it uh, so far this season, valued to 48 now, uh, in double quick time of uh, 48 deliveries. So he's batting at a runner ball. And uh, it is uh, 66 for one. Yeah, batting has run a ball and hasn't is, played a rash shot no, in I, any yeah. one of them. It's just been pure cricketing strokes, putting the bad ball away and taking your singles and yeah. your twos. It's yeah. been basic application from it Yasin Bali. Yeah, and uh, he's done the... Oh, he'll be upset with himself there. It was there to hit, but uh, he didn't actually really play the shot, did he? He didn't go through with the shot. And uh, maybe that's... Uh, not too bad a uh, thing for him, but he's on 48. He wanted to play that one in a similar similar way. Matoa with that interesting action of his very whippy wrist that it looks that he has, just getting a little bit of extra bounce. And uh, Valley, where he's playing, uh, we said that he hasn't played a loose shot, playing the, loose, m the most loose shot he's played all day. And he's still on 48. He's still there. That's the most important thing for him and for Six Gun Grill, Western Province. So we're now seeing the fourth member of the pace attack for the uh, iTech Knights. Uh, it's Alfred Matoa. Earlier on, uh, batted as well as anybody else has done for the iTech Knights. Once again, in and. Uh, Good running by Valley uh, and Dazorzi. Dazorzi gets in well easily there as uh, the man coming in from uh, cover as uh, Gerald Kutsia, is it? Uh, no, no, sorry, I do apologize. That's not Kutsia. I think that must be uh, Neil Snayman, it is, who uh, throws that one in. Am I right or wrong? Uh, Snayman's in the slips, no? So I'm just, uh, I haven't got my players right there. Uh, I'll get there. It must be very nice on time today. Uh, throwing that one in from the covers. Uh, Dzorzi now still got four slips of backward point and a mid off on the uh, offside. And uh, another single that's going to be taken here. Good running by the uh, six gun Grill Western Province opener takes the score to uh, 68. There's still one ball left and the Matoa over. And Yasin Valley needs one more run to get to a very well played 50. Uh, 49 he's on at the moment of uh, 51 deliveries his partner with him Dzorzi who just got his first single uh, of 
is the inning so far. He's got four fours and a single. 17 he is on. And uh, he's... Tariq is uh, looking up the numbers here. Yeah, just so making if sure. If he does uh, get to that 50, so I'm not going to say when he does, because that's always a bad thing to say. But if he does uh, get to that 50, that uh, we can give you the most up-to-date numbers on uh, Yassin Valley. And uh, as we talk about a lot of the Western Province players being seasoned campaigners, we might be referring to the sponsor, which is uh, Six Gun Grill. Every meal's uh, best friend this uh, broadcast really made possible, the commentary made possible at least, uh, through their partnership uh, with uh, Western Province Cricket. And we really appreciate the support that they do give to the union here and uh, to the team and the field whose uh, name is, uh, they bear, uh, bears their name, the, uh, this ground here, Newlands, uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands and Six Gun Grill Western Province as it's Aubrey Swanepoel that is going to pick up the attack uh, from the uh, Kelvin, uh, sorry, from the Weinberg end and uh, that it is no run. Things going to be a bit careful, bowling to the right-hander with his back foot. Looking like it's a very, it's very close to that uh, return crease. That maybe not as much as it should, as I thought it was, and that's uh, sort of whacked through the offside. Uh, Cross batted, a uh, little cross batted, not, not perhaps a classic shot from uh, De Zorzi, but it's uh, good enough and uh, is enough of a chase down to the boundary in front of the Oaks for Nieland van Heerden for them to go through for three. De Zorzi moves to 20, partnership is 71, total is 71. Valley on 49 on strike, and uh, it'll be Sonapul to come over the wicket uh, to him. And they bring in the leg slip now for the right hand. A leg slip, a forward short leg. A man at 45 on the leg side, mid wicket, deep mid wicket, and a man at mid on on the leg side. That short, and it's played into the offside. And uh, Yassine Valley will go to his uh, 50, and Tariq will bring you those numbers now. So a 45th or 41st of first class half century, that is for. Yasin Valley, this one coming off uh, just 52 balls well and uh, seven fours in his innings thus far. Pretty much uh, favoured the offside has uh, Yasin Valley. Not much uh, runs on the leg side, which no, is, you know, really considering how, well. how risky yeah, he is, absolutely. is uh, shown how strong he is on the offside. And uh, yeah, indeed, of those uh, 50 odd runs, uh, 45 of them coming through the offside and uh, to confound that now he plays one into the leg side <laughs> a whip <laughs> off his uh, off his pads uh, but remember to see is now uh, facing uh, the the spinner who's who's spinning it into uh, he's getting a spin into his leg side and hence the the leg side field it's now a 5-4 leg side offside field for the uh, left-handed Dzorzi and that's uh, flighted nicely by uh, Swanepoel and just uh, played a little bit away from his body, perhaps uh, not quite what you'd want to see from De Zorzi. Um, good delivery from Swanepoel, that one. Nice amount of flight. A bit of flight, a bit of dip is what you want. That's far too short, though. And it gets the punishment down to the North Pavilion, just in fact to the left of the Oaks. And you cannot bowl it short on this pitch uh, if you're a spinner at that kind of pace. And De Zorzi gets his uh, fourth boundary, fifth boundary, sorry, of his innings. Especially, 24. especially not to a man that's coming off 167. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, and he, you know, he's built his innings now. He started to build his innings onto 24. Uh, Yassin Valley gets the first 50 of uh, this particular match. The total 78. The deficit now is only 33. And uh, we still have got two hours uh, to go before close of play this evening. Just a reminder of the uh, playing conditions for this four-day competition, if you are not aware of them. It's a minimum of 100 and, uh, sorry, it should be a minimum of 104 overs in the day. That's based on 16 overs an hour and includes then an extra half an hour 
should it be required, so then uh, it just uh, comes off the pad, I think, going down uh, the leg size soft signal. It uh, did get bat on it, sounded very much like pad to me, but uh, it did get bat on it. So another run to uh, Yassine Valley, he moves on to 53. So just uh, to be aware of that, it's a um, play starts at 10 and goes through until half past five. So three sessions of uh, sensibly of two hours and uh, 10 minutes each with the extra half an hour at the end of the day's play as Dzorzi lets another one go outside the off stump. And uh, that means uh, yeah, to get in uh, then 104 overs in the day, it gives us a total over the four days. Uh, if you're looking at test cricket over the five days, you get you get 450 overs. In four day cricket, you get 420 overs. So very similar to test cricket. Left to learn again by Dzorzi on length and line outside the rough stamp. No real movement to speak of for Matoa here. Yeah, it looks pretty much uh, up and down. Nothing, uh, no swing at mm. least from where we can see and it doesn't seem like there's any yeah, nibble of the pitch either so mm -hmm. just uh, probably see Tony is always be very watchful uh, and uh, as they have done thus yeah. far just if there is a loose ball just put yeah, it away that's right so only two slips in position now uh, and that is played down to the man at uh, sort of wide issue backward gully I mean, it's a very interesting position uh, almost a third man uh, a short third man about 30 yards uh, from the wickets and then there's a man at point man at uh, extra cover a man at mid off and on the lake side three fielders still a uh, man at mid on mid wicket and uh, a man at uh, long leg that is Budaza I think it's down here at long leg it's uh, Matoa again and uh, just played to Fontona in the covers. There is no addition to the score. So yet yeah, just on those uh, playing conditions again, and 104 overs uh, in the day. We are a bit behind at the moment, uh, courtesy of many wickets. I think that have fallen in the day, and uh, pace bowlers essentially having been on for the majority of the day. Um, six Kangaroo Western Province struggling to get through uh, 16 overs in an hour. It's the end of the over, and uh, it will be joining now. And Tariq is going to be Zahir Adams. Uh, I'm going to take a short break, and uh, Zahir will be with you now oh, with uh, with Tariq. And uh, so it's goodbye from me. Jamie, that a good session. <laughs> Welcome back to Six Gun Grill Newlands. It's a lovely afternoon for the home side. They have uh, eaten into this free state, the, at least the ITIC night total, and have a deficit of only 32 runs and still nine wickets. Uh, in the bank, Yasin Valley, the local boy, doing really well here on 53, undefeated 53, and Tony De Zorzi on 24. These two will know that uh, time is very much on their side, and they will like to bat well into this afternoon session. And they will look to set their stall as they did last week against the Paul Rocks, where it was solid contributions from Tony De Zorzi, 163, and a double hundred for Carl Verena that set up that victory. And after the bowlers had done exceptionally well this morning, that would have been the talk in the change room. Just bat as long as you like, boys, and give the bowlers some time to put their feet up. And that's exactly what they're looking to do. Not that they're going at any slowish rate at all. They're going at just on four runs and over. And really entertaining cricket here at Six Gun Grill Newlands. It's 
Aubrey Swanepoel, the Knights off spinner. We'd not, we'd not see Western Province use any of their slow bowlers earlier. But that's uh, the task that the Knights face right now. Maiden over there, 79 for one after 20. A much needed uh, maiden over by the Aitek Knights. It seemed as though the prior overs that uh, Sizgangal Western Province batters were getting themselves on top and uh, dispatching the ball at will to the boundaries. So Aubrey Swanepoel coming in and doing the job that his captain would want, just tying up one end and get the seamers to work from the other side. Perhaps that's the start then of uh, a change in fortune for the Aitek Knights. Tarek, if you look at that uh, six-guy girl VP lineup, but uh, Eddie Moore unfortunately missing out on this occasion as Alfred Matua runs in from the Calvin Grove end. And it's Tony DeZorzi, Yasin Valley, the youngster, Daniel Smith, Carl Rayner, Aviwe Makajima, George Linder. It's a very experienced top seven there with uh, only the 20-year-old Dan Smith, the prodigy, in between the likes of uh, Valley and Verena. And it's, uh, these are the type of units that, uh, without wanting to put the horse before the cart, that go on to win red ball competitions, first class cricket. It's that type of experience that you need. And as we've seen in the years gone by, when, whether it was Western Province or Cape Cobras, whether, when they won four day competitions, it was always based on plenty of experience, particularly in that middle order, the likes of Justin Ontong, Justin Kemp. Stian van Zyl, those were the, and Andrew Patik at the top, those were the men that carried the Cobras in Western Province to Red Bull titles in the past. And it's uh, these men who carry the mantle today. It's a uh, top seven that has certainly brought the goods this season in the four-day series. Just the third game this one and already in the two games uh, prior to this they've picked up a smidge under 11 batting bonus points and that's the most of all the teams in the competition so it just shows what experience in your in your top order can do it really is a balanced uh, unit at the moment and uh, touch wood that uh, particular that bowling lineup doesn't pick up any injuries For the likes of uh, Berger, Patterson, Hendricks and Moretti, along with the spin of Linda, really are a formidable unit at the moment. And it's really positive for cricket here in the Western Cape. It's been a tough couple of seasons, tough couple of years, lean years should we say. And uh, it seems that uh, this, uh, this group, they're wanting to set the record straight this year. It was a tough baptism in the T20 Challenge. Partially, uh, at least hugely disrupted by injuries. We saw uh, David Beddingham, he's uh, out with a shoulder injury. John O'Bird, he picked up a bit of a hamstring niggle just before the tournament. He doesn't even, he's not even in the lineup at the moment. He'll most likely come back when uh, Captain Carl Verena departs for Australia in a couple of days' time for the Test Series with the Proteas. And we'd like to see the precocious talents of Jonathan Bird. We had a very good first class season last year. But uh, just great to see. That's the end of the over. 80 for 1 after 21. Zaire, you mentioned the start to the season for Sizan Girl Western Province and how it went in the T20 Challenge and the injuries they picked up along the way. I think now, with the four day series having started and the way the upward trajectory I'll be seeing from the side. Um, only one of the starting lineup is heading to Australia. So there's not going to be a lot of disruption for them come the, uh, the one day cup that's going to be starting soon. So they've pretty much got a side now that it's brimming with confidence and uh, have got plenty of experience that can carry this momentum over into a white ball, a white ball competition. I definitely, Tariq, I think uh, as we see Swampel running in from the one begin, uh, and uh, there's always just uh, Getting away with a streaky single, the inside edge. Definitely, that is the, going to be the fundamental difference. The is the experience of this uh, Western Province side. It was a fairly youthful lineup at the T20 Challenge. 
Um, we had the likes of uh, schoolboy Abdullah Bayimi, SA under 19 prodigy Ethan Cunningham. You know, just finding it uh, a little bit tough at the top there in Pochestrum and uh, having learned some really harsh lessons. But uh, with the old hands all back on deck, and remembering Buren Hendricks also picked up a, a bit of a niggle uh, just before the, uh, in the first game actually. So that uh, Western Brom has lost their talisman there. Will Wayne Parnell be back for the One Day Cup Series? He is in Abu Dhabi at the moment for the T10. Uh, just for a couple of days, couple, a week I think, if I'm not mistaken. If, uh, if Western Brom do get Wayne Parnell back for the One Day Cup, that could be another significant addition. He would uh, fit into an all-rounder slot, all slot there. And then it does become an interesting uh, bun fight amongst the seamers. I was about, I was about to bring up that point because if you look at this, yes, different formats. But if you look at this 11, this is a, a settled 11. It's a confident 11. Um, if I had my way... Parnell comes back, where? Tariq, mm -hmm. if I had my way, I would go straight swap with uh, Carl Verena or Eddie Moore at the top of the order. Let Wayne uh, bat up the order. That's, uh, that's my call. I think he's good enough. I don't think we, we, we've seen, uh, particularly during this last T20 World Cup, that's another maiden over. It's consecutive maiden over by Swanepoel. I don't think we saw the best of Wayne Parnell during the T20 World Cup with the bat. He was fantastic with the ball, particularly up front. He swung, he's uh, been swinging it both ways again, and that's really been really impressive. But uh, I do think uh, he offers a lot more with a bat. Does the the veteran now, Wayne Bonnell? Oh, well, plenty of experience as well. I mean, yeah, and it just seems as though that he's riding this wave of confidence, you know, since he's been back, you know, back home, home comforts and uh, the exploits that he's had for Siskan Grill Western Province, got him back into the mix for, for the Proteus setup. And, and it's just something, uh, he, you, you know, that old, dare I say, the old, Wayne Pond now that had a bit of swagger, you know, it seems as though he's got that swagger back. Yeah, so if uh, we're not 100% sure whether he will be available for the one day competition, but should he be, it would be a real asset to the side. And uh, he's been really successful in the past, batting at the top of the order for Western Province. He does have 100, I remember, at the Wanderers in a one day cap game so it would be uh, a real asset and wouldn't affect the bowling lineup at all uh, but that is a beautiful shot by Tony De Zorzi. just allowed it to come onto the bat and glided it through the gully region and uh, received some uh, good support and cheers from the young Weinberg and Sachs men in the crowd on the railway stand. You don't see that too often, is I Weinberg boys and Sachs boys sitting together <laughs> as an old Weinberg boy yourself? 100%, 100%. <laughs> uh, I remember coming myself back in the day, uh, jumping in the train in the afternoon, getting off at Newlands, off to school in the, in the blazer and the khaki shorts. I think uh, that Sachs boy, uh, he must be feeling very lonely on that stand there. <laughs> but uh, good to see the, the school boys coming in for four day cricket and this is where you do learn your game. You learn so much about the game. It's where the passion within all of us began. Just sitting at Newlands. I remember four-day cricket back then. Uh, swap Desmond Haynes for Tony DeZorzi and Herschel Gibbs for Yasin Valley. That's what we watched back in the day. Whether we'll uh, leave it up to the other boys if the quality is the same. But uh, definitely DeZorzi and Valley putting on a good show this afternoon. The Zosie's got that uh, Caribbean, you know, look to him and uh, the whole vibe about him the with the two rag underneath the helmet. <laughs> and the dreadlocks uh, just as well. Definitely a very cool laid back kind of customer. And uh, it'll be good to see. He's got, he's, got, he's got a start here. He's got 30 and uh, would be fantastic if he could follow up uh, last week's uh, big 100 with another score year. And that's just off the hip and he'll pick up another boundary. So that's the second boundary of the over for Tony DeZorzi. He moves to 34. 
Alpha number two are just a uh, little bit too short on this deck. And uh, the Zorzi pouncing and picking up another boundary. We saw the Western Province bowlers. They uh, were a lot fuller in their lengths earlier today. And that's how they reap the rewards. And Matua here just uh, erring on the short side and uh, being punished by the Zorzi. I think that's been the difference between the two uh, bowling lineups thus far. The Itek Knights have been a lot shorter. They've offered up a lot more uh, freebies to the uh, to the batters, whereas the Sisgang Girl Western Province bowlers they were a lot more. Yeah, say more. As we still wait, uh, Toa to come in again. The uh, six young girl Western Province uh, bowlers were a lot more focused on hitting that uh, crucial areas and getting the batsmen uh, interested. That's where a lot of their success has come. At the end of the over, two boundaries for uh, Tony the Zorzi. the Western Province team moved to 89 for one after 23 overs. They, uh, the deficit just uh, 22 now after the Knights were dismissed for Nelson earlier today. Triple one did the final wicket fall and it was definitely a fantastic performance by the Western Province uh, seam bowling unit earlier this morning. Really interested by this field at uh, Aubrey Swanepoel's bowling tee. He's got one man deep on the leg side, another three, uh, one short 45, short mid wicket, also mid on, and the man under the helmet. I just think uh, possibly could bowl a little bit more outside the off stump, just a little bit more of an attacking line instead of this. Uh, trying to defend because uh, wickets is what the Knights require. He has bowled two maidens in a row when the, the old age saying of three consecutive maidens leads to a wicket. So uh, let's see if the pressure does tell on Yasin Valley. And he gives it away a little bit with a, a long hop there that uh, just relieves the pressure and allows uh, Valley to truck through for a single. Well, not too long ago, Yasin Valley was scoring at uh, a run of all 48 to 48. And you know, six runs uh, later, he's uh, faced 73 deliveries. It just shows that uh, you know, Aubrey Swanepoel has been doing a job from the Weinberg end. Cut shot by the Zorzi. Just uh, the rotation of the strikers. It's uh, 91 for one after 24 overs. Tarek, the new uh, building at the Six Gun Grill Newlands really is a magnificent sight. Had the pleasure of just uh, going up for a coffee earlier at the. Uh, of course, you did. The second floor. Decent coffee, I must add. <laughs> Very good coffee. At the, and it's a wonderful uh, place. There's a varsity college. The students are in there. A couple of officers uh, as well. A couple of sports agents. There's also a very neat cricket shop. So a wonderful addition to Six Gun Girl Newlands. Hasn't lost any of its allure with the, uh, the new development. And still does. Uh, and actually has added quite a deft touch to the historic old ground. It's a nice little marriage of the old and the new. So, I don't know, brand new building, new facilities and you know, in and amongst the the old stomping ground of uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands with uh, plenty of all of its heritage and everything that comes with it. 
Are you still a Oaks man? You still under the Oaks? Is that the only hundred percent? That's the only place to be. <laughs> eh? Although I do, uh, I do often try and find myself on uh, either there over there on the North Stand, right behind the Bowler's Arm. Or that is a good place. I tucked do. underway on the President side. No, the, the on the old uh, North Stand, just alongside the uh, side screens. Uh, the old groundsman Evan Flint we used to spend many an hour with him, just discussing the intricacies intricacies of uh, four-day cricket. As Matua runs in from the Calvin Grove end, stuck off the hip by uh, Dzozzi, he won't come back for the second. But also, your spot here at Sisgang and Newlands is important. Because uh, it always depends on the time of day. So early morning, try and get yourself behind uh, the bowler's arm. See if there's a bit of movement for, for the new nut. And then as the afternoon <laughs> progresses, as the, the beverages start flowing and the vibe increases, you uh, make your way over to the Oaks <laughs> and uh, get in involved with, uh, with the festivities. 100% it's going to be uh, a summer of cricket this year. Lot, plenty of cricket at Newlands. We have... Uh, the uh, WSL, the Women's Super League, that uh, kicks off next week. That kicks off next week at Newlands. Really interested to see the return of Danae van Ikek, the Proteus Women's Captain. She'll, uh, she'll be making an appearance. And always the likes of Lord of Wolfart, Sine Luce. These are the, the cricketers that will be on show for the week. From there we go straight into what we've all been waiting for. The SA20. The Mumbai Indians Cape Town, MI so you, Cape Town. You, you're going to get into trouble for, for, for saying that. It is indeed MI Cape Town. and My Cape Town, as they say. But as we speak about My Cape Town, it's not a... A catch goes down in the slips. Jacques Snayman, Alfred Matua, he ran in hard and Yasin Valley threw his hands at it. And the edge flew straight to... Jacques name at second slip and he's put it down and that could be a costly miss for the Knights. Yeah, it's been the, the one thing that we saw when the Sijan Western Province players were in the fields that they took all their catches when it got nicked off and uh, unfortunately here yeah, for, for the high tech Knights, chance goes down and uh, it's not what you want to uh, do to a batter that is on uh, 54 is uh, put the chance down it could have been the opportunity that the knights needed to swing the momentum back in their favor but the chance goes a begging and like you mentioned earlier on Zaire, perhaps it could have been the pressure that uh, swanapool has put on from the side tying things up that uh, forced that little rash shot from uh, valley that is exactly what happened Tarek. it was uh valley was quite uh, free flowing earlier in the day and uh once being, uh, that's what, what dot balls do, it creates pressure. And he had faced a couple and uh, thought he'd have a slash outside the off stump. And uh, the Knights will uh, hope uh, it's not going to prove too costly for that. was much needed, particularly as they, uh, the deficit is only 19 with uh, Western Province still nine wickets in the bank. And when you are chasing the eight ball as much as the Knights do, you need to take every opportunity that comes your way. Just shows a team that's uh, possibly just already starting to drift, starting to think about the end result and not uh, every ball, focusing on every ball. They're looking at the scoreboard and thinking we we way behind here. You never know what a couple of wickets that does. We saw that in the first innings where uh, Klein felt and uh, Fantondo were going, getting a partnership going, and then one wicket led to two, led to three, led to four. And all of a sudden, the Knights find themselves uh, six wickets down at lunch. Uh, equally, it was up at uh, the Wonders as well. The, the Lions were coasting along at over 100 for no wicket, 100 by Josh Reaches, and then suddenly, through Simon Harmer for the Titans, they, the Lions slumped to 180 for five. 
So you're never quite out of the game. As you see, Aubrey Swanepoel, that's what we were speaking about, throwing the ball just outside the off stump and giving it more time in the air and off the pitch because you will get grip at Newlands. And that's more what we'd like to see from the off spinner. Yeah, it just seems as though it's a bit of pressure on the six gun girl Western Province batters. The edges are being found more now where a few overs ago it was finding the middle of the bat. Not many uh, bad balls are being bowled. So the Aitik Knights are certainly wrestling their way back in and they're fighting their way back into this encounter. Torek, I just think uh, 40 cricket is, uh, that's the end of the over 97 one for one after 26. I just think uh, in 40 cricket, the, the pendulum swings, the momentum shifts in the game. There are periods when the batting side dominates and there are also periods when the bowling side just uh, claw their way back. And when the bowling sides do manage that, that's when the chances arise and that's when fielders particularly have to be at the most alert. And uh, I can assure that Jock's name, it might be two overs later, but he's still thinking of that drop catch. He's got to put it out of his mind because the next catch is always the, the most important one. Short from uh, Bodaza. Slapped away to the field at D point by Tony De Zorzi. It's probably what uh, the Six Gun Girl Western Province batters would want. They'd want that uh, bit of loose balls from the seamers just to get themselves back into it and feel uh, the ball come off the middle of the bat just to get them out of uh, this little period where the high tech Knights bowlers have uh, wrestled and gotten themselves back into it a little bit. It's a lot fuller from Budaza, punched uh, into the cover region by Vali. And, uh, they're taking the strike nicely now. Uh, these uh, batters who take their partnership up to 97, at least to 99. So just one run away from uh, the 100 run stand between this pair. And that was a feature of uh, Six Young Girl Western Province uh, in their previous game against uh, the g -Base Rocks, was the partnerships. The edge from uh, De Zorzi flies past the uh, second slip, goes all the way to the third man boundary and that will bring up the 100 stand between the pair of uh, De Zorzi and Vali but also the 100 for Six Gun Girl Western Province. Must be really frustrating for the Knights. They uh, have found the edge on two occasions now from the Calvin Grove end. The first was put down by Snayman and the second just flying between Swanepoel and Snayman on this occasion but that's a lot better from uh, the Zorzi although the Knights do have some uh, cover on the boundary and it's just uh, reduced to a single Western Province ticking over nicely at 104 for one after 26.4 overs Valley after the reprieve he'll uh, look to gather himself again and just to look to restart and set himself because he knows that uh, he could be in for a really long haul if he uh, just goes back and focuses on every ball and not worry what's uh, gone past already. Well, it was the first chance that uh, Valley gave the uh, ITEC Knights and uh, fortunately for the visitors, the chance went down. So uh, it's a chance for Yasin Bali to uh, press the reset button, start over again. So 
Guys are from the Calvin Grove end. That is the end of the 27th over. Which is the province 104 for one. Tony DeZorzi, he is on uh, 44 not out. And Diaz in Valley, he is on uh, 58 not out. Derek, I remember being at uh, Yasin Valley's uh, first class debut for the Cape Cobras. Yeah, at Newlands was against uh, a very strong Titans outfit. And uh, Valley stuck a majestic 170 in the second innings. And uh, it set the tone for what everybody thought would be a really illustrious career. Um, and uh, as Swanepoel comes in, and he's uh, always had the talent and uh, possibly just not fulfilled the early promise as we all hoped. Moved down to, or at least up the coast to the Warriors for a couple of seasons. But he's come back and uh, really shown his value to this Western Province outfit. Really busy cricketer. Does uh, enjoy the late cut to get uh, off strike. Oh, it's a little bit of a misfield there by Budaza. And it allows the Zorzi to uh, get off strike. Yeah, Budaza probably after his, uh, his over wasn't expecting a ball to come his way. It's a long way down for him as well. He's uh, quite a tall man, is uh, Budaza. That is a long hop that uh, Valley somehow just uh, gets out to mid wicket and uh, could easily have gone to mid on. He, didn't, he never struck that one cleanly. Often it's uh, the bad ball, sometimes it does uh, get the breakthrough. That's uh, sweet from uh, the Zorzi and they uh, will take on the arm of Kutsi. But Valley is like a jack in the box between the wickets, really quick. And not even the uh, gun slinging arm of Kutsi could prevent the second run. Yeah, Valley and uh, Tony De Zorzi, they run really well between the wickets. More often than not, they'll turn ones into twos as this short ball by Swanepoel dispatched by Tony De Zorzi. And that'll bring up the half century for De Zorzi, his uh, 13th of his career. This one coming off 85 balls. He's been there for 110 minutes. Uh, grabbed himself nine fours in his innings thus far. It's a really good knock by Tony DeZorzi. He would have been uh, disappointed with his performances in the CSA T20 Challenge. But the talented left-handers come back with a bang here in the four-day series. Got a big hundred last week. And he's followed up with a half-century. And that's what uh, particularly the national selectors, Victor Mpitsang, and Patrick Moroni, they'd like to see consistency from uh, Tony DeZorzi. Had him picked in the SAA side last season. Got a fantastic 100 against the Indians. Um, and that is the momentum he'd like to carry on. And he's shown great consistency to follow up with another half century. But it's not done by any manner of means. He knows that. He wants to be there for a long period. It's only the beginning. Oh, so that shot by uh, Tony DeZorzi also took uh, Six Dungrill Western Province into the lead. It's now a two-run lead that they do have, having surpassed the 111 that the Itech Knights posted in their first innings. It's Budaza. That was full. Punched on the ground by Dzorzi. 
Van Yerden. Van Yerden. Van Yerden. Van Yerden. Van Yerden. I do like the look of Tony de Zorzi. He's always, uh, as we said earlier, quite a cool character to crease. Very composed, very compact. Sets himself up nicely. Real uh, positive addition to the Western Province squad, having come down from uh, the Titans from Northerns. Uh, definitely seems that uh, the Cape Town lifestyle is much su more suited to young Dezozi. Does it rain? That's uh, not quite of the sweet spot there for the Zorzi. Nice and full, looking just to lean on it and push it through the covers, but uh, not on that occasion. Kept out by uh, Tony De Zorzi as uh, Budaza continues to uh, come in from the Calvin Grove and brings an end to the over. So, six gun girl, Western Province. Hit the drinks, should be. At 113 for one after 29 overs. Seems as though we'll have one more. The, uh, for the drinks break. So as it stands, it's a uh, change of bowling also for the ITEC Knights. Jack Sneeman being brought into the attack from the uh, Weinberg end. Brings an end to the Aubrey Swanepoel spell who's done a job for his captain. Holding up one end. So it's a two-run lead at the moment for Six Gun Girl Western Province. Ducked away to the leg side by Valley, just a single for Six Gun Girl Western Province. Two men in the cover region for Tony De Zorzi to uh, deal with. And indeed it goes to one of, uh, of the two. A lot fuller. And, uh, kept out by De Zorzi. Snowman's flying through this over. He's already had three balls, just a single off it thus far. Perhaps uh, Tony De Zorzi just uh, seeing the over out and ensure that he keeps his wicket intact heading into the drinks break. Uh, 
And indeed he does just that. Tony Dezorzi sees out the over. It's the end of 30 overs. Six gun goal, Western Province. 114 for one. Tony Dezorzi and uh, Yasin Vali. Dezorzi on 51 and uh, Vali 61. The players will have a bit of a drink. We'll take a break and uh, be back in a few short moments. Welcome back to Six Gun Grill Newlands. It's the uh, final hour of the first day of this four day clash between the host, Western Province, and uh, the ITEC Knights. It's the host that are in firm command, having dismissed the Knights for 111. And Yasin Valley, he loves throwing the hands at it. 
and gets away with another one over the slips for another boundary. Earlier, just a couple of overs before the drinks interval, an edge was found, and uh, Jacques Neyman putting it down off Matua. On this occasion, it was uh, Valley through his hands again, but uh, flying over the slips as for another boundary as uh, Western Province extend their lead to seven over the Knights with uh, nine wickets still uh, remaining in the dugout. Valley seems intent to uh, get the ball moving through the covers or over or through the slips for that matter. Anything with a, with a little bit of width, he's uh, willing to have a full go. Well, either and he's uh, received a message in that drinks break or they put something in uh, what juice. he was drinking. In the juice. It seems as though that he is uh, set to uh, kick on a little bit and uh, up the scoring rate, although they are going at a smidge under four runs to the over, which is in the south is, is a good scoring rate. just the, the, the brand of cricket that Western Province do want to play. They want to be positive, they want to be attacking and uh, really just uh, rubber stamp their dominance this afternoon. Udaza. Once again from the Calvin Grove end. It's wide. Valley again throws his hands at it. Comes off the bottom edge. And rolls all the way to the vacant third man boundary. For his uh, second of the over. And the intent is definitely there from Mo Valley. So I had with... Uh, 30 overs to go in uh, the day after this one. What, uh, if you put yourself in the uh, coaching box of Six Gun Goal Western Province, what would you say would be the ideal lead heading uh, into day two tomorrow? As that runs in. And uh, this occasion, uh, Valley will get a couple down to third man. I think Western Province, they'll be looking to bat only once. Well, uh, last week they went uh, over 500. They went, they went batted quite, quite deep. Double 100 from the captain, Carl Verena. Big 160 from uh, Tony DeZorzi. That's uh, a recipe that they'd like to follow again this week. Really put uh, the nice batters under pressure when they do eventually come out to bat again. That's a lovely little uh, clip off the pads by Yasin Vali. But as I seen that uh, Vali's intent to throw the hands at anything wide, so he went a bit straighter. Unfortunately, though, for the left arm seamer, drifting onto the pads, and Vali showed him that anything uh, within that region, he's got the wrists, the silky wrists that we've associated with him all these years. And. Uh, a little bit of a hashimamla in that stroke through mid-wicket as the Western Province moved to 128 for one after 31 overs. 14 runs off that over, first over after the drinks break. At 14 runs, get it going. Just uh, settle the nerves immediately. I'm sure uh, Tony Dozozi watching on the other side would have seen and then quite enjoyed seeing uh, Valley pick up uh, all those runs. We're going to have a change of polling here from the wine again. It's uh, Nielen van Heerden. He uh, bowled five overs in his first spell, conceded just 17. He's unable to take a wicket. And he will hope uh, that does change here in his second spell. Uh, he's deceptively quick. He's Nielen van Heerden. He has uh, run in and uh, bowl at a rapid speed. I've been watching him uh, in between his overs, uh, Zaire, and he's been 
trying to stretch out that right shoulder quite a bit. So it's a case of if you perhaps feeling a bit of discomfort as he comes in again from the wine again and uh, falls over in his delivery stride. But he's just been touching that shoulder. Perhaps it could be a bit of discomfort, uh, a bit of tenderness in the shoulder. That's the last thing the Knights would want. Uh, one of the front line seam is going down at this stage. It's uh, really when you up against it, you need every bowler to uh, bring his a uh, little bit. And that's a lovely little uh, deflection by De Zorzi drifting into the pads. And that's been the uh, hallmark of this Western Province innings. Whenever there has been anything on offer, they've taken full advantage as the Zorzi moves to 55. It seems as though Van Yerden struggling a little bit with his rhythm from uh, the Weinberg end. It's his first time bowling from this side. Uh, if memory serves, I've only seen him bowl from the Calvin Grove end. And it is a bit different on the side of uh, Six Gun Girl Newlands. Zorzi just lets this one go through. Much better line from uh, Van Jurgen. Probably the ITEC Knights coaching staff would have had a look at uh, what their bowlers have done thus far and probably uh, identified that they haven't been consistent and uh, patient enough to uh, stick to a certain area. It's been a bit of uh, all sorts for them. This is much better from Van Yeren is now found his range as we approach the end of the 32nd over. The Six Country Old Western Province lead now stands at uh, 21 in a good partnership again involving a Tony De Zorzi. Brings an end to the 32nd over. Six Hundred Western Province, 132 for one. Yassin Valley on 75 not out, and Tony De Zorzi 55 not out. Seems as though it'll be a change in bowling from the Calvin Grove end. Jacques Neyman, who had the solitary over just before the drinks break on the Weinberg end. It's now been switched to the Calvin Grove end. So perhaps looking for something different are the uh, iTech Knights. First time that we'll see spin from uh, the far end of the field as we look at it. Short from Snowman and Valley quick on the pull but does find uh, Motoa on the deep square boundary. So just a single to Yasin Valley. It's a packed offside field for Tony De Zorzi again. Two fielders in short in the cover region. Straight and long goes Tony De Zorzi all the way for a maximum. Tossed up gently by a snowman into the arc of uh, Tony De Zorzi who says, thank you very much. I'll have half a dozen. Tony De Zorzi uh, just uh, turning on the accelerator here as when Western Province have come out after this for this final session. They uh, really uh, scoring from both ends at the moment.
It's another single out to the deep extra cover boundary. And the short leg comes in for a valley. Solid in defense. There's Mo Valley already eight off this over with two balls to go. Valley now comes down the track and lofts this one over the vacant mid wicket. The ball trickles its way over the rope and uh, he grabs a boundary for himself. And definitely, Zaire, there's a definite intent since that uh, drinks break for these two batters to kick on. As uh, Snowman comes in again and uh, nice little punch by Valley as he moves to 81. Brings an end to the uh, Snowman over. Six time goal Western Province. 145 for one. It's uh, Valley. Just. Uh, Edging his way closer to three figures. Will be uh and you didn't from one begin once more. And once again, Valley throws his hands at it and uh, just edges between third and second slip and it runs away for the boundary. Valley showing that he's not he's not afraid to th to have a full go outside the off stump and collects another boundary Neat little clip from Yasin Valley to the leg side. And they'll uh, jog through for three runs. And that'll bring up the 150 run stand between uh, these batters as well as the 150 for Six Gun Girl Western Province. The 152 for one. 200 balls it's taken these two to reach that and uh, grab 22 fours and a six along the way it's been very impressive stuff from these uh, experienced batters Four balls gone in this over already seven. 
coming off the bat of uh, Vali. He's uh, really accelerated his innings in his last few overs. Shot by De Zorzi finds the field at deep points. It'll just be a single for the left-hander. Good hands to die this one to feel that deep point. Valley comes back for the second. Makes it in time. Really backing his speed there. Yasin Valley. And they've uh, taken 10 runs off the Nealon van Heerden over. Valley takes himself up to 90. It's 155 for one. Sees Gangal Western Province now lead. The ITEC Knights by 44. Snayman. Well, that will uh, continue from the Calvin Grove end. Start bowling to Tony De Zorzi. On the money is uh, Snowman. It's the province in uh, firm control here. Yeah. Leader 44. And the more time these two spend at the crease, the harder it becomes for the Knights. So a quick over from uh, Snowman, just two coming off it. It's 157 for one after 35. And uh, if we reach the top of the hour, five o'clock, still 27 overs left in the day. And I don't think uh, Zahirat will get through those uh, 27. No, definitely not bowling 27 and overs in this final hour. Um, it's been a... Been the slowish day from the Seamers. But uh, Western Province, they won't mind. They've, uh, their Seamers have done their job. Short by Van Yerden as uh, Valley just rides the bounce and guides this one down to the uh, third man region and come through for a couple of runs. Just seemed in that uh, period before the drinks break that uh, the Hitting Lights were grinding their way back into it. 
drinks break probably came at the right time for the six round goal Western Province batters because since then it's been all the home side They've up their run rate it's going now at around 4.5 to the over as finally clips this one down to a fine leg and again picks up uh, an easy two it's been a feature of uh, this partnership they're running between the wickets They've uh, put pressure on the fielders, they've turned ones into twos. And it's pushed Six Gun Girl Western Province lead out to a 50. Straight to the man at uh, Short Tower. Yeah, Sin Valley just uh, one shot away then from uh, triple figures. And Yerden's got to close out with this over strongly for the ITEC Knights. A bit of a, I wonder what you call that shot, a bit of a, 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 a guided block, stunning the ball into the ground and picking up a single from uh, Four Valley. Where the stage was uh, bang at the runner ball, then dropped his scoring right down before the drinks break and now it seems as though he's trying to catch back up to a runner ball. He's uh, 96 thus far and faced only 104 deliveries. Short as Dezorzi rides the bounce and just uh, guides this one around the corner. We're running once again from the Six Gun Girl Western Province duo. So one ball in left in this uh, Fanier de Nova. Spectator catch. The, there was one stunned into the ground and then into the hands of uh, Isaac Di Khali at uh, short cover. Brings an end to the 36th over. Six young girl Western Province. 164 for one. Spin that will continue from the uh, Calvin Groven. Doc Sleiman will continue his spell. And uh, continuing with uh, the short leg of the ITEC Knights. Up they go for the appeal. No movement at all from the umpire. Knights thought they had one there. They thought they had, or at least we're going to see the back of uh, Yasin Valley. This time, tickles one to the uh, vacant final leg region. He'll uh, pick up two. And that takes him up to 98. We are closing in on a milestone here at Six Gun Girl Newlands. So just two rounds to go for Yasin Valley. Again, tries to just uh, deflect this one to the vacant uh, fine leg region, but Tikhali does his duty at short leg. Neyman is trying to fly his way through the over. 
starting to jog back to his mark. Fali uses those wrists. He gets the ball eventually through the mid wicket region, compliments of a bit of a knock on. And, uh, takes himself up to 99. It won't be done in this over as uh, Tony DeZorzi will face the uh, final delivery from Sneeman. DeZorzi tries to get it over the uh, cover fielders. Manages to find one of them and brings it in to the 37th over. It is six young girl Western Province, 167 for one. And uh, as Zaire Adams uh, takes a bit of a breather, the Cape Fox has returned to the hot seat, and with him comes a change in bowling. Ah. At the uh, wide again, Gerald could see her back into the attack, relieving uh, Nealon van Heerden from his duties. Just bowled the six overs so far, could see her. One for 33. Uh, the only wicket to fall in the first over of uh, this innings. Very similar to what happened with uh, the ITEC Knights, who lost a wicket off the fourth ball of their innings. Uh, Six Gangru Western Province losing a wicket off the third ball of their innings. The only difference, uh, perhaps not the only difference, but a big difference being that the second wicket for the Knights only putting on 36, whereas the uh, second wicket so far put on 167 for the Six Gangru Western Cape. Tariq, take us through. Uh, what we hope will be the hundred. No, not this delivery. Oh, Yasin Vali. So that's the first time that we've seen Vali actually start moving before the ball was delivered. <laughs> exactly. He's been standing yeah. nice and strong, <laughs> making uh, making his runs and perhaps just uh, putting a bit of uh, doubt into General Kutsia's mind, making him try and figure something out. So it is Vali. A little face up to Kutsia once again. Because he is around 99. the wicket, interesting, around the wicket to the uh, right-hander. Goes the full shot, scampers through for and the single. That's the hundred, that is the hundred for Yassine Valley. Take a bow, young man. And not only is it a hundred for Yassine Valley, the, the uh, attempted run out hits him on the pad and then <laughs> Trickles all the way over the boundary, so five runs it is to Yasin Vali, bringing up his uh, 15th first class century. And it just shows you what it means to absolutely everybody. A big uh, taps come in from uh, his teammates in the dugout. So it's 104 not out for Yasin Vali. 110 deliveries it's taken him, and 12 fours in that innings. So a 15th first class century for the young man yep he is uh as i as uh <laughs> nandre berger uh said last year when he was uh, with us the uh he's an old young man a <laughs> 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 uh, 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 bit of a wasted delivery there from uh gerald Cassia. tony de Zorzi can have nothing to do with that one and uh so good to have uh, Tariq Abraham here and uh, Zahir Adams uh, describing most of that uh, innings uh, with you. Uh, Yasin Vali going to his 15th first class 100 and it has been an exceptional innings under the circumstances here. Exactly what his captain uh, wants from him, his team wants from him and all oh, it's an incredibly good scoring rate i mean 104 that's uh, so he got to his 100 of 110 deliveries I mean, scoring rate currently 4.6 runs and over and this is and we're talking four day cricket here we, we're talking a pitch on which the knights just found it incredibly difficult to bat and yet the lead now for six gun grill western province 
61 with nine wickets in hand and that's just guided down to the man at short third uh, short fine leg uh, in your picture and it is no run it's a different ploy by uh, Kutsio to Nizorzi yeah. he's got that uh, leg slip in so he's definitely going to dig it in short try and tuck up uh, Tony Nizorzi mm. and uh, just to look back at that uh, Valley innings uh, mm. James it's been one where he came out accelerated nicely then went into his shell a little bit got himself to 50 accelerated yeah. again yeah I mean it's just been uh, incredible in the circumstances short arm jab from Nizorzi probably won't get a boundary you know he won't Reynard Fantonda comes around from his position at square leg, but he's through for two. And uh, Dzorzi at one stage, I mean, the, the most incredible thing about this has always been a an innings in, uh, in three parts in, in many ways. I mean, the, the initial part of the innings, you had uh, a partnership even, you had Valley racing away from Dzorzi, and Dzorzi I think only in the, in the teens when Valley got to his 50. Uh, then you had uh, De Zorzi taking over, and at one stage their scores were within, I think, 10 runs of each other. And now uh, Valley taking over once again, it's uh, being the senior partner and racing away to that 100. And it's been a, a great performance by this, really, I suppose you could call him a, a veteran uh, almost. That's really good feeling from Fantonda at uh, mid wicket. Uh, diving away to his left on the edge of the square and prevents uh, what would have been a certain boundary uh, for Valley as uh, Sneeman pitched that one a little bit short and this one's a lot fuller that's played very nicely by Valley that is not going to be stopped it's into the boundary just uh, to the uh, right of the scoreboard and he picks up yet another four it's 108 he goes to 178 for one I think if there's one man Oh. He wants to see the back of Valier is Neyman. He put yeah. him down early he on did. in the slips. Yeah. Valier at that stage was in the 60s. And, uh, well, Yasin Valier has made the most of that. And uh, not, not too difficult a chance either, was it, uh, Tariq? You know, one, one remembers, I mean, Eddie Moore uh, did put down Reynard Fantonda, but uh, probably a more difficult chance. Not that one wants to call any drop catcher a good thing. Or it isn't really a good thing, but one doesn't want to uh, sort of say it was a too difficult or too easy. All of them should be taken at this level. If you get two hands to it, you should hold on to it. But that could, as has already been, a very expensive drop for the iTech Knights. And they are trailing uh, Western Polish, they are leading by 67. They have only one wicket down. They're batting at 4.6 runs and over, and the game has advanced so far. We're only 45 minutes before the close of day one, and uh, you struggle to see the way that the Knights can get back into this game from now. It's almost that they're just playing for, for pride. <laughs> I don't know whether that's <laughs> the right word. You know, uh, it, the day's uh, weather is set for. You know, we're not up on the high field here, we're at the coast, we're in a Mediterranean climate here in the Western Cape. Uh, the weather is set fair for another three days of cricket if it lasts that long. And one feels that a, a huge first innings total should be on the cards here for Western Province. So uh, I was chatting, there's a short ball it's again wide, from... I'm sure, that should be a wide. Sia, yeah. looks like a very tennis ball, he bounced and uh, probably got away with that one. Yeah, he did, Sia, I think. Um, yeah, so Zion and I were chatting earlier on, yeah. and uh, he, he mentioned it straight up. He says, he's going to go Western Province, so looking to bat once in this game. Yeah, but, you exactly, know, yeah. You know, bat for as long as they can in this inning, score yeah. as much as they can, get a big enough lead in there, mm -hmm. and then uh, look to perhaps roll the iTech nights out on uh, perhaps day three. Yeah, exactly. I mean, back the whole day tomorrow, uh, you know, another 400, 500 scores, uh, potential here, uh, 500 plus score, uh, 400 before they even get to uh, 100 overs. You're talking massive number of uh, batting bonus points coming yet again, and then really the, the real opportunity to, as you say, um, 
facing a massive deficit, you, you wouldn't expect the Knights to get to that in the uh, even even make six gun grill Western Promise bat again. So that would be the plan. Yeah. And I'm sure that was probably discussions that were had among the team uh, in the innings break when yeah. they uh, managed to uh, dismiss the high tech lights. They yeah. probably said, listen, let's look to bat long. Yeah. Let's uh, build a uh, pretty handy lead and uh, try and uh, secure ourselves another Absolutely. innings yeah. victory. Let's rack up as many batting bonus points as we can. They got the full complement of uh, bowling bonus points. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we, we mentioned it earlier on right. that uh, in terms of batting bonus points, they, they're leading the way amongst mm. all the other teams mm. in, in the four-day series. So they want to look to uh, continue that form. Definitely. I mean, this is where they can put some uh, daylight between uh, themselves and uh, the other teams potentially in the competition. That's well played by Valley. It's getting over the bounce and down to uh, the legs of just running around to, to pick up and uh, there is uh, a single so he moves to 109 Dazors has got 69 it's 180 for one uh, only the two extras in the innings are so far um, and uh, the one was a no ball I don't think what the other one was uh, maybe a, uh, if there were two no balls I didn't see the second extra but interesting that uh, extras have been minimal um, Oh, that is a glorious shot again from Dzorzi. Uh, probably deserved more than the single that he's going to get. Just a short arm jab, and he is in uh, very good form after that 163. Survived a testing period before the T interval uh, when uh, Western Province had to come out and, and bat for just over half an hour, I think it was, and uh, with. And just not enough pressure applied consistently by the bowlers here. Uh, similar situation to what happened with the Knights, uh, sorry, with the G-Bets Rocks last week. Just the backup bowlers uh, and even Kutsir himself, who's your frontline bowler here, although he's a young man, uh, really not applying enough pressure onto the batters to, to consistently uh, keep them in check and you can see that with the run rate four and a half runs and over in a four-day game with everybody uh, Traveling bowling figures at the moment could see a eight overs one for 43. That's over five and over But does a six overs naught for 29 just under five and over Van Yedden eight overs naught for 38 just under five and over Swanepoel eight overs naught for 31 just under four and over and Matoa five overs naught for 17 Okay, 3.4 and over. And Snayman, 5 overs, 0 for 23. That is uh, 4.6 runs per over. So they're all going for some. Yeah, Matoa, obviously, his figures stand out. And yes, he hasn't picked up a wicket. Mm. But he has uh, certainly kept the runs down. And uh, perhaps surprising that they haven't given him the ball. I, know. I mean, you know, they're... The overs are not necessarily fully evenly shared, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think it is surprising they haven't given him the ball more. Maybe uh, they will give it to him again uh, soon. He has that interesting action with the with sort of very, very interesting wrist action on his deliveries. The spinners certainly haven't done the job uh, for the iTech Knights. Uh, nothing on offer for them, from what I can see on the wicket and consistently way too short and when they have compensated they've been punished as they overcompensate they've been punished a beautiful six from de Zorzi, um, which uh, flew over the boundary straight and uh, valley has been ruthless it must be said on anything short uh, very good a cutter of the ball out into the offside driving beautifully at, again at that one uh, you're just going to get the single it's just ticking over even if you don't score a boundary in and over they are rotating the strike uh, very well these two 
it's now and again from the Kelvin Grove end and uh, that's wide again but this time Dzorzi misses out Fantonda in uh, that extra cover position doing the field and he's got a slip man at 45 uh, halfway to the boundary and that's another massive shot from uh, Dzorzi that has gone miles and uh, Abdullah Stienkamp signals almost nonchalantly to the scorers uh, <laughs> to the left of us that that has gone uh, for a six and uh, it looks uh, as if um, who is that down there it's Mbolelu uh, Budaza who has to go and fetch the ball and uh, He's almost had to sign up for Varsity College there. <laughs> uh, he's gone so far uh, towards the building uh, at the top end of uh, the ground. Uh, such was the ferocity of that shot that takes the Zorzi to 77. That's 189 for one. And we were saying Snayman at that end, at the start of that over, five overs, naught for 23. He's gone for eight in that over. And it's almost seemingly that it was no effort at all on the part of the batters. They're just giving them far too many. Yeah, e exactly that. They uh, they take the singles over when they need to, and then when the chance presents itself yeah. to uh, to put a ball away, oh, they do exactly yeah. that. But uh, George uh, Gerald Kusia yeah. from uh, the Weinberg Inn, he's he's coming with with one tactic right now, and yeah. it's it's simple, it's short, it's at the body, yeah. and uh, I try to bring the leg step into play. Yeah, and and he won, one must. I am on must question those tactics. I mean, considering how Six Gun Grill Western Province were able to get their wickets earlier on in the day, uh, it was by bowling line and length, targeting fourth stump outside the off stump, off stump line, keeping the pressure on. And that, that is a wide, uh, there's no question about it, and has been signaled wide by umpire Holdstock, uh, you know, if they do get a wicket, it will be, it will be through the batter almost, you know, say throwing it away, but it will be. Uh, I just don't understand the tactics here. Or maybe I'm being, being <laughs> I, just, I just don't understand, Tariq. I mean, you, you, does it really make sense? I've seen, you know, I've seen this before. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense. I mean, Targeting in an area of strength, maybe as Rainer Fantonda does well, but he knocks on and uh, Valley's going to call Dzorzi back for two. That was played with ferocity once again by Dzorzi out into the deep. He moves to 79. Valley, uh, we've got a, a uh, feet off the ground moment for Yasin Valley here. He's on the same score that the Knights got in their first innings. He's done it all by himself. He has. He has done it all by himself, yeah. Uh, James, look, uh, I'm also a bit baffled. By uh, yeah. this decision by Garcia uh, mm. to uh, continue with the short ball, we know how good I mean, Tony yeah. he is on the pull shot. And it's not like he's putting anything else into today. He's only got the one man catching. We haven't even got the one man catching really. Um, you know, he's got that one man shortage on the square leg, or well, 20 meters in from the square leg boundary. He's got. A man at long leg, but there's nobody really in a catching position. He's still got the short leg in there, which one struggles to see how, how because of the line of attack, that Dzorzi would get surprised by one. And that's just way too wide, and he's not going to be tempted. So. It's almost it as though Kutsia is going, he's pressing yeah. a default button because yeah. he's struggling a bit with, it seems. Yeah. Uh, with rhythm yeah. uh, at, at this time of the day and especially from from this the yeah, from this end yeah so uh, you know, go back to what I know it's uh, try to bowl as fast as I can and as short as I can and, and really is yeah it, it, it is a bit baffling um, ow that must hurt uh, hit straight into Dikale at uh, that short leg position and he'd stood up already turned his back on the ball and that really probably did hurt they probably has got some padding there 
but one must say that, I mean this this short ball crusade that the Knights are on is, is not really one that one feels is going to get a, an answer for them and they're deflated aren't they I mean yeah, body uh, language yeah. uh, says a lot a lot of hands on hips yeah no real chatter amongst the fielders no this time when you could see it does get the ball up into yeah. a good area it uh is Aussie got all the time in the world to to see that and uh, could see a uh yeah lacking lacking that extra yard now of pace that that perhaps uh he would want or you, you know one would want him to have and they're looking at another massive defeat uh, at this stage in the match you know obviously there's still a long way to go now we were talking earlier uh, again i think david and i may well have been you and i that were chatting say you know let's not you don't call the game and we said this last week you don't call the game until the other team has batted that's uh, time west the uh, western province had scored 555 for five should i say in there in their innings, the first innings of the match uh, this week, it was 111. They've got a change of bowling at the Kelvin Grove end, Aubrey Swanepoel replacing Jacques Neyman. He's in now, and uh, Old Valley just gets the one, bounces a bit off a length, and uh, just bunts it down on the offside. And, uh, but already we can see, I mean, 111 when you decide to bat first is is not is not at all what you wanted uh, from your your batting lineup. Perhaps the wrong decision from the captain in hindsight is always a, a great science, isn't it? But you, know, you you're looking at a your opposition teams on 193 for one, and you were bowled out for 111. Uh, something isn't right. And it, as good as the bowlers for Six Gun Grill Western Province were, um, you have to question a number of things from a Knights point of view. Well, I'm sure the uh, Itac Knights would want the uh, final ball of the day to come yeah. very, very soon. <laughs> Half an hour ago. <laughs> get themselves out of here, yeah, go and grab something to eat. And uh, get your mind off what has happened today. Yeah. And uh, come out tomorrow morning after a good night's rest and come back firing. Yeah, yeah. Come back with a with a plan that is um, something that it, is going to deliver you, or at least start to give you some kind of control in the game. That that they they've lost complete control of the game. Um, Six Gun Grill Western Province only if they appear to do something radically different themselves and give give their wickets away do you feel that it's going to change the course of what's going to happen in the match we've seen last week that the, how how well they batted down the order even when they got into trouble um, i mean thinking of, of some of the seminal moments in the game last week where you had um both um, Valley and Smith going in quick succession with a score in the 180s. You see, again, that same course of action, same result, uh, and at long leg brought into play there. Dzorzi into the 80s, I think, with that shot he is. He's on to 80, eyeing uh, 100, definitely, and to, to go back to the hatch uh, tonight uh, with a score close maybe to 100 or, or over 100 he's still got half an hour to play and come back tomorrow and start your innings again James I think you'd sleep a lot better if you get to the 100 today I, I think so suppose, I think as will. opposed to ending the day in the 90s <laughs> yeah I yeah, yeah, will um, and uh, you know you've only got 43 overs bowled so it's still 30 whatever 36 odd overs with the new ball until the new ball so it, it, it's not like you've got an attacking option uh, from the uh, Knights uh, side and 
none of the bowlers have really looked incisive. Castillo looked incisive to begin with, but then he lost his line and lost his length. So it is, uh, yeah, it's disappointing. And really, if you're going to continue with this line and there is no pressure on the six Kangaroo Western Province batters, they can let this ball go all day. They don't need to play at anything if they don't want to. You know, you can just see Yasin Valley getting himself uh, yeah. on, the, on the inside of the ball, swaying out of the way, ducking yeah. underneath it. Just doing everything that he has to do. Mm. Again, short ball, ducks underneath it. Who's that? Is that, is that mine? I think that is mine. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty easy at the moment for Yasin Valley to negotiate his way uh, around these uh, Kutsio deliveries. Yeah. He knows what's going to come. He can, I mean, they've uh, pretty much telegraphed the plan by putting that leg slip in. And yeah. Kutsio has, I think, in the last three overs, mm. only bowled short deliveries. He has, yes. Hasn't been, I think, it's been probably one, maybe one at the most, of Dzorzi that was there, and that is well fielded in the gully. Uh, and that's that's the better line if yeah, you're going to go short. I agree. Get it from around the wicket. Get the ball to go across him. Yeah. Instead of you know aiming it at leg stump where he can duck underneath it to get inside the line and allow it to go past the keeper. Try and get that short ball, mm. you know, closer onto his right shoulder because oh. then you're forcing him to play. Actually, I agree with you. I mean, then he's either got to get out the way in, in perhaps a more difficult situation. He, he's got to shape himself to to either play the shot to get out of the way. Whereas these ones on the leg side don't help. I mean, that's a much better delivery, forcing him to play off the line of middle and leg, but it's going to be difficult to get a decision there unless you get it caught. There is only one slip in position, so you actually no slip in position. You've got the leg slip, so making it very difficult for yourself to get wickets. Uh, 27 minutes left in the day's play, and as Tariq quite rightly was uh, saying earlier on... Uh, the end of the day's play for the Knights cannot come quickly enough um, as they seek to just regroup at the end of the day and come back tomorrow and say, OK, what are we going to do to stop uh, this onslaught we're facing from the, the batters? We had the onslaught earlier from the bowlers of Six Gungru, Western Province. We've got the onslaught from the batters. How do we pull this thing back? Aubrey Swanepoel is going to try and do that now. And that's a good delivery to Dzorzi. Just uh, you can't see it very well from your side, but he just smothers it into the ground as it's pitched up from uh, Swanepoel. He's going to come around the wicket to the left-hander again, past umpire Abdulustian Kamp now, and that's played in the air just to the right. Of he might have hit that into the ground first. Uh, I'm not sure, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, but past Van Tonnevitz, well fielded behind him by uh, you know, Stichale behind him there. Yes, it's better. Maybe uh, there isn't really any pressure because of the run scored earlier on. There's really no pressure. The only pressure on scoreboard here is going to come from uh, just the mindset of the. Western Province batters thinking we haven't scored as many runs in the last little while. That's better from uh, Swanepoel, and this is much, much better. This is what now. Swanepoel did in his in his first uh, stint. <clears throat> yeah, is he's come on, he's dried up runs from his end. Yeah, he's got the odd one to turn, but yeah. an extra bit of bounce and put a bit of doubt. In the batter's mind, and, and then that's a little bit short. As, you, as yeah. you talk him up, he drops one short. Yeah, and uh, he gets away with it. Goes down to Fantonda in the deep. Uh, mm -hmm. They go through for a single, and uh, that is as we uh, just say goodbye to Zahir Adams. Thank you, Zahir, for your uh, commentary. Uh, just uh, <laughs> saying goodbye to us here. Silently. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to uh, have uh, Zahir with us, uh, a man who's covered cricket 
in the Western province uh, for many years now. All right, uh, so 25 minutes left on the uh, stadium clock and it seems as though Gerald Kutsia's uh, short ball fiasco is coming to an end. Yeah. As he's replaced by Alfred Mutoa. Right, From interesting. The end, um, Man, we were saying should perhaps be coming back on. Uh, there's a little bit of pressure been applied by Aubrey Swanepoel, the other side. Uh, really, Gerald Kutsia's line. Uh, one has to question why Fight Van Bouillon uh, continued with that with him for so long. When you can, well, we can clearly see it's not working, but you know, I think it is difficult when you're on the field. Sometimes yeah. you just don't, you don't see it. You get, we've seen, we, you know, you have, we have the the opportunity of being able to look at the field from uh, here. We have the the chance to sort of assess things as we go along. It's not like that when you're on the field. I mean, just so that you do have, a, yeah. you do know as a as a listener that it's or a, a viewer that it, it's just. It isn't really like that. Sometimes you just, you just get caught up in the moment and it keeps going for way too long. Full and wide. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, there now. Gives uh, De Zorzi a chance to release his arm yeah. and a bit of a misfield from Van Yerden at that deep point and De Zorzi yeah. scuttles back for a second. He does indeed and he's uh, eyeing those three figures uh, I would think that's a, he's expecting Matoa and I would also expect Matoa to be bowling more in uh, an area where Dzorzi and Valley are going to be able to put bat on ball. Uh, interesting action he's got. Uh, uh, he, oh, that's a very good shot from Dzorzi. I, I don't think he's going to get the boundary. He won't. That's... Uh, Van Heerden after it again, is it? And I don't think that is Van Heerden there, because he's uh, Van Heerden is in the... Uh, Van Heerden, listen to me. Uh, that is... Um, who's that man in there? I just can't tell at the moment he's actually at that uh, 45 position. Van Tonder is in the, uh, the mid-wicket position. We have two slips of a man at. So we have a first slip, almost like a second slip. Second slip and a fourth slip. That's uh, almost, isn't it? It's an interesting, interesting fielding positions. Um, does Aussie, oh, does Aussie get a little bit lucky there? Goes for the drive through the offside, gets a bit of inside edge. And uh, that brings up the 200 for the Six Gun Grill Western Province team. Uh, Tariq, 200. Yep, yeah, taking them um, 276 uh, balls uh, mm. to get there. 23 fours and two sixes. Not only the 200 for Sisgan Grill, Western Province, but also the 200 on stand between uh, Yasin Valli and Tony De Zorzi. Incredible. I mean, and it's coming next to no time. 45 overs at a run rate of 4.4 runs to the over. And... Uh, you know, one could be forgiven uh, if one thought this wasn't perhaps a, a one-day internet, or say one day, but a 50-over list A game <laughs> that's happening out here. Um, 4.4 runs and over on a what what looked like a very sticky wicket earlier on in the day. Oh, good running. Just drops it into the leg side, does Yasin Valley, and goes through for the run, rotates the strike, uh, gives one ball left in the over for De Zorzi. De Zorzi is on 86, he has 20 minutes to get 14 runs to get to his three figures, which is what he will want. Uh, that also brings with it the risk that he's going to play shots and he could potentially get himself out. Uh, I say get himself out because I just don't see a way that the uh, bowlers here are going to actually bowl them out. And that's uh, just a slower ball from uh, Motoa. Bit of uh, oh, the leg cutter on that, was it? A bit, bit of, let's see, a bit of, maybe a bit of cut. Maybe he did roll the wrists over a little bit. Um, yeah, you could just see Tony De Zorzi after playing the shot signaling to uh, yeah. Bali that... Uh, 
it was a bit of a slow one but also you could just see this Aussie was through the shot he before was. the ball even got to him so oh, definitely a good change in pace uh, from yeah. Motoa yeah he did he just uh, rolled his wrists over it uh, doesn't do that this time it's squeeze that into the offside some good fielding in the covers by De Gale. And uh, there will be no run. Dezorzi just getting a little bit of a drink. Uh, as does Yassin Valley, the 12th men running out onto the field. 12th and 13th man, I guess you'd say, not uh, 12th man. And uh, Kyle Simmons and Michalion Pongwana, both reasonably tall men, uh, making their way quickly out onto the field. Adrian Holdstock just uh, lingering next to the <laughs> batters uh, just to keep them honest. Don't be too long. Yeah. It's an old umpiring trick. You just sort of wander closer to them and they start thinking, oh, what's the umpire doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've all been around the block long enough uh, to recognize these tricks. It's going to be Swanapool again to Valley. One senses that Yasin Valley now just for wanting to give the strike to uh, Tony Dezorzi. Just get him through to that 100 tonight if he can. 201 for one. Oh, that is uh, wristily played very fine. It might even go to the boundary. Not sure that it does. And I, I think uh, the noise you heard was perhaps uh, Alfred Matoa going into the hoardings as he ran down here. It's probably the worst thing. Yeah, that is. Seam bowler, you've just bowled your, your six balls and immediately yeah. the first ball the next over you've got to That's charge it. after it to prevent <laughs> the boundary exactly uh valley 114 dezorzi 86 203 for one there are three extras only and the uh, other two scores make up 200 exactly so 200 runs coming off the bats of uh, these two batters the second wicket stand uh, gone to a double century stand and uh, nicely played to mid-wicket. It's all happening in a little bit of slow motion at the moment as we get towards the end of the day's play. Both of these batters will want to be there tomorrow. Uh, no thought of, uh, you know, they, they want to be able to set their stall to make sure that there's opportunity for more big runs tomorrow. Yasin Valley. Um, top score of 167 uh, it's a bit early to be talking about that yet I think um, but this type of the wicket as it stands the attack looking tired already they've only bowled 46 overs they could be out there for another 80 overs after this the way uh, that six gun grill Western Province have been batting of late and last week's 577 for five declared one of their highest scores in uh, first class cricket division one uh, or franchise cricket would have just given them an appetite for more so imagine what that, that'll do to elevate their confidence levels even yeah. more if they can go <clears throat> back to back matches yeah batting one scoring over 500 yeah, that's you know exactly. over a thousand runs in yeah. in two games yeah. and in two innings Absolutely, it would be yeah. it would be exactly what the doctor ordered yeah. for Six Gun Grill Western Province. But yeah, they've got to be there. They've got to stay out there. They've got to grind through the the boring periods, yeah. like now where, yeah. where you know it's not really flowing at the moment. Pick off the ones and the twos. You know, just yeah, make sure just you stay in there long enough. Absolutely. You know. It, very interesting say last season in that heavy defeat to the titans where it was a very similar situation was that in chatting with some of the western province players during that match when they were under the cosh as we watched Matal go away from us now nicely played uh, by Dezorzi again the man there, I'm just trying to see who that is. Oh, it's Rory, at Rory, isn't it? Matthew Kleinfeld, who's uh, at that backward, uh, I don't know really what you'd call that. It's sort of a, mm, 
more like a, a, a it is a backward point position, but it's quite sad, quite wide backward point. Then Matoa away from us yet again at the Weinberg end and uh, into the Zorzi just uh, plays that nicely out into the offside. And Matoa is doing the right thing here. Uh, he's bowling it on the spot. Every delivery is trying. It's what he's trying to do, and that's where you get in the better to play. Maybe you try and bring him out, bring him out further and further and further until he's in a situation where maybe he can't get that leg across. He can't play it confidently. Still wants to feel bat on ball. This is the right way to be to be to be approaching it. Um, but this, you know, seeing this spell from Motoa mm. and the areas he's hitting, the line he's bowling. It, 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 again, it, it comes back to what Jeddel Kutsio was doing. Yeah. And I, it, it, that, that, it's still, it, even then, it makes it even more like mind-blowing no, as to completely. why Kutsio was insisting on, yeah. you know, short balls in at the body. Yeah. When, you know, making it easy for the batters just to pick the ball off and get a few runs. Whereas Matoa was showing yeah. a good line and a good length and you can dry up runs. Yeah, and I mean, whilst it, it's the, the runs at this stage are not necessarily the important thing for Six Gun Grill Western Provinces, uh, as all he takes a very good single uh, called uh, by his partner, just to uh, exchange a bit of acknowledgement there that perhaps they could have gone through earlier for the run, and no real risk there involved as Rizorzi moves to the Australian unlucky number of 87. <laughs> all these numbers in cricket that we have. Uh, so what is why is 87 unlucky? Well, it's 13 short of 100 apparently, but so who knows? That's that's what they say. That's what they say. Who knows? It probably has some other meaning. You know. <laughs> must, who knows? It must that they're trying to <laughs> well, keep away from everybody. Yeah, I don't know. Australian, we're never quite sure. Anybody who is Australian and and knows perhaps another meaning behind that, perhaps uh, you can tweet us in uh, at. Uh, at WP underscore Blitz is our Twitter handle and uh, please if you are doing that use the hashtag four day series that's four as in the number four and then uh, day series D-A-Y S-E-R-I-E-S and uh, so four day series and it is at WP underscore Blitz we well, as David uh, said, tomorrow from a ticketing point of view for the one-day uh, cup matches coming up, as it's uh, Swanepoel in to De Zorzi. He's just going to pick up a single there at the beginning of Swanepoel's 12th over. And uh, that is just easily eased down to the man at a deepish mid-on for the single to 88, uh, 11 minutes left before the close of play and 11 minutes for Dzorzi potentially to get to that 100 and they're going to take another single but that is a uh, good running perhaps uh, Valley a little bit slow off the mark but he is very quick between the wickets and as quick as the whippet that he is out in the outfield he's a greyhound between the stumps yeah look there's so. definitely uh, intent from uh, Valley to uh, get the Zorzi on strike and get him to face as many yeah, as possible. That's right, and he'll uh, take another single now. He goes to 89, and uh, he's, he could be agonizingly short of the 100 overnight, uh, Tariq. Well, 11 minutes, 11 runs. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he has, uh, as we saw from Carl Verena last week, it only takes two balls. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's, it's playing on the Zorzi's mind. He's looked at I that scoreboard so. a few times now. Yeah, I, I it must do. I mean, not having ever been in that position, I must be honest. Uh, as a batter, I I, uh, I would love to have been in that position, but uh, never managed to get there. Um, yeah, it, it must be playing. You must be playing when you, you know you look at a milestone. Um, Look, it's, it's probably, you know, on his mind that, yes, I am close to a milestone. Mm -hmm. I'm close to going uh, back to back hundreds. 
yeah. but also it's late in the day. It's 10 yeah. minutes to go. Absolutely. You know, do I play the situation, keep myself there with the valley to, right. to the end of the day, or do I try and uh, you know go for the three figures and try and get a better night's sleep than uh, going to sleep while I'm in the 90s? Yeah, I mean, he probably will have a much worse night's sleep if he gets him out, gets himself out trying to go for the 100. He probably uh, wouldn't sleep at all if he gets out. No, he probably wouldn't. Recriminations will be there. So, uh, could see it takes the ball again to take over from uh, Matoa. And uh, he's going to be bowling to De Zorzi. And what is he going to be bowling this time? Looks like he's going to be bowling over the wicket to the left-hander. Uh, so that might be that similar line. I don't know. I wonder whether he's going to just try and tempt him. I mean, they... Clearly, every cricketer is aware that when you're approaching a, a milestone, you might have some kind of nerves, but uh, I'm not sure about this. Same tactic and uh, result is a single to De Zorzi down to the man at long leg, and uh, they take that he's uh, into the 90s. It's on 90. There are probably three overs left in the day's play. It looks like uh, Kutsia is uh, going to continue with this leg side line to uh, Yasin Valley. 208 for one. Uh, field is to the right hand. In fact, he's changed. He's going to be bowling over the wicket to the right hander. So this is a change. He has still got the short leg. He's still got a leg slip. Man at long leg, short leg, square leg, and a mid on, a shortish mid on. And it's short. That's a shocking delivery. Outside the off stump, wide is signalled, and quite rightly so, uh, that is very wide. And uh, complete waste of effort, and uh, you know, it, it, this is... It's my, it is honestly it, it mind blowing. It is, yeah. Matoa was bowling a spell before this. <coughs> yeah. Good lines, good lengths, yeah. drying up the runs, and uh, doing a job. Yeah, Putting a bit of pressure on was. the batters, yeah. and uh, I think all that pressure yeah, is uh, being undone by this uh, it's your tactic. And nicely played by Valley. It's fully over that ball. It's slow bounce outside the off stump and just plays it down to man at uh, deep point. That's uh, Reynard Fantonda, and uh, they take a single. This is the sign of a team that is very low on confidence, uh, have not got it tactically sorted out, and uh, just. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, Piet van Bouillon gets uh, running in from his position. At, uh, and Dzorzi takes it on, and that has gone into the railway stand. And that is his third maximum of the innings. It was a really matter. Matter. It was. Oh. It was a shocking delivery. Shortish, very short, in fact. Uh, there to be hit. Just stood up and said, uh, hit me, please. Um, you know, almost like written on the ball, I think, and uh, has indeed been hit into the railway stand. Reynard Fantonda, is, uh, I think he's found the ball, has he? He's uh, looking for it, well, he like has you found said, it. Like yeah. you said, De Zorzi is uh, two hits away, well, now he's sure. down to one. He is down uh, to one. I, I guess yeah. he was he was lining this one up from Kutsia. He knew it's going to be short yeah. and at the body. He was uh, playing the uh, short balls, nicely yeah. controlled, was, keeping yeah. it down, hitting yeah. the, the fielder. And then I think this one just uh, looked yeah, it too was, good it was, not yeah. to uh, dispatch. Right there, ready to be hit on the verge of a century now, he is. That is way too wide and uh, over the uh, shoulder of De Zorzi and signal now is another one for the over. Uh, I really don't understand also why the umpires are not perhaps uh, intervening. I mean... Perhaps it's a bit early to do that. I mean, it, 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 but it, it's been a just a constant tactic. It's a negative bowling tactic, and and that's something that should not be encouraged, in my opinion. Uh, could see her again into De Zorzi. shortage again. He hits that one through down to uh, that man Fantonu. who's only going to get the single. Uh, it moves him to 97, but he's still within one scoring shot of. Uh, 
that hundred with uh, probably two overs to go in the day because we're going to have Swanapool from the other side. It is 17.55 on the scoreboard clock. I don't think Dezorzu will be trying to run the clock down. Maybe uh, the Knights will. Um, their over rate has been much better. Oh, we nicely played actually there by uh, that uh, man, uh, Yassine Valley, and he uh, didn't want to take the run. He wanted <laughs> to give Tony Dezorzi the strike, and Dezorzi said, no, come on, we've got to come through for the run. We're not going to play it like this. Uh, we're going to bat normally. And uh, 117 to Valley, 97 to Dezorzi, 218 for one. Well, if we ever wondered uh, to, about Tony Dezorzi's mind yeah, frame and yeah. whether he wants the 100 this evening yeah. or whether he's okay with uh, coming back tomorrow to get yeah. it, that last delivery there just said it all. It did. Yasin Valley wanted to stay on his end yeah. to uh, allow Tony Dezorzi to take what could potentially be the final over. We might get another one in depending yeah. on how quickly Swanepoel gets through this one. Yeah, but Dezorzi couldn't care, it no. seems as though, about that getting the triple figures today. And uh, Yassine Valley is going to try and get him on strike. I don't think he'll take any chances to do that. But they have brought the field in to try and stop the single. So uh, they clearly believe that uh, uh, we're going to get the single there. No, he's not going to get the single. But he is safe, is the Dezorzi. And that is not good cricket from uh, uh, Yassine Valley or Tony uh, in this instance. Uh, He's yeah, again, trying it's, desperately to get him onto strike, isn't he? That, that's what it is. It's Yasin Bali wanting to get off strike and wanting uh, Tony to uh, take the strike. But Tony is always telling him, listen, it's yeah. not about me. No, it's exactly. about the key. Yeah, and uh, it seems to be playing more on the mind of Yasin Bali than it does on the mind of Tony <laughs> Dezorzi. Irrespective of that, I mean, I've, I've seen this. You know, I'll tell you a it's, it's a funny but very sad story in fact in many ways um, this time he will get the single much more conventional means and he'll get that man Dezorzi on strike uh, with uh, four balls to go in the Aubrey Swanepoel over I don't think we're going to get another over in though tonight uh, Tariq 1758 on the scoreboard uh, Instead of, of trying to get through the over as quickly as possible, as Aubrey Swanepoel was uh, before, he's now taking his time. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, the Itek Knights wanting this to be the and final of the day. That be in the gap. Uh, one, it might be two. Yeah, it is going to be two. That is very good running from uh, this pair. And he's on 99 now, is Dezorzi. And uh, is the field going to come in? I don't know if it is. In fact, it is going to come in. Uh, going to bring in Kutsia from the deep as well. Everybody's coming in to prevent the single. I still think there are singles on offer here. As uh, Mr. Greyhound, uh, Yassine Valley, will be looking at uh, running at whatever opportunity. We've now got a ring field on the offside. There's a slip, and the only man in the deep is the man at long off. And... Uh, He's going to play that uh, uh, with the cut off the inside edge. He's going to play it down to uh, a fine third man. He is absolutely overjoyed, is Tony Dezorzi, and well he should be. Uh, Tariq, that milestone, take us through uh, your feelings on it. Yeah, very exciting and uh, circumspect as well from uh, Tony Dezorzi. He's 100 coming off 152 deliveries. 10 fours and three sixes is uh, known when to accelerate, is known when to uh, take his singles and probably gets to his uh, triple century and a bit of fortune goes his way <laughs> with the inside <laughs> edge, but a deserved century indeed. It is indeed, as uh, it's played nicely out into the leg side by uh, Yasin Valley to get the team off uh, double Nelson. They lead now by 112 with one ball left in uh, the first day's play here at uh, Six Gun Grill Newlands and we'll just give you a bit of a wrap of the day before we uh, close off and uh, it will be myself just giving you that wrap as uh, we see the last ball from Aubrey Swanepoel. Dezorzi plays it beautifully into the 
Oh, into the leg side. It's missed, unfortunately, by the fielder there that claimfo has gone through for four, put in the desperate dive, and it ends on a very positive note for Six Gun Grill Western Province. Tariq, a few words from you? If you, if you want to wrap up and yeah. sum up the day for the ITEC Knights, I think that last ball there it, it does just sum perfectly it sums it up. The fielder <laughs> does. doing what he can, tries to get to the ball, bit of a miss uh, in the yeah. field, and the ball goes for four. And it uh, is certainly a Six Gun Grill Western Province uh, day oh, yeah. that comes to an end. Huge, uh, huge day for Six Gun Grill Western Province. Huge day for Tony DeZorzi, back to back hundreds. Uh, after his 163 last week, he gets 101 not out. With him uh, is uh, Mohammed Yassin Valley, 123 not out. Their partnership is worth 228. It's 228 for one. Uh, in reply to the first innings of 111 all out uh, for the ITEC Knights after winning the toss. You can hear the applause for this pair coming to the pavilion. They have taken uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province to a position from which you believe uh, they will, they cannot really lose the match again. I mean, it's possible, obviously, but uh, unless there's a flurry of wickets in the morning. Uh, it is going to be very difficult for the Knights to come back. And it has been a day that has belonged completely to Six Gun Grill Western Province uh, from 11.30 this morning when the second wicket fell on 38 uh, for the ITEC Knights. And uh, then the third and fourth wickets also fell at 38, the fourth at 52, the fifth at uh, sorry the fourth at 42 the fifth at 52 the sixth at 62 uh, as all we went twos. to lunch all the twos in fact the uh sixth the uh seventh sorry the the let me get that right for you so it was all the twos pretty much uh, so it was the first at two the second at 38 the third at 38 the fourth at 38 the fifth at 42 the sixth at 52 the seventh at 72 and the eighth at 92. <laughs> so it's the eights up the front and the twos at the back. <laughs> it is indeed. And then all out for 111, the, uh, the uh, Six Gun Grill Western Province in reply are, one, are 227 for the loss of one at the close. They lead by 116. And uh, it's good night uh, from me and good night uh, from Tariq. We'll see you in the morning.